If you can hear me, just just confuse Ray and Chai right now about uh, how we're bringing back uh, Aerotech. Thank you. 
Anyone who thought they were going to get the secrets out of us, not today. Let's go hear things that are not secret. Now will be the half hour review of my thing that talent. <laughs> this is day 400 of conventions this week, right? December 24th, 1945. I've been trapped on this world for nearly six days. I have seen no human being. It's funny, I told Zach Cole yesterday, I'm like, I generally don't know what day it is, but it feels like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, between the, um, yeah, between the Christmas holidays. Oh, yeah, they got yeah, they got a text from my best pro. He's like, happy Friday, I'm like, yeah, a lot. It's <laughs> this Friday, but it's for me. <laughs>
but you know what? That's okay. I'm still going to listen to you. Brandon, you're still listening to me. You're talented here. I believe I also just pushed Ray's, moder uh, Ray's moderator. So uh, if you happen to see he's already a moderator, I just pushed that too. Good to see you. I hope you're having a great time. I believe Gary's calling in, right? Yeah, Gary's calling in. Hope it's great there. Hey, look at that. He's got the cog eagle. No more chat restrictions for Ray. He can speak freely other than the things he doesn't want you guys to know about yet. Well, I guess he's just he's tech free. the rock of angels? In fact, Randall recognized this from the past with the Lauren, and the man who gets stuck with things is the man who stuck with them in the past. He's going to win the title from again. Yeah, me. I think that makes every universe or every shape we've ever seen in the whole era of the show and stuff like that, I think every last one of them has had a monster in some way, shape, or form. That sounds about right. Some, uh, there's some events that we might be involved in. Hey, that was just a speed game. Stop being a pansy. <laughs> I'm still on a roll. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just 
No, we, prob we probably are turned very down low to keep from ambient stuff coming through. Oh no. We're just we're just doing this for fun now at this point. Instead, you will be going straight to the lunch table secret with John Culfrey and Michael Sloboda. For those of you like me who cannot converse time very well, we will be starting in about four minutes. That makes me feel better. Especially when you said that you were going to be 
And that is in five minutes, not one hour. We will be beginning in, well, less than five minutes now, I believe, at that point. Four minutes now. Four minutes and counting. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, folks. My name is Michael Ciravella, and we are back here at Adepticon Day 3. Or for some of us, it's been even longer. Uh, pardon me. Uh, we are now here with John Helfers for our special series we've been doing all week, Lunchtime Secrets. This is the opportunity where you got to talk to the director, ask him the hard-hitting, in-depth questions that perhaps have not been hit in other interviews. We are going to not take any of the crazy nonsense that John usually gives us. We are going to tell all the secrets. The first one on the table, before we even talk to John, Talon Coleman's real name. Yes, his real name is Talonius. We just had this discussion a moment ago. He admitted it to me privately. That and is where it is. Not to tell what you have completely just blown that wide open. So, yes. I will know him as Talonius from now on forever. So, so hopefully everyone has seen pictures of the ill cake as has now been called. I love the ill cake. Yes. The ill cake the is ill cake delicious, by the way. The ill way. cake yeah. is fantastic. So, the, yes, we are celebrating, of course, Battletech's 40th anniversary, and there is a lot to talk about. So get those questions ready, folks. Get them on the uh, screen. Welcome everyone who's in the stream and in the chat. Uh, yes, hello, Karamind. Good to see you. Turbo Turtle, are you supposed to be working on your draft there, Craig? And taking a break? So... Yeah, absolutely. So is this, are we doing this taking a broad Battletech secrets? Or are we focusing on a particular era? Oh, we're still focusing on fiction right now. Unless, of course, there is a particular era of Battletech that needs a little uh, fleshing out, shall we say? Well, it's funny you should mention that because I have mentioned, that, mentioned this on previous streams, but I'm happy to do so again. If any of you, for some reason, have not watched the previous streams, I'm happy to announce that we are beginning a Jihad era fiction program. As you all know, and this has been something the fans have been asking for for a very long time, the Jihad era, of course, did not have, I don't think, any fiction, if I'm not mistaken, because when it ends that, very limited. Isn't what they were doing with the hero clicks and all that stuff. So um, this has been an idea long gestating in my maybe febrile mind, might be more accurate, fertile mind, I'm going to say, uh, that I thought this area was, of course, this era was completely underserved and has the potential for so many magnificent stories. Um, authors are interested, the fans are interested, and I am really excited about this. So, yeah, that's the first thing. Well, that secret's already out, but I'm going to repeat it here. Forthcoming is Jihad Era Fiction, short stories, novellas, short novels, novels, the whole, the whole gamut. We're going to cover the whole thing. And so, just so some people don't know, we are already beginning down this road. There is some stuff already out recently, is that correct? Uh, this is true. Herb Beas wrote uh, his fantastic Jardine series, which is now collected in an omnibus called The Quest for Jardine. So, Herb, thank you very much. Um, and we're working, we're talking with Herb about being a consultant because, of course, Herb is the architect of the Jihad, the master builder, basically. And I, we're going to require his expertise to make sure this is cohesive and the stories all work. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I have to call out The Ill Cake by the Capellan Confectionery. That is perfect. That's just delightful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that one. So that's very good. Thank you, Karaman. Uh So we're starting up the questions. Uh, Mercurion, okay. What happened to the members of the Kill Bloodline Exile Wolves when Clan Wolf united with Clan Wolf in Exile? That's an excellent question. That secret is so deep and dark that we cannot reveal it yet. <laughs> But it is being just uh, but we it is it, being discussed the scene will be behind the scenes for a long time. So that question unfortunately is gonna I know we some secrets revealed. That question's gonna have to remain shrouded in mystery for a little while longer. Let's move on. I see the potential, but really forward to the Tucker Harwell story, even if it has a lot of sea facts. So Florian, you like Tucker Harwell, but our option have a clan sea fox fan. That's kind of funny. Well, it's the best of both worlds for you. Uh, Michael, talk about secrets. Let's talk about your upcoming novel, Kyle Frostbite. Yes, indeed. The next novel for the Ilplan era, um, yeah, no, for the Ilclan era, is going to be Trial of Birthright. And talk about secrets trial. revealed. Oh, yes. Uh, trial of Birthright is all about secrets right there. It takes us right from minutes after uh, the death of Devlin Stone and right into the new Ilclan era. We get to see what is going on on Terra, what has been created, what has been destroyed, and what will soon be built. It is an incredibly exciting time. I'm very excited for it. We just finished an editing pass last night. It was a great time. Yes, yes. Uh, Michael has written a tremendous novel, and I look forward to getting out there to all the fans. That one is scheduled for a July release. And uh, we look forward to getting out all, to all the fans finally going back to Terra after three years of real time. We're going to find out all the secrets behind the barrier, behind the wall, 
what Alaric's been up to, Chance and all the rest. What's been happening on Terra? It's a question on everyone's mind. So, yes, Absolutely. many secrets revealed. Uh, let's see. Has another author been tapped to finish Milan's case white? That's uh, a really good question. It has been. We are discussing that. It, it's been the, um, as everyone knows, uh, Vic was tapped to write a novel for us before his unfortunate passing. I had brought him back, uh, but unfortunately he passed away before he could finish it. We are discussing that internally. Herb has reviewed it. We're 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 not quite sure exactly where the direction we're going to go in that one. So more to come on that a little bit later. We can Herb Herb and try and some spices. <laughs> Don't you have a meeting to get to? The, those. Uh, blame her for how many nuclear devices were set off. Yes. In a short answer, that is exactly. Oh point. yes. <laughs> well, we get a story about firm taking a grand. Oh, first one. I like that. A story about firm taking a grand flight in an experimental convertible mech. A Herbin mech. Le- uh, I needed Rand to see that question. Or Brent, Nicely actually. done. Uh, yes. Yeah. So July release, absolutely. We've got we've got more secrets to come, but we want to hear from you folks. We want to hear from the chat. What do you want to know about? But this is about secrets, John. We need to talk about our new mini, the um, ultra-sized Urban Mech. It is a Campbell soup can that we have added wings to. And we legs. Have, and legs. We yes. will be selling it for $55.99 uh, at your nearest Barnes & Noble. And I think we have an actually upgradable level with removable arms and legs. So when you actually blow up an urban mech, you can actually really blow it up. Absolutely. There you go. Yes, for sure. Uh, the date to hit store is unknown at this time. <laughs> okay. Oh, why was never, why was a, I'm going to rewrite you a little there, McCurran. Why was a true born child never created from Natasha Krensky and Joshua Wolf? Okay, honestly, that's a really good question. That is a fascinating question yes. right there. I'm going to say, well, of course, Lauren, the guy who probably could have maybe answered that, just walked off. Or Mike, potentially. Mike Sackpole yeah, probably yeah. thought about it at some time. That is true. That is true. Um, You know, honestly, I don't have an answer for that one. That is, again, a secret that has yet to be revealed. So, uh, uh, as I know it, so they had the wolf. Uh, they were given the wolf blood name when they came to, to the inner sphere. Because most of the traditionally wolf would be for uh, is not a blood name on a regular correct. basis. Correct. But yes. the but the Khan at that time, if I remember my history correctly, had bestowed that upon them for taking on this incredible mission. Yes. yes. So then his uh, bloodline should have been involved in the clan breeding program. Right. And Natasha Kransky as a blood named warrior as well would too. So uh, that is an excellent question. That does sound like and, a really good Yes, Craig, that does sound like a story idea. Hint, hint. Uh, let's see. So you get from Karaman, which eye, which eye did Jack Farrell lose and why? Okay, that's a deep cut for Dark Age. Mm. I thought it was the right one, I but it's been a while since I read those yeah. books. Now, the why is a really good There is a story idea. Yeah. How did Jack Farrell become One-Eyed Jack? Because we don't explain it in the Dark Age. He's very cagey, of course. And I would love, I've mentioned it before, I would love to see that character return in the Ill Clan era. I think there's more to him. Um, and talk about an era where you can play both sides against the middle. This era is perfect for him to run around in. So someone has to call to call out for people uh, who are interested in maybe running a shrapnel story. If you love Jack Farrell, Pitch something, write it up, and send it to Shrapnel. Sorry, I'm getting waved off by Telonius. I'm I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Oh, probably have gone too far. But we will continue anyway, because we said so. All right. I play, but haven't read much fiction. Was the Comstar blackout ever explained? Yes. Yes, yes it was. And and if you want to, it's explained, it's explained in the Hour of the Wolf book by Blaine Pardo, um, which really kicks off the Ill Clan uh, era in grand fashion. Mm-hmm. It is the, tra- the story of the invasion of Terra, and I'm not going to say any more about that because you should pick it up. But it launches the ill clan fashion, uh, ill clan era in just really. Uh, it's one of the biggest books we've ever published. It is a massive story, and uh, yeah, well worth reading. Absolutely. What is going to happen to the timeline after IKEO? Still in small chunks. Hey, Charles Gideon, that name looks familiar. Mm. Um, uh, that's more of a Ray question. Uh, certainly, we're still moving forward. Mm. Uh, in small chunks, no, I, we're still looking at like three to five year plans. So it's you know. After, that's a great question. That's a secret. That's a secret for Ray to reveal if he feels like it. Yeah. Thank you, Kithrin, for that uh, explanation. That does help. We appreciate that. Dave Zero. When are the Camerons returning? <laughs> that's assuming that they ever really left. The the Ace. 
half cousin of the last remaining, uh, let's see, 3212. How about that? Please uh, read the questioner's article in Shrapnel 1, The Cameron Question, to hear more details. Possibly written by someone sitting at this very table. I just tra I just receive the messages and bring them back out to you. Because I am about the truth, John Helfers. Always, yes. There's a hint about why, but it also hinted this was a lie. Are you referring to the Comstar blackout? If you are, it's funny you mention that because the person who reveals it, let's just say they don't necessarily have a reputation for being entirely truthful all the time. They may, be, they may shade truth. They may withhold elements of it. But it was an explanation for the blackout. So there you go. Since okay. we're fed up with Alaric already because he's weak in himself, can we use Stone's unfreezing tech to resurrect the mighty Sun Tzu, the only man smart enough to lead the inner sphere? Uh, I'm sure we certainly could once we find that body. Uh, but even more so, do you remember what happened to Devil in the Stone? <laughs> uh, no, but that is an excellent thought process, and who knows? Anything can happen in this world. Seekers of the Sphere, perhaps there's a clone of him somewhere out there. Uh, there are Camerons in the League, Free, uh, Free World's League, very true. Uh, is Alaric going to be bludgeoned to death by 30 chunks of silver in a pillowcase? Nice try, uh, but we do have uh, one of the things that we will give you right now, I think John and I both agree, is Alaric has uh, now risen to where he wants to be, but it is always a long fall when you get to the top. And uh, once again, trial of birthright and some subsequent pieces we're going to be seeing right there. The road is not smooth, and we're going to be seeing a lot of changes very quickly. Okay. Terrible wrote back as her comment was about Jack Farrell. Um, I, look, if, if, if you do have a soft spot for him, Kerman, you should absolutely seriously think about writing a story about how he came to be One-Eyed Jack. So, just my thought out there. I'm putting it out there for the world to grab, but if, if you have a soft spot for him, I love the character. I think he's fantastic, and I think he was underutilized in Dark Age, and I think he should definitely reappear in Ill Clan. And now we're going to do something special. We're going to ask you a question. Who can tell us who threatened to take out Jack Farrell's other eye? I remember the character. I do not remember her name. So please, let us know if you know. Okay. To be honest, I don't understand how Clan Wolf accepts Alaric, who's clearly no warrant. He's purely a Steiner Davian, and members of Clan Wolf know this. Except he's both. Isn't he? Now, the whole point was he was the, the amalgamation of the best of both worlds, which is why he rose to lead them. And the fact that he kept winning didn't hurt either, because mm -hmm. that's what Clan Wolf really prizes, let's be honest about it. Victory does cover many things in the clan yes. system, that is uh, true. Yeah, it hides many flaws. And believe me, Alaric has many flaws. I, a lot of people don't believe it, but it's true. Very true. Very true. <laughs> well, Ray, you know, you could just jump in here at any time. We've got a chair open for you. We can make you up. It would take all the five seconds. Ray, of course, is that we are, at, by the way, at Adepticon 2024, having a great time on the live stream. So, yeah, Ray, come on in. Dagger, da Dagger D. Uh, yep. Yes. 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 Thank you. Wow. That helps us. Well, that, that, is hard to, yeah, that is true. That is true. Clarity <laughs> hypocrites. No way. For real? Good thing I was sitting down on that one. So, so <laughs> shocked we are. With CFAX taking over the custody of the HPG network, are we going to get a Fox Star and a new ble uh, Blessed Sea Order? I kind of like Fox Star, actually. The Sea Bills, S E A B. For <laughs> Fox Star representative, <laughs> how can I help you? Sea <laughs> Order. They only get one name change every decade. <laughs> Time for this, folks. All right, now people are calling Charles Gideon. Give us the knowledge, right? Yes, Ray, come on in. Give us the knowledge. Oh, plenty of. I thought you were joining us. Let's see, what's a secret you haven't mentioned yet, but want to talk about a lot? Oh, that's a really, um... Hi, guys. Question. Yes, Tommy. I'm just saying hello. Everybody's bugging me in the Discord about uh, this Aces thing that Randall talked about. That's a secret. It's a big secret. They're like, you know, right? I'm like, yep. They're like, can you tell us? I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> Can't tell you yet. Anyway. Yes. Hey, man, say hi. Field Aces. Yeah. Hi, guys. All right. Hi. All right, I'm going to Gary Con. Bye. 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 The, the real secret is how oh, Tommy Gofton can go from location to location. Listening three <laughs> came from that, Boston minutes that, ago. Special guest Tommy Gofton here to drop one of our larger secrets. That yes, actually, that is what he just said. Battlefield Ace, uh, Battle Tech Aces is something I do want to talk about. We we need we cannot yet. Correct. But more will be revealed soon. Anastasia, uh, Anastasia Kresge uh, is a disappointment. I like when she first came to Tasha K. 
Um, faster than, well, Anastasia plays a big part in your story. She does. Yes. Ah, yes. No, we return to her story a little bit. Once again, I can't really speak about the depth right there. She has been, she has taken a bit of a journey through several authors and several uh, different pieces, but uh, she's still a very fascinating character. But we never did finish off. What's the secret you haven't mentioned yet? Well, I'm, I'm Asa, so what are you talking about? Oh, I'm uh, I can never tell whether what I know I should be sharing right there. My editor beats up on me this for that. So we'll fair. skip that one for now. I'll tell you what, there? Okay, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all know that Sun Tzu is the only Lao who wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> the only Lao who's saying this morning. And his body is with the House of Jory. Come on, guys, give us a Lao we can follow. Look, it's been done before in other films. Uh, somehow, Sun Tzu Lao returned. I, you know, there you go. What more do you need? Question, which pizza chain survived the succession wars? Well, obviously Little Caesars. Because it's, it's, mm. it's to me, it's practically inedible anyways. So that's the one that's going to survive. Although, actually, we should, I'm surprised we don't have some sort of pizza chain throughout the inner sphere. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Lao Pizza, where eating it is a war crime. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see, Davian, we, we, we bake with honor. Um, let's see, uh, Draconis. Well, actually, Draconis, we, we bake with honor. Oh, free World Fleet pizza. You never know how many slices you're going to get. <laughs> how do you balance the... The free pizza? What's pizza? Looms <laughs> in 300 light years. Oh, so your next one's free. Yep, absolutely. Uh, oh, well, now they're flying. How do you balance the filling in the holes with the moving forward? Uh, wait, where are we? Ah, let's see. Oh, how do you balance feeling the whole? Well, um, you know, it all depends on the plot <laughs> and where it's centered and what you're focusing on. And then you kind of, all, our authors kind of look at it because they're constantly reviewing books and source books and seeing, and it's finding what plot threads and whether it fits the plot they're telling. So it's, a, again, a little bit of a combination because the Battletech is a universe that's always moving forward. But at the same time, it leaves a lot of loose threads. Because we also want the players to take those plot hooks and make great games out of those, too. So, Very absolutely. True. Magnum Morbius, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, wow, pizza, free knife in the back. Okay. <laughs> Who is Devlin Stone? And what happened to Arthur Steiner Davian? Was Sun Tzu a secret Hans Davian descendant? Who was Devlin Stone? That's also revealed in, well... That's somewhat revealed in Hour of the Wolf. So, Mercurian, I'm kind of surprised you haven't read Hour because that's talked about there. And what, happened, what happened to Arthur Snyder Davian? Uh, that's been placed in books, too. Uh, yeah, so someone needs to catch up on their fiction reading, it sounds like. And Was what? Sun Tzu Lao a secret house taking it to Sun Tzu? Uh, that would be a secret. That sounds like a secret to the Sphere column to me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Which We need a new one soon. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, which fast food chain employs the most mercenaries? Triple H Burger. Hands down. Fair and enough. That's easy. That's easy. Pizza chain sounds like a shrapnel. The pizza chain does sound like a shrapnel thing. Someone, oh my God, someone taste test interspirit pizza chains. I love that idea. I'm fantastic. <laughs> oh, will the Northland Highlanders return to the Collin Confederation's employ? Loud pipes save lives. <laughs> Uh, we actually one of the biggest things our authors are talking about yep. is the Highlanders, the next chapter for them. And all we can say is that is uh, something we want to reveal in the fiction. So stay tuned. When I speak of Jackson, the devil appears. Has everyone who's we writing, know. Uh, let's see, high five everyone writing for Shrapnel. Slowly adding stuff from M Miracle Warriors to Mercenaries to Canon. I read the commando entry in Shrapnel 16. Yes, it's been great fun. Um, we've been working more closely with Piranha, especially on their next, um, and I'm not sure if they've announced this yet. So that's actually a secret I'd love to talk about, too, is Mech Warrior's next downloadable content. But I don't think that's public. If someone knows if it is, if they haven't talked about it yet, it's a real doozy. So, but I, I, we are, until they release it or talk about it, we can't say anything yet. So that's another secret there. <laughs> Too late, Black Pants Legion. We've already noticed. And have welcome. You, have you guys ever done what Hickman and Weiss did for the Dragonland spooks? Namely, create a story or books based off gameplay. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, actually. Wasn't the, um, 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 what was on the border? Wasn't that, that was a source book? Oh, yeah, we've, we've done some stuff like that. Uh, Monte Diablo. 
Uh, and once again, uh, I, I know I was uh, immortalized at one point when playing in front of one of the live line developers. My wraith got shot off a uh, uh, a bridge, went through the suspension bridge, taking multiple levels of damage, and I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> So yes, there is a, there is a good deal of fiction based off the gameplay. We we don't it's not something we really like demand or expect. Uh, good story trumps everything, but if a really cool thing happened and someone can work into a story organically, that's fine. Absolutely. And the stuff you know about Apollyon's early background and pre-jihad activities becoming Apollyon isn't general knowledge or is it left open at present? I'm pretty sure it's covered in Jihad source books. It's covered in all of Yeah. That's one of the things we wanted to talk about, about the Jihad fiction. Please remember, all of the Jihad source books, one of the best things some of the writers of the line did at that point yeah. was keep everything very open-ended. So it depends on the perspective you're coming from. I think that should be delved into even for, further into the novels, because as we know, the novels are the definitive thought process. And rest assured, yes, and rest assured, Apollyon will play a major portion as he needs to in the jihad fiction the text just doing maintenance on my panzer shrek so i put this on my tv kurt yes audiobooks are coming i apologize for that we've had some internal hiccups with uh, the audio company putting them out i hope you have picked up no greater honor which uh, our new company that we're working with put out to uh to excellent sales and reviews so but yes there is absolutely more coming so the one with duncan fisher Turbo, you're gonna have to be a little more clear on that one. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, oh, Clans has been announced. Thank you, thank you, Kithren. So yes, yes, we have been working uh, on uh, with uh, Piranha on the Clans downloadable yes, content story. It's very exciting. Smoke Jaguars from the Clan invasion all the way. I think it's to Luthien. Yep. And, and I'm not gonna say anything more. The plot sounds just incredible. Uh, those guys put together out great work, and we've been pleased to see behind the scenes photos. Their their motion capture is tremendous. It should be fantastic game when it's out there. So yeah. Drunken Fisher. <laughs> uh, I have heard rumors Mike Stackpole did lay out. Mike Stackpole is, yes, he actually uh, does typically set up the board to get a view of how things happen. And he will sometimes, he will, I've already, yes, I have confirmed he will sometimes game the house. Yes. Uh, to, to, to see how it goes. And if you want to see more of that, return at one o'clock and you'll see him uh, in a game right here. <clears throat> John does not always remember all of the books that he edits. Grey Watch Protocol and... That was, the Highlanders. that was not only the Highlanders. It wasn't just the Highlanders running around the board by themselves. Wow. Wow, folks. Yes, I'm fairly sure that's correct. Grey Watch Protocol and Paid in Blood, if you want to see a little bit of that. But more McCarran's fiction, I completely agree. Especially since I seem to remember a very interesting uh, picture in a source book that people were talking about for a while there. So, Quite a stir. Absolutely. Uh, we were just talking about that last night, too, so... Okay, we may have Im we may have improved things by not being able to hear John, but wait a second. I mean, it's what my writers say all the time. Uh, my work goes better when I don't hear from you. What? Uh, exactly. Uh, are we good? Turbo, are you serious? One hundred twenty thousand words. I'm going to kill you. for real. I'm going to kill you. Um, uh, we were talking about Trial Under Fire. Uh, it's either a companion piece or written in conjunction. I'm not exactly sure which. Let's see, I laugh at a Panzer Shrek. They're like, Shrek, I meant the movie. <laughs> oh, that's a standalone game. Right, right, right. I yes, it's, it's a full campaign. Yeah, you are correct. You are correct. Uh, I, let's see, I hope even if there are many dying, if there are many dying beloved characters, the writers are able to make good novels about the Jihad. Yeah, well, I know the Jihad has a pretty high body count. Yes, it does. Um, it's, it's a very dark time in the inner sphere. So, But that's what I think brings out the best in, in our heroes, uh, with their backs against the wall. So, let me see. Oh, come on. What shady sub-faction, Word of Blake, Remnants, Knights of St. Cameron, Thugi, is the most exciting? Are any of them coming back? Has anyone pitched you any of those stories? Well, since I'm not sure if anyone can hear me. You might have to answer that question for me. Oh, that's fine. 
as you may not have heard, since John's mic is clearly down, he did agree to do one of those. He doesn't know it, but he did agree. Thank you, John. We appreciate it. We will let you know when it comes out. Test, test, one, two, am I back? Serious question. Will any of the now unseen fiction from the old Monsters in the Sky website be brought back in either a future anthology or the fluff from the rule book? So, Talvin, that's a really good question. I could have sworn we had put most of that fiction in the Armored Skies um, anthology. If there's fiction that we haven't brought out, then I definitely want to put that out. Absolutely. I guess that's a print question I'll have to ask him. Because I thought we already got that. Uh, Cavs was the mic killer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm can people? Killer. Oh, I'm back. All right, all right. Sorry, you, you don't get to escape me for another 30 minutes. Ah, nuts. Exactly. We still agreed. Has anyone explained how Gray Noten can make a standard rifle? Look, Gray's just that good. It doesn't need an explanation. He's just that good of a mech warrior. I don't know if I believe that one. I I, I seem to think... Are you that seeing this sort of mystical connection he has with his mech? I think there was another... Oh, am I trying to pull the cord right we're there? Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to pull John's cord out. Uh, no, but I, I still think that he was using some advanced tech right there. I I know it was hinted. No, I mean, this is it, Solaris. You, you can soup things up to a crazy extent. And a rifleman is still a rifleman. I love them. They do well. But I would not have expected a rifleman to be the big winner in Solaris at that time. Okay, then that is one of the secrets that maybe needs to be revealed. Was was Gray actually cheating? Indeed. Uh, let's I'm not this. cheating. All's fair so, and love. So there's a lot more. All right. Well, uh, you know, Talvin, thank you for letting me know. I will look into that because yes, it should be available. Absolutely. A novel about Gray Norton's time as Solaris champion. I would love That'd to see more Solaris book. fiction. That would be really good. Now the only question is, oh, maybe I'll have talked to Mike about a a warrior prequel. That could be a warrior uh, trilogy prequel. That could be very interesting. Yeah, race to the pools. Oh yeah, Talbot, I it definitely will. Absolutely, for sure. Um, I I'm glad to hear this. I confess, I I didn't know whether that fiction had been saved. Hopefully, it is. And yeah, let's see. Uh, race to the, uh, not just the jihad of the high bounty counter heart killed, killed. Yeah. Um. So the black thorns have also come up in discussion at this convention. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows, Jim Long is here. I got the chance to meet him, and he's a yeah. fine, fine gentleman. And, also designing uh, a very nice one game of for the, us. One you know? of the secrets we're revealing is he, we are in serious talks to have him return to writing Battletech fiction. And that may include a certain Battletech unit that is a fan favorite and people have asked about for many, many years. So we're going to see what we can do about that. Love the Dragoon's cap. We're going to get the Steiner Scout Lance Pack 2 Atlas 2 Pan Sheets for Castus. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. That is a Randall question. I definitely, I, th I think it should be the heavy scout lance pack. Oh. No, I'm sorry, assault scout lance pack. Sorry, my, my bad, my bad. Um, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Perfect time to clear the deck for people who had character on the left. Indeed. Are there thoughts of a Solaris? Yes, actually, we are doing a Solaris-centered shrapnel issue. I think Phil said it's the next one. I, uh, think, I think it's it 17. Was... I think it's maybe, 17. Maybe. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's already in the works. Mario um, prequel is sword and the dagger gives it this is a setup for the reason Hans launches the fourth floor. Well, that that's the that big, that's the novel. big that's the big picture item, but a Solaris a Solaris themed novel. Yep. Gray Noten before Justin gets there, or even Justin there, could be a lot of fun. Uh, well, Catherine's talking about sword and the dagger. As oh the yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. Zone, I know, I know, but know. I'm sure that's all politics. Oh yeah. Which also it's not in print. We we've been talking about getting back with the uh, the estate to see if we can somehow pry the rights loose. We'll see what can happen there. Uh, and you working out for getting early novels back in availability in Infamous Far Country. Uh, that is unfortunately at a standstill. There are a couple Battletech novels. Jordan Dagger we mentioned. Far Country and I believe Star-Lord is also... I like Star-Lord. Okay. It is also unfortunately unavailable. The rights holders have been reluctant to sign those over. So we, we get every so often, every couple of years, we go back to them and see if they've changed our stances. So far, not much luck, but we keep trying. I feel all the novels should be in print because they deserve to be, and and readers deserve to make up their own minds. That is very true. Yes. And how goes your uh, own novel, uh, Far Country Two? Far Country Two, Chicken Boogaloo. Chicken yes. Boogaloo. Yeah, well along, absolutely. The, the chickens, chickens the chickens are now from the hive mind, <laughs> and they of course are right their invasion of the inner sphere. It's going to be glorious. Giant chicken coops going everywhere. So. Hey, John, any more, uh, any plans to bring back more Battlecore? Also, I'd like to see if Lauren can finish Shadows of Faith. God, I would love to see if Lauren can finish Shadows of Faith, but that's, that is a secret that you'll have to ask him directly. Yes, there are plans 
There's a lot of Final Four fiction also, speaking of fiction that's not out there, that Phil and I are trying to go through and bring out. We have entire novels, serial novels published on Battlecore that yep. I want to publish. Um, it's But it's a daunting task with both uh, Phil running Shrapnel, myself overseeing everything, the novel line and everything else, and Shadowrun and Leviathans. It's it, Battlecore does not get as much love as we want to give it. We are working on it, though. Yep. Did anyone ask what you had for lunch? Not yet. No, we're at Adepticon. But we again, again, I had the ill cake, and it was delicious. The ill cake, yes. By the Capellan Confectionery. Uh, hey, I think I thank Karaman for that one. She, they came up with that one, and it was brilliant. Uh, I said it was a copy of Sword and Dagger. Wow, oh, wow, Kithrin, you have all three of them. That's that's impressive. What happened with the warship, Arthur Center Davian? The novel was destroyed. I never was like Blake's word. Or one of the two civil... Co- so was that destroyed in the Jihad? Maybe that's the ship. Someone mentioned Legends 2, mm-hmm. Legacy 2, about a warship. Maybe we do the Arthur Steiner... Mm-hmm. Dave, except that might not be long enough. we got to go way back. We gotta, yeah. We're thinking about doing Legacy uh, 2 about a warship. And the warship through the centuries. That could yeah. be a lot of fun. So I'll have to look into that. Uh, let's see. If I sacrifice my first board of Cthulhu... Okay, interesting start, Magnum Morbius. Or any of the cosmic horror of your choice. Can we please can- canonify... The Earth is a black house. Archie Dietrich's unlucky cousin is a lovely land conversion. I mean, Magna, all you got to do is win over Ray. If you win over Ray, who I know is lurking in this chat right now, if you, if you, maybe if you sacrifice your firstborn to Ray, that might be what pushes him over the edge. There you go. So Legacy 2, a battle warship, clearly the LCS Invincible. Oh, Interesting. Oh, Interesting. okay. If that has a long idea. enough pedigree that it covers, you know, a good, it needs to cover a good half dozen eras, and if that's the one, that's very possible. Very possible. Uh, oh, it looks like Ray Arastia has said no. <laughs> I am going to assume that that was to the comment before, which is last ship standing, which means much more battle space uh, and, and more warships. And and the uh, urban mech uh, lamb is going to be canonified. Canonify. There we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Good. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you, Ray. We, that, yeah, we appreciate you, sir. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, not much of the jihad materials out in Germany. Oh, you mean like the source books, Mercurio? That you didn't get those either? That, that's kind of a shame. Don't think anyone wanted me to Discord servers came up with that. Uh, let's see. Yes, it has to be the okay, uh, Well, then I guess for Greenland, it's going to be the Invincible. I, I'm, kind of, I'm fine with that. That sounds good. Can we get another Manassas type story? 300 year misjump warship dropships. I, I, I'm going to have to ask you, the Manassas? Uh, yes, is that, that one of them that disappeared? Uh, yes, it was. I believe the, uh, if I'm thinking of that correct, it is was the uh, one of the expansion books right there uh, of a single scenario where one of the jump ships uh, jumped into a, uh, d- uh, not different realm, but uh, outside of the regular area of the sphere. And it was quite, fa- it was a fascinating one. It was a fun one there. Now, I don't honest- remember all the details. Now, that was honestly, and I'm really just, maybe someone's pitches, but it just didn't get, get past editorial. I'm kind of stunned no one's done the <clears throat> jump ship returns after a century, 200 years to a very vastly changed inner sphere. That would be an interesting story to explore, maybe shrapnel. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I wanted to ask yesterday, we got named Merc packages. Will we get a house packs with house-specific units? Lao mentioned... Oh, um, uh, the, there should be a three-year schedule of upcoming force packs, and I believe houses are in there, right? Uh, I believe so. I don't remember all the specifics of which ones were where. But there was a... It was at Kerensky Con. It was cleared for release. It was posted. You can exactly. find it out on the webs. I'm sure it's been... Um, spread far and wide. So, yeah. so I can tell you, we've got the next few years of Force Packs pretty much set. Very true. And the book was titled Living Legends. That was the one with the Manassas. Yes. Okay. I was, that was a good, that's a nice little source book if you haven't looked at it. It's, it's, it's really fun. Also, for those who are asking, um, uh, we are working on bringing back the old source books in ebook, POD, and print. So we want to get those down. The ones that are out of print, we're going to bring them back into print. It's just there's a lot of them over the past 40 years. Yep. It is an immense trove of incredible material, but we want to be available for all of you folks in whatever uh, format you want to have it in. So, yep. yeah. Uh, let's see, Charles, that's on early Easter present. Thank you, Talon. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see. Poofed, poofed into the Huntress system. I see. Whoops. Poofed. Let's see. Fate of the Arthur SD was detailed. Oh, one of the Arthur was in one of the Jihad source books. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Sebastian Forsberg. Thank you, Ray. Ray, I don't know why you just don't come over here and grab a microphone. 
It's hopefully okay. It's a big shit to tell. Well, Ray is not I doing it. We are, we are having them proof. Ray has much more important things to do than proof old source books. We have people for that. It's all good. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, all right, folks. Not only do you have the two of us, but you've got Ray as well. He had his full hour yesterday, but we're getting some good ones here. Just yes, pop that yes. in there. We will uh, we will pass that through. I was trying to predict who would be in Legends 2 just to see how many I could guess correctly, and it's been kind of tough. Are there going to be a lot of deep cup characters in that one? Yes. We, we've got some deep cups. We've got some oh, deep yeah. cups. Oh, yes. uh, always the Legends books are a fantastic grab bag. Oh, yeah. Some old favorites, some new ones, some surprises. Boy, the last one certainly engendered a lot of fan discussion when it's yes, written. It uh, Non-blood named Jade War Jade Falcon Warrior was not included in it. Mm. And boy, the fans let us know about it. So hopefully they're in this one. I don't know. I haven't flipped through it yet. Absolutely. I have. I actually have a few articles in there. Okay. There are definitely some deep cuts. All right. All right. Yep. yep. Ray knows better. That, uh, Craig, you know, that's, that's, that's true. That's, yep. that's very true. So Ray Low. <laughs> Come on, folks, you got about 20 minutes left, and you surely must have more questions. The Battle Tech is 40 years old. Dig deep. Dig out to those old source books. And anything you've ever want to know or about upcoming things, we won't be able to answer you know, everything. You know what? Mm -hmm. Actually, I do have a secret I can reveal. Go for it. So, and speaking of one of the source book things we we're doing, uh, we are also, we have gotten our hands on pages of the old comic book series. Ooh, yes. And we are looking at releasing those, which I'm actually very much looking forward to. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's forthcoming, along with the source books and Battle Core. Yeah, my my plate is overflowing. Uh, let's see. Express How do authors come up with a new camo specs? Do they visualize it or just write something and have an artist interpret? Um, I, you know, let's ask an author who's sitting right next to me. That's you. Uh, well, you just, that's me. Uh, yes. Well, sometimes we need to go with what has already been designed. And once right. again, Camo Specs is usually quite a, uh, a bit ahead of us. But if we need to create a new unit, uh, sometimes it does come where the chicken and the egg is the question. And at that some point, we go, we bring the uh, color scheme to them. Usually, it's just best and easiest to give them some potential colors or give them some guidance, and they will create something magnificently. Each and every one of them is an artist in their own right, and I I personally trust their hard work there. Magna, just plus one to your comment. That was mm. perfection. How prevalent will Tom Star and the Splinter factions be in Ill Clan in 3250? Uh, not. <laughs> never say never, folks. Yeah, you, you can keep the word thing. Blake be with you. Uh, Sadly, uh, stories about warships and battle armor users have become rare. I mean, Caleb Daly Davian, Calandra Kell, our war tanker. Why not battle armor? That question started to move past. Does anyone want Caleb Davian fiction? Let us know. You want a what? Uh, Caleb Davian fiction. Oh. Uh, well, let us know, yes. Yeah. I, I Michael Ciervella, future Comstar Newsnet broadcaster in a MechWarrior or BT video game. If you folks would like to see that, that I think would be kind of awesome. Let He's definitely know. got the voice for it. I would love to do it. Uh, how long can a special operative live in the Canadian wilderness after an op goes bad? Asking for a friend. <laughs> nice. We're getting novels to give more uh, face time to Yori and Nicole, which is great. Any plans to give some uh, spotlight to LC leaders? I feel like we haven't seen much of them since Bonfire of Worlds. Uh, yes, it's almost yes. like we discussed that. I know. Yes. That, that came up just recently in, in uh, novel fiction discussions. Yes, exactly. So, yes, the answer, Rob, is a yes. Uh, Larry Commonwealth, I mean, you're going to see him. Not sure you're going to like what happens, but you're going to see him. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yes, let's see our, it's, it's coming. Any further news on Battletech Command will be with us. Randall said on his Tuesday Newsday that it had been delayed, but the issue seemed to have been worked through. I believe he did mention last night yes. during the live stream uh, right. that yeah, things look far more settled now. So sooner rather than later, we'll keep you updated. Yep. Uh, Loxtail, I'm new to Battletech. Any plans for novel about combat vehicle crews? Are there any stories I don't know about? I'm pretty sure we have touched on combat vehicles in Shrapnel. The issues escape me. I mean, which ones we've done because we do have 16 out now, which is amazing. And thank you guys very much for supporting that. Shrapnel would not exist without you. Um, a novel. Hmm. Now I'm thinking like Fury in the 31st century. Um, I'm not necessarily against it. It would be an interesting experiment. Maybe a short novel. Might work uh, better at that length. Potentially. But yeah, that's a, not a bad idea. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. 
And yes, we'll see more with Yori in a couple of uh, Very soon, Yori is going to be um, doing things. Uh, let's see. A long, is a long time in the Tukade. Yes, that's, yes. Uh, Michael. No, that, that, that wasn't me. I, I was in the Tukade. That was Schmetzer. That may have been Schmetzer. That yeah. sounds about right. What's the deal with Sea Bills and Ill Clan? Ah, uh, they they are now C bills, C fox bills, S E A bills. Oh, see here, I thought we were gonna bring out the Alaric. As, oh, the as Alaric as currency. Oh, yes. that'd be great. Yes. I'm burning my Alarics. Yes. Uh, will House Steiner become a worthy archon that rescues the Lyran column and Wales to the true power, to superpower status? Become a worthy archon? Doesn't it need a worthy archon? Rescue. Well, the Lyran Commonwealth. Okay, the Lyran Commonwealth does need rescuing. That's we true. Do, we do need to talk. So, about desperate it. times breeds desperate measures for the Lyrans. And again, you'll have to read more to find out. That's forthcoming. Uh, let's see. I know you just filled the from Wandy Lismus. I know you just filled the void. Whiskers left between Dark Age and Civil War. But did you really have to nuke everyone you love from? <laughs> Is that Mr. Gossip? Is simple. As Han Solo says, that's not my fault. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, yeah. One of the stories about the ELH that was about a CV unit. Yes, the name escapes me, but that is correct. So we have touched on uh, combat like tank crews or, or or whatever, but I, I'm open to more of them. And we certainly open to more of them in fiction, in uh, shrapnel. Let's Has see. there been any discussion of branching out with the video games like an aerospace or squad tactical battle armor game? That's a little in in oh, interesting. A squad, mm -hmm. I think a squad tactical battle armor game would be That might be pretty awesome. Fun. Aerospace? Don't know. Uh, that's a good question for Piranha. Very uh, true. That could be yeah. really fun. We'll do we'll do uh, Aerotech uh, online. We'll just you know rip off Eve and it'll be all good. Uh, let's see. Truly George ASF pilots. Uh, maybe possibly someone's got to write it. Mainly aimed at Ray, but aimed at all of you. Once the Mercenaries Kickstarter is delivered and the current plan fiction is in the process of being written, what's the next step in the journey? Uh, that is aimed to name it Ray, but we're we're map we're mapping that out right now. I would say, and Ray, correct me if I'm wrong. Like like phase one, we're we're well along. If not, I'm not sure we're necessarily approaching per se. That's a secret that can't be told because we want that to blow readers' minds. We want that to blow readers and players' minds. There there are big things afoot, but that's something I cannot talk about. So rest assured, though, there is lots more coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, tons of interesting, really. Energy stories and, and a meta plot that will shake the inner sphere to its very core. To follow on Talvin's idea, a Raven Alliance novel, perhaps? Well, I think some perhaps. author, maybe at this very table, might be working on something with the uh, the Raven Alliance. The Snow Ravens are definitely uh, next in my list right there. We've had a novel in the works for a while. It did get postponed for a few different projects, but I'm back at it now, so that is a good thing. Um, any plan to make Ironwind Metals models available to UK buyers as part of the search for a UK supplier? To the best of my knowledge, and I, I will I will confess, Ray, if you have any new knowledge on this, please chime in. I'm not very knowledgeable. I know we are looking for not only UK, but European distribution, steady European distribution. We are still searching for that. It is ongoing. We are hoping to have that rectified soon, but I, I do not know if there's any uh, update on that right now. Let's see. Now we're in phase one. Have the, yes, yes. All the way up to phase four. So yeah, plenty, plenty more to come to the Oakland era. Very true. Uh, did Fritz Donner know he was a bomb? That's a fascinating story. I've always had my own suspicions, but that's definitely a piece of uh, jihad fiction that will be, that should be, and will be written. Can we get a story about a manic disorganized company in the industry that makes plastic minis popular for Max? That's how they deal with irate customers with looming deadlines. Okay, so this is the thing. There's a, there's a saying that truth is stranger than fiction. If they wrote up what we did, no one would believe it. Absolutely. No, no, oh, yeah. say, that, that can't that can't happen. That's that's not possible. Uh, let's see. Shake it. So, <laughs> maybe some of Alaric's saucy pics leaked to the chatter web. I mean, I can either confirm or deny that there might be more out there. Since the Crescent Hawks have been canonized, can we get some fiction for them? We did a uh, Crescent Hawk story in Shrapnel recently. Yeah, that's believe, a Phil question. Right? Someone tell me. We we didn't we we did a Crescent Hawk story recently, right? Yeah, I believe um, so. Where can we find a chronolog chronological list of Shadowrun fiction? If you're talking about publication, that's in the back of every Shadowrun book that's currently out. So there you go. Uh, buy your ebook. Look in the very back. <clears throat> it looks big. 
Ludwig. Ludwig, Ludwig Steiner. Oh my God, that, that is a one, that is a hell of a handle. Not okay, lie. folks, we've got about 15 minutes left to get in your last questions. Once again, it is John Helfers, the executive editor. My name is Michael Ciravella. We're happy to answer your questions and tell you these secrets on your lunchtime that you really want to know. Uh, Rob, yes, the Crimson Hawks were in Shapelot 15, and it was a hell of a story, as I recall. Oh, 15, yes, our all merch issue. Yes, yes, that was great. We brought them back. Yep. Is the Magistrate going to split from the Cappies in the Ill Clan era? Oh, um, well. They are so intermarried at this point. Uh, it would yeah. be a fascinating question. We know that uh, mm. they're going to have to face quite a few things over the intervening year. Right, right. Will you ever fill the story void before 3025? That's a really good question. Possibly. Never count that out. FanPro tried. Will you ever translate the novels they published to the clan founder? So, on that note, I have two translated German novels on my plate. Again, my plate overfloweth. We are working on publishing those as a test run uh, and seeing how they do. And I, it is my hope to bring all the German novels, the original German published only, into English. Yes. Their stories deserve to be told. Ray may have an apoplectic fit, but it is my hope they will also be canon. We'll be running them through fact check and seeing what was done over there. It's going to depend on what fact check comes back with and whether we can make them work or not. So... Ray, of course, is final authority on whether they're canon or not. I would prefer them to be, but I defer to him. Sorry if it's already been answered already, but any chance of a follow-up book to Damocles sanction? Well, gosh. Absolutely. Yes. We just need to get through the Snow Ravens and another great house. Yes. And then potentially. Michael's Michael's plate is loaded, but I'm sure he'd love to return to oh, see yeah. about that. The Davians versus. Uh, Anyone. This is. Combine. Draconis. That's it. Karita, House Karita, yes, Indeed. yes. We had a blast writing that. We had a blast putting really it together, did. and I think that's do a sequel. Yeah, uh, there's just I there's think... just too much ongoing in that area, but there's or area there's too much going on in every area. Oh yeah, we we try to cover as much as we can, but it's difficult. There's so many great stories happening right now. Yes, we get to as many as we can, but it's all we can do to keep up right now. It's just they're they're, they're bringing them out faster than I can put it out. Uh, let's see, Michael Brown Broadcasting. Shadow Novel 2XS was cold. Sadly, he was standalone. Second book about the man for 2XS was not as good as the first. I mean, the second one did take kind of an abrupt turn. I think it still stands alone as a great Shadow novel. It is different. Uh, Derek Montgomery goes on vacation. He gets involved in Skullduggery in Hawaii. But I still think it's a fantastic novel. Uh, let's see. Youngblood Battle of Luthien. Mike Stack will do two of those things before these problems. <laughs> hey, someone did ask about Shadows of Faith, buddy. Uh huh. Wait a yes. second. Den of Wolves is now a trilogy. News to me, but sure, we can talk. Uh, yes. It'll be the Lost Jihad novel. Stalking, the stalking is nearly some giant stalking thing. Uh huh. A stalker. For That's those a... one we, we've enjoyed briefly by Lauren Coleman, and now he's flitted off again. <laughs> uh, any, or, or not. Any intelligence units being uh, hinted at for the Ill Clan era? I think we've got one or two right there. We had one in Damocles Sanction that uh, uh, we yes. we'll see more of. And Brian Young's Voidbreaker takes us deep into Seacock's intelligence. Yep. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Give us an update on the Outstanding Honor and Glory public. Neon, the only thing left for Honor and Glory is uh, Jason Hansa's uh, Strength of the Pack, his, his serial novel. Which, of course, Jason, I love the man, but he overwrote, like, by half. But I am working on that. That is the last step that needs to be finished for Honor and Glory to be wrapped. So we are working on it. He gave me so much more. I think there's actually going to be a follow-up to that. So we'll have enough. He, he, he's following in Randall's footsteps. Give Randall one source book, he writes two. Nice. Give Jason one story, he writes two. So I'm looking forward to it, of course. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. It was a German. If you're a brand new author, is it better to try and use big name established characters or try to carve out your own small niche somewhere in the so, lore history? That is a great question. Great and I'll answer I, I've also been a tie in writer for many years. So I can answer this. I've, I've, I've written with lead characters in a series. I have carved out my own. I suggest until you get kind of your, your I'm going to call them the mech feet, yep. until you get your mech feet under you, you pick somewhere out that no one's really explored and make it your own. Create your own characters. Take a world that not much has been written about and start populating it. And But do it, make your own stuff until you kind of get comfortable working in the, the what we call the intellectual property. In this case, Battletech. 
once you've got a few stories under your belt, then you can start moving into the higher politics because those are, to be honest, and I think Mike will agree with me, they're fun to write, but they are quite complicated. Incredibly so. And as yeah. much as fun as it can be to write spine characters and vital characters right there, there is so much you need to know. There's uh, so many different interpretations as different artists and uh, authors work with them. It is a challenge each and every time. A yes. fun challenge, but if you're just getting started, creating something whole, out of whole cloth can be actually a little bit easier. Right. Uh, Charles Gideon, what's Schmetzer's next project? Um, we are talking about that right now. If I had my druthers, I would have him write the next book in the Dragoon Saga in the Oakland era. But that is something that I need to approach him about, and we have a discussion. Uh, let's see. Wait on a prayer. Oh, hey, Jen. Jennifer Brozak peeks in. She has joined hey, the chat. Jennifer, of course, has written our terrific YA trilogy, Iron Dawn, uh, Ghost Hour, and Crimson Night, which I was a fantastic Dark Age trilogy. That was just wonderful. Please... No, Please just... never allow the use of German mech names again. That's that's beyond my purview. I don't know German enough to to assign that. Uh, let's see. There's a big orange blotch that's taking all their attention. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Although Devlin officially disbanded the Republic, there are enough knights and paladins to create a Republic remnant. Is the Republic fully gone or can it return in some form? I think there's an author here who might be able to speak somewhat to that. Please pick up Trial of Birthright. Uh, it does wrap up quite a few storylines. It does uh, get back to some of your favorite characters from the Dark Age, especially a lot of our Republic characters, and show where they're going into the new era, and if they survive. For me, the universe imploded after Victor won the Civil War. There. Okay. Uh, it's fair. You know, there. look, everyone has their favorite era. What's your favorite? What, Michael, what's your favorite era? My favorite era? Yeah. Uh, in general, I've been, I'm, I'm very much enjoyed the Jihad era, even though there wasn't a ton of fiction. I am also loving, loving the uh, Dark Age era. There was a lot of tough moments there, but I've, I've loved it all. And of course, I'm a 3025 classic fan, but we had so many few, every novel there was just brilliant. So that really overwhelms it for me. Yeah. I mean, uh, it'd be as, uh, I really am enjoying the current era we're doing, yes. partly because we're we're extending the uh, the uh, universe. But I succession wars is something about that gritty, grim succession wars where the mechs were precious, more precious really? than anything. And to be honest, you were limited. You didn't have eight million variants. It was you had what you had. You took the field and you hoped to survive. There's just something about that backdrop that really speaks to me. Very true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. As an editor, you understand yeah, it. So, T Jennifer, apparently you have at least one fan here. Talbot says, please sign up to write some Leviathan's fiction, which I think would be very interesting. Uh, let's see. After the next two stretches, run novels, maybe. Okay. Up to five-minute mark. Let's see. Um, Republic Remnants, Monty Python's <laughs> Plus. Oh, yeah. Uh, Michael, do we have a potential release date for uh, Trial Birthday? Yes, we do. Yes. It is July. That's going to be our big Gen Con release, so we have to have it out in time to, to order copies. So people at Gen Con, come buy it. Michael, of course, will be there. We'll be doing signings, maybe a little bit of panel talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds yeah. good. Let's see. Raymond Shekow, best character ever, a calm guard with humor. Okay. Neon Wolf. Oh, I don't know. Really responsible for Morgan Hassian Davian's, Hassan Davian's murder. We never answered that one? We did answer right? that one, yep. We did. Yes, indeed. That was in the uh, uh, in the Twilight of the Clans novels right there. Well, well, Neon, you have to go back and read Twilight of the Clans. So, oh, that's sad. I really like Morgan. I'm actually working through the novels myself, believe it or not. So we're, we're doing proofs of them. So I see. I snuck a mech into Shadowrun auditions. <laughs> oh, well, 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 okay. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, we are down to, I think, the three-minute mark. Oh, yes. Yeah, so like, kind of maybe one more question. Otherwise, we're going to do final comments, and we'll be signing off from Adepticon very soon from the Secrets panel, to Secrets Lunchtime panel. Oh, yes. I, I feel we should have been eating lunch during this, but then we mess up this nice map, and we can't do that. So, uh, as we recall, it was a Loki agent that killed him. That that probably tracks. That's who killed concerned. him, but uh, who was behind it, that you want to dive oh, a deeper into. Interesting, yes. See who benefited afterwards. Indeed. The, the always the question. I guess. Who benefited the most? Yes. All right. I think we are setting up. Michael, any final Wait. thoughts, final comments from the con 
or about what you're doing, anything, or Battletech in general. Absolutely. It is a wonderful, wonderful time at this con. I hope everyone's enjoying the Battletech 40th anniversary. We have been here with you for 40 years. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to at least 40 more. But, no, keep sticking around for the live streams. Here, uh, come up with your questions. We are here to talk to you. We're excited for mercenaries to come out. We're excited for what's next to come out. And, of course, all the great fiction. I would like to thank John Helfer, the executive editor, for coming and uh, staying with us this morning and giving us those good secrets. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, you've got some other fun other stuff coming up in a few minutes. We'll have Michael Stackpole, Brian Young, and a few others back here to continue the Iridani Light Horse campaign. Uh, for everyone who missed it yesterday, there was a shock betrayal. Even I did not realize happened yesterday so now we're going to have to see where we go from there but many more fun things coming today and we look forward to seeing you john anything for uh, to wrap up i just want to say thank you to all the fans who supported battletech for all these years we couldn't do what we do without you so a big hats off to you thank you for letting us reach battletech's 40th anniversary it just blows my mind so but again we could not do it without the fan base so thank you thank you thank you absolutely thank you all and we'll see you again in a few minutes be right back
sitting right there. We're Hello, live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to BattleTech at Adepticon. We are going to be doing another. We are going to be doing another scenario here on the tabletop. So let's begin by going over what that scenario is. Knocking on the door. The Eridani Light Horse forces have reached the steps of the Draconis Combine Mercenaries dropship and are threatening to capture it. The only thing standing in the way is a hodgepodge of units, still loyal to the mercenaries' command. That is, until a Sword of Light detachment arrived in system earlier than expected. Hearing garbled messages of renegotiated contract, the Swords of Light hot dropped a recon force to shore up the mercenaries' deployment zone. So that is the scenario we're playing, and we have a number of people playing here. First of all, we have Brent Evans, the art director for Catalyst Game Labs. Then we have Jason Hansa, who is the who is a writer and contributor to BattleTech. Yep. Then we've got Brian Young, another writer and contributor to BattleTech, and of course the legendary Michael Stackpole, who has written basically half of all the things that BattleTech has ever done. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So good, good. we're going to be playing. <laughs> we're going to be for just to set expectations, you know, nice and low. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> hey, you know what? We haven't had a clue of what we're doing, but we have one both days. Right. Yeah, for yeah. the record, I can tell. Roll, roll really low on initiative, and we and we win. Yeah, yes. if we if the side that loses initiative every turn will always win. Yep. This is not true. So <laughs> it has been so far. Though. So far, we're yeah. started with the deployment. The Draconis Combine mercenaries and their allies are starting a little bit forward deployed on the table. The we've, dropship is back here. We've actually decided to go with one map sheet just so there can be a little bit more fireworks on display for everyone. And we're going to be getting started. So people should be considering rolling for initiative. We should. We should. We should. Ahead, you, you go. Oh, I yeah, should also mention, I am no longer on this side, even though I'm on this side I of the table. I keep telling him to go over there. He keeps coming back. I, I just want to be here. I want to be close. Well, he shot you better when he was on that side. So that's yes. We got it. Yes, that's, he did. That's true. That was some beautiful I rolled a nine. <laughs> I rolled a four. Wait, it's all downhill. <laughs> no, the lower number is better. Absolutely. So while that the, while that's interesting, I uh, the uh, my forces, the heroic forces from yesterday uh, have uh, deployed out to row 12 on this side in order to repel the heinous hideous attacks from the mercenaries <laughs> and their treacherous allies so uh, how do we want to do this so functionally no. i will move my four well no 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 we won initiative yeah you did win initiative yeah so that means but I, because we're defending i'm already out this is my four. All right, all right. Yeah, They're out there. The you move all of yours. Okay. And then you can move yours if you want to. Well. Oh, okay. I see what he's saying. Go. So you should move four. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, because you're gonna, you're gonna want to move to get some TMMs, my friend. So when it says deploy out to twelve, that means I start from twelve yeah, and you, can move. Yes. yes. Oh, now that I did not get. Yes, okay. absolutely. I was wondering. Now I'm with you. Okay, so we're gonna move. A little four. slow. I'm an artist. Yes. Okay. Well, excellent. All right. I am going to start off with the. Uh, I'm going to start off by letting you guys move. That's what I'm going to well, do. Yeah, it's actually. Yeah, the, I like it. It's uh, one two one two one two or two one two one two one two 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 two. How do? How does? Hey, Bride. No. Uh, no, it's the, not. One of the people that's often your stream, Caramind, is in is in the chat. But how do you pronounce that? Uh, Caramind. Question. Caramind. Yeah. I think it's Caramind or the, like Caramind. The combine force dr drops in after all of the opponents have moved. Okay, so you move two, I move one. You move two, I move one. We do that till they're it, all done, and then he turn drops or in. Second tur turn two. Okay. You just know that there's black dips. That's right. Dots in the sky, slowly getting bigger. What? They're gonna come in uh, singing "Blood on the Risers." So I'm moving two. You're moving two. Oh, I'm moving one. He's moving, moving one. one. Okay. Well, we've got yeah. we've got two and, moved, then. and the vehicle assets come in last yep. after the go. combine. Af yes, Glory. because we are down on battle value. We got yes. Now, just to let everyone know, we were given some vehicles, and we're using the new support rules that are found oh, in the BattleTech Mercenaries book. That is going <laughs> to be a part of the new BattleTech Mercenaries box set. 
So just speaking this out, because we're using two different kinds of movement dice, mm -hmm. I moved two hexes, just, just, which is not enough to get a defensive modifier, but I did get, uh, I did walk into a light woods hex, so I have a one for defense for the trees. So you went trampling bunnies. Yes. So just right, to give everyone... And birds. I like it when they fly. Evil, you're not going to use your movement dice? Evil, evil, evil. No. Just, I'm just to give the audience an idea of what's happening with these, they have their own values. Them easier. They have their own unique stats. And so we are going to be playing with those rather okay, than the traditional more. army page rules. So just giving everyone a heads up. Do we have a... Yes, we do. Uh, I had a coffee. It was sitting right here. There was a coffee sitting right here. Do you know where it went? Okay. Just checking. Nope. Aha! Thank you. And if the plan went correct now, Brent's troops are poisoned because <laughs> yes, they just poisoned their supplies. Yeah, you don't have to bribe me. You just have to bribe Poison the lowest you. man on the totem yeah, pole. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So how is that any different? It's functionally, it's not. We saw that in the first first episode of Dune. <laughs> okay, we got two moved. Okay. Oh, uh, Caramind, let everyone know to not worry about pronunciation. I know. It's a made-up word. I know. I remind everybody that all words are made up. <laughs> One of my favorite lines of that movie. Okay. Movement is up three, five. One, two, three. I'm still shocked that you went through the with the betrayal. I'm I'm not shocked at all. I I know you're not. This, you understand because of where the <laughs> crease is. I'm just gonna scoot him a little just so he stays. You understand the content of your character. You're on a level. Yeah, like level. I'm like, how can you be surprised? Yes, I'm on level one hill. All right. I wasn't surprised in the slightest. It. Everybody can see me. Yep. I did want to make sure that I was honest. Oh, no, no, Brent... you touched it. It moved. It's dead. <laughs> sorry, that <laughs> fell over. I'm sorry. Uncle Rokubi has fallen over in the light woods. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that when the betrayal right, happened. Two more. All my mechs are out, so it's up to you guys. Come I on, want... Mikey. Well, oh, so uh, oh, he no. should go last. Yeah, you can move the Star Slayer on an. Uh, we'll put it on an angle because I don't want to get crowded in there. Put it on an angle into partial cover, uh, and try to get me to move a minimum of five hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you can make it. Yeah. Right there. Uh, or this one way. More. This way. Yeah. But you want to get me into partial. So. So the movement on this guy is uh, a lot compared to that. So he can go an eight. Oh, so okay. So like right there. Yeah. So he's that way I get to the bonus of having moved five. I got it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then uh, if I'm moving another one, the chameleon goes faster. And Six, I would like think? the chameleon just to blitz from the same thing straight in this direction as fast as it can go. How fast is, is that? Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, turn nine. Yeah. You, hey Brian, if yeah. you come in, you can actually make. If you go, you can go up one more and then up. Oh, like there? Into no, into that pocket. Right there. Yeah, you can yeah. make that facing that direction. Yeah. One, and then two, that's going to be three, three four, defense. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, turn nine. There we go. You're six nine. Yep. It's a chameleon. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, hey, whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is one, two, three, four, five. For crazy, we're playing three. That's versus two. two but I will I'm point out, however, I am next to. Is. A partial cover from There's anything no on here. this it's, side it's, of it's this line. 3v2. Right. But two of us on this side only are running two mechs right. and vehicles. So, right. yeah. So, okay. yeah. Mike, it is your so turn. Me, so, me and Brett are definitely the gender varsity. You might want to go. We're the underdogs. Cigar, are you saying to me? Why would you say that, Cigar? Oh, we are gloriously so going to defeat the them. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> Running at 11. See, because I, I poured all of my uh, Brian, into the piloting I, and skills. I just think oh, you're missing well, out on an opportunity to betray nice. people. Yes. Nice. Nice. So even if Where your guys you are on the average, here, you can make up the advantage. Mine are only average, okay. except for the, well, the panther. I want this to go fast. Yes, I want to wipe them very quickly. Yes. Fall 
yep. all about them and run amok like a Jedi with with stormtroopers. Exactly. Yep. Sure. Or a Sith <laughs> Lord among younglings. Yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying, at the end of the day, you guys, we want to, we need to be effectively as violent as possible over here because this is their main damage dealer. This right. thing has to die. The Akuma is dangerous, but it's not nearly as dangerous right. as this cursed thing. And then this one, uh, the we get ER medium, medium lasers. So as many glorious as long as I'm on the Hellstar away and from ignore you. something. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going <laughs> to go 14. They're going to be focused so around the Hellstar. I can get right up next with to that gunner. That thing. That's actually you're on this level, yeah. so you're still in you're partial cover. You're going to be able to cover. take something down with sure, it. At uh -huh. least one. Okay. Maybe two. Maybe three. Well, and you, and if they're not shooting at you right and they're only here. shooting at me, right. um, I'll play that math all day. That way, if yep. they've got off-board artillery, we'd get some spread anyway. If you move one more, though, you get an extra bonus for... Seems two with two is commentary. <laughs> it's just because we can't get ready to shut up. Look, I'm trying... What happened? Look, I'm trying to... They told me to do the commentary. They're like, do the color okay. commentary. That's what we're for. Brent oh. and then Jason. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So I get to move my last one, right. and then Jason gets to drop in. Right. Yes. Yep. Where do I drop in from? What to do? It, uh, sky. I... You... You're coming from above. You drop anywhere you want. You're oh, dropping right on their head. It's that whole now, when do we get to deploy our gravity disruptor on the planet so that when he comes in, what What do you mean we don't? We fixed it. So <laughs> at this point, Michael Saravella is being a killjoy. He is trying to destroy the joy of Michael Stackpole, and it hurts very much to see it happen. Oh, yeah. yeah He's yeah. going to kill me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, worth a, worth twelve. A thousand, that was worth a thousand death glares that I just got. <laughs> that was one up, one down. That is a three modifier. Nine total hexes. Honestly, you should probably either Brian should pour, pull the map towards him, or we should pull the map towards us a little bit. Yep. <laughs> Since you're, you're both, okay. a lot of your mechs are right on the seam. There you go. Or we should get something to put underneath the map yeah. to level it out, our tables. I don't know that these are going to be good because they flop. Yeah, floppy. All right, so do I have to roll the land, or am I just dropping in? I he do just, not know. And since it says, how uh, does he ju does he just miraculously drop wherever he wants to be? Oh, okay, and the defender. So and do I move or do I slam? Oh, on my half of the map. I, yeah, he's dropping on their heads, right? Yeah, so on their side of the map. Whoa, Drop whoa, right in there. Whoa, no, no, the we're, we're the defender. They're the attacker. Yeah. Oh, he's following, following on the defender half? Yeah. Well, that may yeah. affect our strategy. Did I say tragedy? Gosh, I wonder how that yeah, came well, out. Yeah. <laughs> See, Brett, I'm just saying, the offer is still there. That's not what we were planning. Just putting that there. out there. <laughs> the offer is still there. All right. You, can you know what? This With thing. that parameter... Welcome we to Solaris, Mechanic. That's my this And run Junkie right Fisher. around those cool and, in the yeah. battle, and in the Smash battle, smashed through the their beers. light mechs. Hansa is only being beaten by Stackpole. <laughs> there you go. That's the best one Let's I could see. possibly do. Who else has got some long range firepower? How are you guys? <laughs> right. That's why I'm dropping into wood so I can get myself some nice TMMs. Uh, you know what? That's level two. Level, th yep, level three. Boom. And the avalanche will come over here on your side. We'll come join this party. Yeah, it will. Let's get the party started. There's a lot of guys with swords over here. It's like That's a, a nice group of trees you're in. Exactly. It's like a scene from Aladdin. We all have swords. You're going to have to put uh, defensive modifiers on there because they it's might want to shoot you. Easy. That is yes, true. That thing. In fact, then, I hope they do shoot you. Then uh, And not me. Throwing that out there in the universe. And then how do we bring the tanks? Get the look on your face. <laughs> I'm just trying to assess who's betraying who this game. There is no betrayal. Yeah. Look, I'm aware of the payments. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm just standing Hans, up there. Hans is already done for. We all so we know can it. Bring, we're going to bring the tanks in now. Yes. Uh, now that all other movement has now, been uh, done, the tanks get to I come in. Lightwoods here? They're yep. not fast. Uh, oh, no, I know. The demolisher goes five hexes. And that's a um, the avalanche, please. I'm, three. three hexes. Oh, God. Um, I would drive it in a I straight put them line. In front so that yeah. they can uh, see when they're just targeting. This way, just and that just, way. Because its guns are only going to be useful when it gets on the field. Yep. 
Same with the Demolisher. 39? Oh, yeah, it's because it's twin AC-20s. Yeah. <laughs> They've got tanks. Do these need movement dice, too? They do get the benefits of movement and yep. the non-benefits of movement, yes. No. Oh, 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 interesting. Okay. Cool. It's like Alpha Strike. Oh, interesting. Someone's got someone's running the Immortal Warrior in the pods. I thought they still got the TMM for movement. Yeah. Interesting. So what are those t next? T uh, what are the tanks TMMs ones? Yeah, uh, TMMs one. Yeah. For purposes of for me, does hot dropping count as walking or nothing? Everyone is about to see an absolute car crash, even on turn one. Turn one already is looking like a car crash. Okay, so he's got partial cover. Yes. The Jenner does not. But the Jenner moves seven to nine. Love it. Seven to nine, seven to nine. So these guys are all three. But he's got a one. Yes. Do it. Oh, he's also a three with partial. Well, not if you're from the Hellstar, because the Hellstar is higher. Ah, all right. Which side shooting first? I was going to shoot with my two ear PPCs at the demolisher. So, you know, I got two ear PPCs. That's all I have. Yeah, range. sounds good. All right. I need from the Panther. I'm not on their side. I'm definitely sure. All right. I need a seven from the, the I Panther fire on the, Michael. the demolisher. <laughs> that is a nine. So what number do I need to destroy the demolisher? Okay, well then the Dyke who's also going to shoot at the, the same thing. It's an easy, uh, uh, that's a twelve. Oh, a twelve. It makes it. I either need a seven or an eight. So it's so that's twenty points of damage. All right. So one. Those two are done. Two. It's okay if they're soaking oh. damage. That's perfect. They're too slow to get in six. combat anyway. Seven, are any of your guys six, elevated? Seven, eight. There's the demolisher. No, the demolisher. No, that's the, the, the demolisher. Yep. There's the demolisher. Yeah, it took twenty. What you think of shooting at there, Brett? Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, the Akuma is going to shoot over here at the Caesar. I believe he needs a six and two eights. So he's thirteen hexes apart. He is elevated, so he shoots over the terrain. His gunnery is a one, and he walked. So one, two, three, four for defense. Yeah. Five, uh, six five, six for medium range. Yeah. Uh, seven, eight for long range. Yeah. So PPC needs six. Yeah, they've got very good pilots at the moment. Yeah. So do we. Got it. Uh, LB10X needs eight. Did Missed. not get it. MRM30. Got it. Uh, nice. MRM30 has a negative to hit you modifier. One or two for you, Fern. It does? Uh, is it, it does it have an Apollo? If it doesn't have an Apollo, no. it has a negative one. Oh, no, it has a it, plus one. Yeah, yeah so plus one. Plus one? Oh, yeah. that's good to know. Okay. Yeah, so you rolled an eight, so that one missed. Plus one. So that yeah. one missed. You needed a nine. All right, ER PPC for 10 damage to your right leg. Right leg. And there's no berm. Uh, so ammo. All right, I'm not going to shoot him. Ow. Let's see. Uh, that's actually correct, Karaman. They are medium range missiles. Hmm. I'm thinking of shooting the little Bubba. Because. Have you got a good line on it? Dome, dome, dome. Well, he's got, he's got partial. He's got partial cover. Actually, well, defender's call. Actually, we want initiative. That's my call. So he doesn't have yeah. partial cover. <laughs> pencil swirling skills are Olympic level. Are they both threes? You know, it's weird. I get all of a sudden, like, I don't even notice I'm doing it. Oh, yeah, they are. Point right. out, well, and I'm like, shoot, oh. Both shoot the flea, so <laughs> they've got no partial cover for me. Good, do it. And, uh, How much does. do I have to donate I from Big Red to Stackpole and have Stackpole clap as it happens? Well, there, there's no donation in, in on this stream, unfortunately, Tex. Okay, so Hellstar. Donations. <laughs> um, <laughs> the 
Pulsar is torn. Ryan, but you said you were already having trouble Two, three, four, with what five, happened six, the other seven, day. Uh, question. Hellstar is elevated. Does the chameleon have partial cover? Nope. No. Okay. You're elevated. So You're elevated. Uh, Hellstar is a one. He walked for two. Uh, no, he ran two, three, uh, four, five, six for defense uh, and range. Medium range, I'm pretty sure is what yep. you're at. So that would be eight. Eight. So four eights. Well, is Hellstar your best target? I mean, if you're at medium range, do you want to shoot at something with a lower? Well, it's all the same math. Oh, but well, no, and I kind of. Okay, so four eights. One hits. Two misses. Three misses. Man, your Wolverines are. Wow. Those dice so are. One, one PPC hits to the center torso, possible critical. Okay. For, oh, for, uh, for the uh, chameleon. Chameleon. Uh, so let me just so steal this from you for 15 a damage to the center torso, possible critical. Yep. There is no crit. Perfect. Da, 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 da. All one, right. Two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. God bless it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was a big hit. Yeah, it was. Well, any RPGs hurt? One, two, three, four, one, six. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, question for you, Roka Rukubi, we are on the line where you choose, where, actually, yeah, he, we're on the line, mm -hmm. but because I want initiative, does that mean I get you to get choose to, whether he get gets it? Yeah, okay, absolutely. so one, as long as it's two, on the three, line. four, five, six, it's on the line. Yeah. 30. Which one's on the line? Uh, the Roka Rukubi oh, yeah. has a six on the chameleon. Nice. Sure. Do it. Fire up. Let's see what happens. Five, gets 10, it. Okay, location. This will be 15 damage 30. to the... I didn't move. That's sick. Right Beautiful. torso. Oh, thank you. You found the chameleon? I did, yep. yeah. All right. I'll be firing at the flea here in a second. One, two, three, One four, left. five, six, yep. seven, eight, nine. I know because it says 16. Long range. So oh, yeah, yeah. On it. Quick math. It's like, well, that's not hard. Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, question for you. That level mm, two, two hex does it block line of sight between the Roka Rukubi? If you're on ground, if you're on ground level and they're on ground level, yes. Okay. So I don't know that the cover. line flips it or not. I can't One, tell. One, two, three, four, uh, from five, here, six, I seven, can't eight. Tell. Yeah. But if they're both on ground level, then yes. Yeah, I think they just clip. Yeah, you're back on ground level, so no. Because it actually goes all yeah, the way. Yeah, so the that flea way. is elevated. Yeah, it's yeah. elevated. Brian, since you have the chameleon up, I have eights for four ER mediums at you. Uh, that's not the, the – the chameleon's red. Oh, right. Okay. Since you have the chameleon up. Yep. Are you still shooting at it? Oh, I'm done. Go ahead. All right. I got eights for four ER mediums. No. Those uh, are not eights. Those are not eights. I'll add it all together. That was not – good Lord. All right. These guys are fired. I just bought those. <laughs> you know, when I asked if you were my partly, you did say, you know, it comes to my, I'm not a great I, dice roller. You said it? I, I did. Full disclosure, you were at, good. Brian, your flea up there, I need eight. This That's is what right. treachery That's really eight. looks like. Oh, okay. This is actually I'm the beginning you, of his treachery. Right. You need eight for ear He's PPC. deliberately flubbing these rolls. No, missed by one. Deliberately eight flubbing for the rolls in order laser. to begin the process of, of my betraying. God. And then two clan LR and 15s. One. This is what it looks like. It does like. have this Artemis IV. This is what betrayal looks like. Seven, it's nine. The, it's just the beginning. Nine out of 15, wreck. Is that 12? Nine out of 15 is 12. All right, two fives and a two. All right. All right, I can't see. Okay, so right arm for five right and for right, five. right leg for five. All right, you're in terms of. Tex, I can't flip point. the table. They'll okay, kill me. Okay, I will. Leg first. <laughs> this is your moment. No, arm <laughs> first. All right. Yes. No arm. Blows it off. Blows it off. Right. Is that's, there anything exploding right, guys, it? That's right, guys. Because I have... Uh, in the right arm. Right arm. Uh, just actuate. Okay, so it's yeah, gone. Yeah. And then the two points... On an ER medium laser bus. Two points into the left arm. All right. Uh, I think if I were to do that, Tex... Where are you shooting at? The Tex, face. If I were to do okay. that... I completely whiffed at the avalanche. Uh, it fine. would be the biggest disaster in my personal history. So that The Hitatsume Kozo is shooting at the flea. I need a nine with the Ultra AC-10. 
I'm a one. He ran is three. His defense is six. Uh, one, two, three. You're, you're, he's good I, from the recorder? I, okay, he's on the other side, so you, he doesn't get partial cover for you. So that would be eight with range. Yeah. Through here? Yeah. Yeah, because the and, line comes down. Hex, 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 hex. Yeah, I'm so, on this side of the line. Yeah, barely. So oh, okay. it doesn't clip yep. the trees. And it so, also skips the partial cover. Well, then I'm going to double tap it. Do it. Ultra AC 10. Hits. Does the second one hit? No. 10 damage to the flea. front of the flea. In the center torso. Center torso, how much? 10. Ten. He can take that. Uh, yeah, he can take two, it. Four, six, eight, two inside. Oh. So oh, two in. Well, it's, a, it's a flea, man. It's small. Oh, oh two crits. Oh, he's two in crits. trouble. That flea's in Go trouble. Ahead. Lower one? Uh, lower one is a fusion engine. Okay, lower four? Lower four is a gyro. All right. Ooh, Ooh gyro is bad. mixing it up there. Yep. And um, I hit him for 12, you hit him for 10. That's 22 back. points. So he's going to do two pilot checks at plus fours. Excellent. Well, you only hit me for 12. Right, but he hit you for 10. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's our turn to shoot, right? Yep. Uh, All right. He's fired. They fired. Yeah. Star Double Slayer. checking my heat. He's good. Oh, well, do I check now for the support vehicle? Red. Okay, so, so I roll. So does it not fire on it? Yeah. So I roll, and it's a plus one because I hit it for 20 points of damage? Mm -hmm. Yep. So 15. Nope. nope. But it drops to eight. eight times. Okay. All right. Four, seven, twenty, and eight. So he takes two. Got it. All right. Star Slayer, he's a two, three gunner, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe I have line of sight on nothing because of that level two hill, do I? No, I can't see anything. Uh, you can see he's elevated. Guys, yeah, but it's only got 15 hexes. He's elevated. Uh, oh. If he's elevated, you, you can probably might see get him. 15 to here. Uh, you want to count that out for me? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, yeah, we're good. Yeah, so, so Hellstar? Yeah, I'm going to fire one of my heavy large lasers at the Hellstar. Uh, I'm a 2. You basically have a 1 defense. I ran, so that goes 4, 5, 9 because of long range. Uh, 10 because it's a heavy laser. That's an 11. Excellent roll. Pick a location. <laughs> uh, location. You do not want location, too. That would be Come terrible. on, double sixes. Box Two or 12 would one. be bad. Oh, when that six came up for a second, I was like, oh, did we just cap him? No. Oh, eight. Uh, so eight with uh, 16 damage. One. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Perfect. Ouch! <laughs> uh, so that he, hit hard, man. So after that, what do you uh, heavy large? Heavy large, yeah. Ow. Er medium, super miss. Er medium, it's a hit. Okay. And er medium needed what? Er medium laser needed a a, ten, a nine. Okay. Because uh, it's not heavy. So location is going to be eight. So seven damage. Seriously. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you need to go sit on that side of the table, you bad person. <laughs> bad red. So that's it for him because everything else is out of range. Because I'm not going to overheat this turn just for the funds of it. Right. Uh, next up is the Chameleon. So the Chameleon is once again a two pilot. I ran. I am going to target. I'm going to target the Hellstar. Absolutely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're nine hexes away. Perfect. Everything's in range. Let me double check it. 24 heat. So I'm going to fire my ER large laser. And I'm going to fire my three medium X pulse lasers because those are what are in range. And um, that is going to put me over by six. But I'm okay with that. So let's first start with the ER large laser, which is at medium range. Uh, so that's four, five. Four, five, seven. So ER large laser on a seven. Miss. Medium X pulse lasers on a seven. Because they're pulse lasers. Yep. Miss. Hit. Yep. Miss. So location. That's pulse is what? Six damage? Yep. Okay. Location is going to be to the eight. 
Nice. Oh, nice. One, really? two, nice. three, four, five, six. Roll for credits. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's Battletech. No, no crit. So that is it for my firing. And I Anybody else? Six well, I think over. the flea's got to probably a shot at the hit the, Star. Yeah, shoot at the Hellstar. Can I, can I, I've got two medium ER lasers. What's oh, my geez, range? Four, five, he only hit with two seven, weapons eight. in the same Nine. spot. Nine? Nine? Three. All three weapons, same spot. Lord, really? So it's going to be a long range. Every single range, weapon hit right? in the same torso. So, so you've got two, Even one, when you're not a traitor, you're a traitor. Two, four. <laughs> Uh, the Hellstar is a one. No played drunk Hellstar is a one. Tech. So he that's five, and then at long range, range so he nines to hit, shoot. right? Nines to hit. So, oh, wow. so I got two of those lasers. <laughs> First one that's misses. Okay. Second one misses. Okay. That's that. And I don't think uh, the uh, I don't think the Jenner can do anything. Can he's at ele yeah, 11 range. Does he have range? Does he have Because the Hellstar is elevated, so he's above all yeah, of the so yeah, yeah, hit yeah. The Your entire force can see him. The you've got four medium lasers that would be nines to hit right okay so first one of those miss miss second one of those not hit. hits nice third one of those misses fourth one of those misses so okay. one one hit medium laser one hit medium laser four to the four to the right arm uh, five points? Question mark. Uh, yes, five okay. points. So, Dragon two two eight seven says, "Kudos to Michael Stackpole for the Warrior trilogy that got me into BattleTech too many years ago." So nice, thank you. Oh, uh, I wanted to make sure when I saw that one that when there was a break we would read that one out. Okay, Things so are pretty rough for the let's star, start with the Ostadl on the Hellstar. Okay. <laughs> I've got two ER PPCs and two media, ER medium lasers. Now, the question is whether, because he's on a level one. Yeah. Okay. He's on a level zero. Right. Okay. This is trees. You would yeah. get those trees. Yep. I don't know if it clips this one, but if it did, you would get that as well. Yeah, Wish we had a laser. I feel like it does. If only we had a laser. Laser. It's from center to center. It gets at least one. Oh, don't Here, shut use screen. two pens. Well. It's up yeah. to those who want initiative to decide. <laughs> Whoever won initiative calls it. Okay. Well, and I'm a little. It's this hex. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think it clips both, which means you can still target. It's just a plus two. Okay. So, uh, two, four, six. Seven. Seven, and then it's medium. So nine. So nines. Okay. Do you have a targeting computer? Nine with range? Yeah. No targeting computer. Yeah. Nine with range. Yep. Okay. Got him. I got I got one. Yep. Okay. Bring it on. So that's uh, 10 damage to your five. 10 damage to the five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wandy well says done. Michael Stackpole's Warrior Trilogy, Blood of Kerensky Trilogy. So then the medium the lasers are 11 He is one hit. of my favorite okay. options. Thank you very much, Wandy. That is very kind of you. Yeah, no, missed there. Okay. Okay, next one. The Caesar is, I've got... Uh, now, Caesar got shot from the Akuma, and he, you two actually have a pretty clear line of sight because he's elevated, so you don't even get those trees. We're just straight looking at Oh, I meant the... Okay, yeah, the Caesar. Yes, that's... Um, now, you don't have to shoot him. I'm no, just no, no, letting no. you know. Uh, let me go with the quick draw first. That's what I was thinking. Okay. And Because the, the quick draw is going to hit the Hellstar, too. Okay. <laughs> and the quick draw is on a level one, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. There's one yeah, tree. So you will pick up two trees. Oh, that's Three, right. uh, two trees. You'll pick up this tree and this tree. Okay. Which is fine. You just did a yeah. plus two. This hex right here. Oh, I can't actually hit him. Anyway, but uh, I am on you have LRMs. Line. Your LRMs I've got should be able to reach. So I've not, only got. He's, not, he's a different type of. Different uh, I've got different streak, configuration. I've got streak shorts. Oh, okay, then yeah. Uh, I'll shoot this guy. Actually, everybody else has. I think a it's shot the same range. Here. They're at the same hex line. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. The quick draw is just going to sit there. 
Uh, yeah, no, okay, so the Caesar then. Uh, we're going to shoot. I really love Michael Stackpole's Ghost War. First person was such a welcome change of pace for Battletech, and Mason Dune had just enough cynicism and sarcasm to be fun without being a miserable Okay, <laughs> so we've got a Gauss rifle. <laughs> This entire battle is just going to be me reading yep. people PPC. saying nice things about Michael Stackpole. The What's your range? No, we'll encourage him to 15 start meters on the Gauss rifle five. and 15 uh, long on the snub I mean, nose. Okay. They don't even realize most so, of them. I'm sure two you for need more. someone to you betray their own family. Two, four. He's got nothing. As we were saying before, it's all okay. And no trees, so just range. It's all so PR. then that's going to be eight investor. for the Gauss rifle, which will be the Falcon dice. Okay. And tens for the snub nose, which is the wolf dice. Okay. Pause. Double check that math. Your, gun your gunnery is a two? Yes. And you ran? Yes. Okay, For he two. has no defense. So that's it's only range. You said medium and large along? Yep. That would those be six and eight. Those oh. definitely hit. Doesn't matter. They both hit. Yeah. They got oh, okay. hit. I, I didn't want to be, I, no, no, I didn't even look at his roll. I just want okay. to make sure he was hitting what he said. So the Gauss rifle, uh, 15 to six. Epic hit, man. Nicely done. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And Nail then mark. 10 on the snub nose to 8. Other, yeah. Other torso. To the 8. 10. <laughs> 1, 2, uh, Snub nose There's usually is a decreasing oh, oh. scale yeah, of damage. Yeah, he does 8 oh. damage. Oh, 8. 8 damage. At long? I thought it oh, was sorry. 6. Oh, so yeah, you're right. You're, it's long. So it says 10, 8, 6, correct? It's 10, 8, 5. So it's just 5 10, damage. 8, 5. So it'll be 5 damage. Okay. Which is totally fine. You totally hit him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, cool. Yeah, and the uh, the stump nose has a specialty where its short range is really long, but it means that the, the damage is yeah, decreased yeah. once it gets that past its short range. It's a Still a great weapon, yeah. yeah. Karaman yeah. says... Randall's I mean, like favorite weapon. I mean, if we need to do compliments, I would like to compliment Brian Young for the name of Katie's mech. Okay. What what what's Katie's <laughs> next name? Kage Kitsune. <laughs> That's pretty good. It doesn't um, make up for shooting me with a Gauss rifle, but it's pretty good. Okay. Well, I'm gonna shoot more Gauss rifles. Uh, still to there, uh, with the Devastator, we've got uh, two Gauss rifles, and that's a 15 range. Yep. Uh, and so that's a medium, and I've got a pilot sk or a gunnery skill of one. So oh, two. Uh, three, four for range, one for the gunnery skill. So that's five. And if he's got six nothing, with trees and range, so six. Yeah, total Plus, six is to hit with the two Gauss rifles. Two, four, six. <laughs> Should be six plus range. Well, six he's a plus gunnery range. One. No. I have a gunnery two. one. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. 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 Wow. Medium range. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. So six, yeah, six yeah. is to hit with the Gauss rifle. Ouch, town pal. Population, you. One hit. Yeah, uh, one, one hit. hit. <laughs> all right. Okay, for so location. Seven. I, th I thought that seven, was going right. to be head for a second. One, two, like, oh, three, oh. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And, and let's the... all glory in the fact that Battletech is a game of blowing stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> and then the snub nose PPCs. Okay. Uh, so those are going to be long range. Uh, so those are going to be eights to hit. Um, For five and I got two of those, and yep. then I'll have two medium lasers after that. So okay. snub noses at long range, both hit. Both hit. Lord. So the first one, or the locations, uh, 10 and 5, These and that's 5 okay, damage so each. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you said 5? Five? 5, yep. yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so then the medium lasers, same thing. Same uh, things, 8s, right? 8s to hit. Seven. Nope. Miss with the mediums. All right. So for Mr. Hansa, oh. uh, Caramine says uh, Jason Hansa also had behind the stick in Shrapnel 15, which is good. Oh, so thank you. They're praising your work. So Yay. that's my shooting. Well done. I, I uh, really well done with that one. I like yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you guys gone? The pilots, I've shot. The craziness. All right. So I think you've got a, a couple I of pilot checks. I think you've got a couple checks. of piloting so, skill yeah. rolls. Well, I have to make a piloting yeah, skill roll for the chameleon. Okay. So I'll do the Akuma first just because this record sheet's on top. Right. He passes. Yeah. Uh, now I have to do. You said I have to do two. So the first one, I, I need. A I, I got a gyro hit. So right, it's plus a three, plus one for damage. So you have two rolls at plus and four. And passes. Two rolls at plus four. 
Got that one. Hit it. Yeah. Hit it. Got that one. Oh, I got to jump to him. <laughs> Those are some all hard All right. Ones. Heat, ammo, make sure we're all clear. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, initiative. Got good. six over on let's the. Let's roll for uh, initiative. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> right. Cure mines. Got to spread the love for the authors and Brent, who just got shot at. It's a tie. It's, it's a, a tie. tie. All right, Ooh. let's redo this. Reroll. A tie Ooh, again? We again. suck this, equally. This is a bad omen. Seven. You won. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to point remember. out, <laughs> in the entirety of every battle we have had on stream since we began, they have yet to win initiative. And they've always won. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that Devastator is my favorite. Oh, with the the gunnery one. Uh, why do I have a feeling a Devastator is going to appear in one of your stories? <laughs> after all, of this? all I right. still need to work in that night sky that did me wrong at Masters well, of Minions last year. Wait a minute, wait a minute. None of our tanks could none of our tanks hit or anything. Uh, the Demolisher definitely no because its range is too short. Yeah, uh, and no, the, the Manticore is too short as well to actually fire okay. over the just, hill. Just making sure. Yeah, just they've got to sure. get a lot further out first. So got we've got to we've got to start moving, uh, and we're doing. Two, right? Yeah, two, two, no, two. Or is it one, one, okay. one? Two, two. So, you want to do yeah. ones? Let's just no, do twos. It'll twos, go faster. Yeah. It'll go faster. Uh, okay. I'll just start with mine. Because the vehicles go last anyway. Three ties and you all have to go to jail. <laughs> well, I successfully um, drew their fire. You yeah. did indeed. Yep. And I got to admit, that they got some good gunners with nasty nope. Gauss rifles. Nope. Absolutely huge shout out to Sven Vanderplank. He's a friend of the channel. Uh, so my that own channel. got a one gunner. Uh, you know, we've yeah. got Tex in the that. chat as well. But Let's kill him good. Sven makes absolutely incredible content. I love Sven. Uh, people should definitely check him out. Very good. Very, very good. And to be clear, he's a friend of my channel. <laughs> Do you have a sweet spot of seven? Yeah. For like a lot of weapons. Because there is a, if you want to run up on okay, that. Okay, so still, that's two. Mm -hmm. There is a level one with woods so on it that's exactly seven away from I mean, the elevator. Anything. I, mean, the I would just I use a supercharger. Turn, you can't? Okay. No. Run him into somebody six. Because unfortunately I'm on a level three hill, yeah, so I, have to turn. I can't go down a level three cliff. But yeah. I would move him last one. so you can yeah, position yeah, yeah, him the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because they're going to have to come forward. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. Is, is it always there elevated? Yes. Yeah, he's on a two. Oh. He's in tree, so he's got a plus one modifier on there. Well, that is interesting. Get like right here if you can. I mean, if you go there, you won't get partial cover from the Devastator, but you'll get it from everybody else. Yeah. But if you if we swing past this level two, only the Devastator can see us. Well, the Quick Draw can, but it can't. Doesn't matter. So you're saying if I get here? Yeah, but you know what? The Caesar's just gonna go up the hill anyway, so don't worry about it. Just yeah, go it's where a game of one stuff up. I think we just gotta get there. Yeah. One, two, three, four. That's three hexes, which is one, and he gets partial cover yeah. for anything that's down. Yeah. But not from you. Right. Okay, I moved one. Can you move one? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Only a plus one. It is great to see dice rolling, Fox. Absolutely. Can you see anything? You can see the Devastator. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> you can see the Devastator and the Quick Draw. Excellent. Excellent. Well, the quick draw has well, moved. Well, the quick draw has moved. I know, Caesar's but moved. so yeah. is this the, the the question is so is is this the demo team experimental module? What is it that we're actually I doing? I think we all took our campaign. We are actually playing our, a bunch of scenarios. PSRs. Yeah, everybody took this from yeah, the BattleTech yeah. Mercenaries box. Right. So that is what we're doing right now. There this is we not go. experimental. This should appear in the this box. Is, this is the campaign that will be coming, as I understand it. Hmm. He's gonna shoot through a couple of trees, and you should you'll pick up partial cover from him. 
But still, that might be ugly. I did need him did to the move. Caesar? Did Caesar no move? Oh yeah, he did. Okay, well, but you no moved, right? Huh? No, he didn't no move. He walked oh, into okay. the trees. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. How did you get there? Did you I don't jump? Know. No. One, two, three, three, four, five, five six, six to turn. Okay, six, seven, eight, oh, I nine. Can't. No, I've got an eight. Okay. How many hexes did you traverse overall? One, two, three, four. S four. Okay. Plus one, yeah. So plus one. All right. Still on plan A. Let me move my panther. Uh, yes. It is the tree of well, life. Admittedly, I also need him to move. Yep, yep. Yggdrasil is protecting right. each of us. A, not a snake, guys. <laughs> not a snake, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Well, five, I don't know six. which camera we're on. Does that work, or is it a different camera? That camera? Yeah, I like that. Or that little camera right there, the green, that, that one. I don't know. Uh, no, we took all the PSRs. Yes, yeah, yeah, we did all the PSRs. The question about the PPC cocktail, that was my invention based on a personal but not devastating experience. <laughs> uh, I have heard of people who have... Is, is he level two? their is way he around the inner sphere in one sitting. He is on level two. Uh, he is not in a tree. I certainly really? never he's intended next to the tree, that. But he's I not see. in one. Well, and those people I think I have like been tree. One, much, two, three, much four, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, when nine. They have done it. Sounds like I need a switch so charger. Don't do it. <laughs> that's not a, That's not a two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cut that a little slim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, hello there. I don't like the look of this. I mean, I do. We can shoot him in the back. One, two, three, four, five. So I ran for He's five. It's open to Molly. And, add... and you're in trees. Yeah. yeah, so I'll put the I'll put a three up just so everybody knows it. I don't like these dice. They promised me they were good dice, and I didn't. They're just play withable. Yeah, they're play withable. Yeah. But you know so, what? I didn't. You fail. should do a grand tour of PPC drinks, but you should you know also what? add in all the clan versions. Although they hit harder. Oh, yes. They, they did, definitely yeah. want the hits so, to it. Yeah, they do. I'm going to do the grand tour. I feel you have oh, to add in the clan active. versions. I'm saying that now. And then, uh, because the you have to declare active or not active. From... His Vibroblade is active, just declaring. Okay. But uh, the chat uh, the, the And he uh, is waving it around like just as a hard version with Aqua V. Oh, does heat of it on? You'll want to do that. Um, but it does more damage if it's on. I added oh, I added a PPC uh, in the next book coming out I it, for oh, the Jade the Falcon, damage, but it's oh, too very easy, good, which very is going to be no when it's active, uh, grain alcohol it does fourteen and, and it does seven hit. Yeah, it's grain minus two either that, way. Oh, it's oh, it okay. wonderful. Minus two either way. It'll have like a really a nice sword, color. But, uh, it really will. Minus two damage. It, it'll taste similar no, to the minus two to hit one. If it's active, it does fourteen, but has seven hit. If it's unactive, it just does a standard sword damage, which is eight for me. But it'll I'm have that, yeah, it'll have that nice yeah. green glow I want you to, to choppy it. jump. Just like all yep. the Jade Falcons. Yes. <laughs> choppity, choppity. They'll be seeing people with a green glow anyway. All right, back to you guys. I moved all my mechs. It's up to you guys. If you could turn the demolisher and put it up on the hill. There we go. All right. It doesn't turn again because it's only got three running up there with okay. sword. Okay. Uh, and then I don't control the manticore. That's ugly, and I probably will draw a lot of fire. So that's Hellstar should that's be, its movement. you know. Yeah, hopefully. Be able to sit there and just, you know. Uh, are you moving anything start. else? Is the other manticore, is the other vehicle going to move? It, it ought to. You know, but that's ready to move three and right? get just right next to him. Hellstar yeah. things. Uh, this one, the manticore has movement four, so... Remember, turns count towards oh, movement. I thought right? the tanks Two, moved at the three. end. And, oh, yeah. time. and then it's got Four. a turret. Yeah. I thought the tanks moved at the end. Do they move in the middle? They only appeared at the end. Yeah, they only uh, appeared yeah, at yeah. the end. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, for deployment. So those Four. guys are done. Right. Eight. But Four. then we have to be moving last. So whatever they move next, everything else on our right. team moves. Right, right. Well, okay. Then the numbers. Yeah, are see, that kind of throws off the count. 
Yeah, that throws off initiative. I, I didn't make the vehicles in the game. Because they, they have 10, we have 8. Excuse me. Now. So they added the, they moved the two vehicles in the middle. Can we move the vehicles in the middle? But that now makes the mechs. Yeah. It throws off the mech count. We would have to move the vehicles with the last mechs regardless, because you have to move last. That's fine. It, uh, no, you, but you guys had to move three this turn. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Because it's, it, okay. it's the third movement survey, so you have to okay, move those so two and something. So I'll move something yeah, else two, two, here. Yeah, two, 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 three, two, three, two, three. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So everybody else is going for the Devastator, and you're going to chop the shit out of the Ost. So he moved Oh, five. yeah. Oh, I'm going to chop the heck of it. My, these guys are going to shoot the Devastator. Yeah, Devastator, Devastator. Well, those, yeah. the Chameleon and the Flea are still damaged, so the truth is my my Bladed guys can get in there as well Yeah. and deal with those. Well, the Flea, the flea isn't moved, but the Flea can't run. I mean, it can, but it has to do a pilot check. There, that's because, the third unit. Because a gyro hit. Okay. So, yeah, your Sword guy can probably finish off the fleet. Uh, if you're just so here. we need the Avalanche to go. Why do we... So they still have three, and we have yeah. three. Where am I going? I got. Let me see. Let me. Let me check my speed. Is what I'm saying. Five eight five. One two three four five six seven eight. That's a displacement of. So Mercuron, I don't drink alcohol. Three four five six. You know this. Or. One two three four five six. If you're seven, asking eight, if I've one, ever two, tried three, a PPC four, five, cocktail, six. the answer is mm. no. No one who is you know what? got two brain cells to rub together <laughs> has tried one, or at least they don't after they've tried one. So, yeah, you got to be careful about those. One, and Mike three, on the chat, four, it was five, a delight six, seven, to meet you and your 11 year old. I'm so glad they're enjoying the Fox Patrol. All right. Wait, where, where Very did crazy. you get your sword guy? Up by the flea or up by the hostel? Because I just, I don't want to put my avalanche. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Give me a second. Because I'm going to put my ammo okay. right next to the Star Slayer. Does he hurt? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Nice. Why are you going to be One, like two, that, Brent? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, I missed you. Oh, that's perfect. Chameleon can't kick me. Yeah, but I can jump. I'm sorry. The uh, Star Slayer can't kick One, me. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. You know what? Let me come up there and help you. Go I'm ahead and put me right yeah, next to the Chameleon can if he's alive. We're just going to double avalanche tap the AC next to the Star Slayer the facing it. I can also throw a kick into him. <laughs> you know what I can also do? Because I'm a jerk. Oh, I can't. I have no hand actuators. Yeah, it's called get behind the Roku this turn. That's what, <laughs> that's what this turn's now called. This turn's called Get by the Roku. Okay, so now you move both your flea and the Jenner. Every, everything else right. mo moves. So, including they the gotta move, you got to move everything left, yeah. Yeah. So, I would just get behind them with your two light mechs. Sure, you have two hand extras. But I'm going to jump with the oh, yeah, chameleon, man. I'm pretty sure. Because you could. Turn. For a minus one to six. Off the board. Push them off the board. <laughs> it's, it's cheesy, but it's funny. No, I would rather use my big giant vibe, giant sword. All right. Is yours a sword or a vibro blade? It is a vibro. The no. vibro is on. There you go. So you have a minus two to hit with it. But it yes. will do the heat. One, two, three, four. I will five, save six. V for vibro. And uh, this one just has a hatchet. Yep, yep. It's not a vibro. Yeah. So I don't care if he dies because he's already, he already moved. Wounded. No, the chameleon didn't move. Yeah, the chameleon never moved. Yeah, the chameleon never moved. I could have sworn he had a movement die on him. No, nope. that's him. Yeah, Star Slayer. No, it's the Ostrox. So yeah, but it's fine. We we can beat up on a Star Slayer. Yeah. Okay. With his heavy larges. Yep. And he came real close to the other thing with the sword. And Let's then it's up. up to the lights to move. Okay, so. And. Uh... Or, hear me out. <laughs> or to save on postage. You could walk next to it and kick it in the head. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. My kicking does more damage than my very but cool Z shape. The light mechs to go, not, I'm, they're not mine to move. Yeah, but putting kicks on punching so tables. I, if, if the flea okay, runs. So hold on, hold on. You we won to, command. Have, right. You get the last move. You still have the health. Stop. We won command. Right. That means you had three more. You, so you had three. We had three. You made us move two. No, we. It should be two, two, two. The only way that made sense is if the chameleon had already gone. No, no. The chameleon, That's why we moved did, up the chameleon definitely did not move. It right. has been there since last turn. There and they've no got two more so left. So we won command. They have two left to move. And we, we outnumber still only you. Have yeah. one. We outnumber you. No, you have two. 
You have two to move. You, have two you, have, you have two left. These two. Yeah. Left. After, after we move, oh. two lights. We have yeah. two left. I forgot about that. One. Yeah. Like, thank you. Thank you for helping. Like, I appreciate I, that. I swear to myself, the team. I'm not going to make that. So you need to be man. The DC and the stuff. Wow. Any more whiskey? I'm just sitting here. Whiskey. Something. Something. Felt like I was falling into right. this hole. I'm like, so where should I move? I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. So that's funny. When you think that is funny. I'm going to have to make a piling roll if I decide to run. Right. With that, I just don't remember if you do it at the beginning or the end. Of your but movement. Uh, you can walk with the flame yeah, walk. right to the side of this guy. He's okay, well, let's do that anyway. then. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Right. Yeah, he's he's not going to live long regardless. Oh, no, no, no. He's done. <laughs> he's toast. <laughs> he's just going to get a couple shots off before he right. departs. And then, now, the uh, question with the Jenner is... You probably want to do the same thing there or there. Um, because you can kick one of them too. Okay, let's do that. How Probably. fast does a Jenner go? Jenner can go. Oh, can jump seven, so you can oh, just yeah. appear right that here. Covered? And it's okay, yep. that sounds cool. Let's do that. And then that's it. So, yep, the soon to be departed. Uh, salute you. Okay. This looks. This looks gross. This is so this, bad. Yeah. This goes here. Yep, that's on the that flea. Goes there. Yeah. Well, I put that movement die next Three, to him. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five. Are you trying to kick it or? Oh, you could. Yeah. One, two. So here's the only thing I don't like about these scenarios. We've kicked ass both days earlier, right? What's and yet speed? every time we go on the board, four, we're even. Or five. One. Two, well, because they spend all five, whatever six, points they had five, saved up yeah. from before. One, right, but didn't well, we I have spend a jump all of our points that saved I up from use, before? I prefer to actually hit stuff with um, my guns. Some. Two, I mean, we saved three, some four, in five, case six, we needed seven. to. Do you want to pass uh, We saved right here. some. Yeah. We spent a lot one, reducing two, our pilot and one, gunnery. Right, right. No, I get that. And then we had to repair our mechs. And we could have bought more mechs. Yeah, right. But we wanted to save it in case we needed to replace mechs on this one. Because mechs are more expensive. Right, right, right. So, Brian and Michael. If you and, guys and that is three total card, hexes right, for a one what? defense. Demolish your card. He I gotta check this. something on it. So, so are we and, and part of it is that they got a whole bunch player? of points to spend. Or do you want me to shoot the fleet? Because of the betrayal, which is why Three they seconds. got the reinforcements with fresh mechs. You're just walking down the hill. Right, but we should yeah. have gotten Four, five, those mechs. Six, oh, we I agree. Yeah. I agree. So that's yeah. Okay. There you go. Because I mean. What good is what good is our hiring them? So we're one, not two, going three, to get four, them. five, six, yeah. That is we're just putting on a show. <laughs> I know, I know. But four, three, I'd like winning. Defense of two. No, it's all right. Four's a one. Oh, sorry. Um, four's a one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. We probably trees. should be using yeah. different color dice for different nope, movement. You're right. Uh, one. For different mechs. Good call. Yeah. Of players, but we're just yeah, using the. I so totally the misread part, that. I could have sworn that he had moved. Standard I never would have done the Rokoro Rokobi that way if I had known. Okay. Well, I thought you were going after the Star Slayer. So I thought it was a good move. No, I wanted to get so the Star Slayer couldn't kick me. I was going yeah, after the Yeah, the plum wine, plum brandy one. Yeah, nice. uh, that's probably the most powerful. Well, let's but kill stuff. With yeah. uh, Why don't you go ever first? clear, it's just going to be brutal. Are you going to take your shots at my Devastator? We are going to take a lot of shots. We kind of got this glorious cacophony of, of targets. Everybody. <laughs> oh, shoot over here at the Devastator. Well, yeah, remember, guys, we got to focus because we got to grind you them down. You want uh, Hellstar to go first, actually? Yeah. Think about it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hellstar will go Hellstar first. And the Akuma should both go Hellstar first. Hellstar is a one. Uh, Ran is two, three. Yeah. Firing you, you're elevated, which right. means you don't get these trees. Right. I you're mean, trees. You, you, I get the tree. You get the trees you're yep. in, and yep. whatever your modifier is. So that's two. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep. Short range. Yep. Fives. God damn it. All right. Do you want to roll four sets of dice at once, or you want to? I really don't. Okay. Nope. One PPC yep. hits. Two PPCs hit. Three PPC hit. Hits. Fourth PPC. It's 60 Ooh. points. So here we go. 15 damage to your three right arm. Right arm. Fifteen to your head. Thanks for coming. Yeah, he's dead. 
There goes the Devastator. Yep. And yep. that is why, if everyone's wondering, the, uh, like, I mean, we don't even need to roll anymore. I know, that, but it's fun. That is game why, of blowing stuff up. That is why the Hellstar is considered the most dangerous mech in the entire game. Yeah, but he takes three heat. Oh. 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 Just in case you're wondering. No, I ran. Two heat. Oh. Now I, I, I must know how, how disappointed Brent felt when he got turned on yesterday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it's only a fraction of that. Well, the sad thing is that we have a lot of units firing at you. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of just screwed that up. It's all right. No, it, we, we're here. No, no, we're okay with that. Akuma. It, you can, we can see the Ostrach. I yeah. still get to we shoot from see... him this turn. No, yeah, 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 totally. We would have all had to declare. Yeah. So all the things we were going to declare at the Akuma, we just got to mark our ammo and heat. Yeah, they shot they shot the body real bad. All right. Well, those two are done then. All right. I'm going to go a little bit toasty with the avalanche. You want me to do the avalanche first to try and warm up? Go for it. Because, wait, what do you have with the, the Rakota Kubi? Just a PBC? I have good. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because he's super short range. So he's got, uh, uh, yeah, the foul language. We did to make sure right. the pilot fire first. Oh, well, you're marking ammo and stuff. No, I can do it. I don't mind. All right. I was just marking my ammo. Well, I think. All right. I so here we go. Kills the pilot. Uh, Rakura Kubi is he firing at the chameleon no uh, Star surviving. Slayer. I yep. don't know. Uh, oh, no, is a no. one. I believe I walked. Yeah, because it was eight. What, what's my modifier? Two. What's the Star Slayer's modifier? Uh, Star Slayer's got two defense. So four? Yeah. You need four, so nice. Four on one PPC. Yep. Go for it. Got Down it. Him. Location. Now this Location. is left side. Yep. Four, five, six, seven. Left side, ten. That right is arm. right arm. Right arm takes 15. Sure. No, is it Clant? Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah, because they killed off the Nova Red, Cats, you, took all their good stuff. Red, you said, uh, you said you're a two? Uh, two about... defense, yes. All right, well, I have sevens then. Yep. Sevens for four ear mediums. I'm going to fire the first two. Okay. Uh, One and no. So okay. one of two. So two of four. I split them. Okay. So you have two five-pointers coming in? Yep. Okay, and to your, uh, this is front, so that is left arm for five. Okay. And right torso for five. So uh, roll a single, roll a crit for my left arm. Ah, no it's crit. Afraid. It doesn't have anything in the left arm anyway. All right, I have an SRM six coming in, needs a seven. Okay. No, an SRM four needs a seven. Let's change the ice. That gets you. Okay. The number of missiles. What's a nine on the four rack, my friend? Nine, Nine on a four? Yep. Nine Three. on a Three. four. Three. Three missiles. Did I get okay. that wrong? Sorry, one second. Four. Yeah, it is your crit. Yep. Three, yes. Left leg, left arm, left arm. So roll two more crits on my left arm. No. Good lord, there's I can't nothing, buy a crit. There's literally nothing in the arm anymore. Yeah, but I can't buy one. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so I will be at nine on the heat scale for this guy. Okay, uh, Hitatsume Kozo is firing at the Chameleon. Go for it. Uh, two medium pulse lasers on threes. Ultra AC-10 <laughs> on ultra mode needs a five and an eight. Go. Uh, just double checking. I'm a one. I ran three. You have a two. That's yeah, five. five. That's five. Okay. You're good. Okay, so uh, five, two six. medium pulse lasers. Both hit. They surprisingly both two, hit. Two. No one can understand. Okay. How did that take place? Ultra. Five no, to hit first he one. He three, so I just don't get it. Does not hit. <laughs> At least that. <laughs> three medium pulse lasers, six damage each to your, and I am front. Yep. So that would be left arm. Perfect. And left torso. Perfect. All clear. So it's uh, six each. Yep. Very simple. Yes, we did. Nice. There we go. Kay. I thought the chameleon was just going to eat it, and instead it's... All right. Actually, okay. okay well, like so I said, uh, cacophony of targets. My my Nodachi is firing at the Astroct. Is it Astroct or Astol? Astol. All right. I'm going to fire an ear PBC clan. 
a it's clan LRM-15, a, a clan that Eater headshot? medium laser. Yeah. That should put me at 22, <laughs> 32, run 34. That'll put me at 4 heat. Yep. That's, that's, All right, so uh, no blue I need sixes. On the <laughs> From which one? <laughs> From my guy with the sword. Okay. Because you're one defensive, right? I'm three defense. No, the guy with... Oh, this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and I was so looking one, two, at the three, four, five, six. So okay. clan Eater PVC needs a six. That gets you. 15 points damage to your right arm. He can take that all day long. I know. Uh, need a six for ear medium. Gets you. This is a seven pointer. It's a clan. Center torso for seven. LRM 15. Needs a six. Gets you. This is Artemis. So eight becomes 10, which become, on a 15 is 12 still. Rolled of an eight on... No, a 10. I have Artemis. Rolled so a 10 on 15? 15, 12. 12. Two five-pointers, and then a two. All right, so left torso for five. Okay. Left arm for five. And left arm again for two. Okay. All right, I'm spent. Why don't right. we get... <laughs> Huh? All right. Let's get the Devastator out of the way and we can take him off the map. Oh, no. He needs to stay there. Oh, yeah. Leave him. Just tip him over. And well, well it, we're he's, it's our turn to rubble. Him, anyway. <laughs> so uh, I think he's shooting back at the Hellstar, I suspect. I think so. Oh, this W should be at short, though. Yep. Oh, yeah. Everything's short now except for the yep. Gauss. So the Gauss rifles are at short range. Oh, then everything's short. Yeah, so... I've got two Gauss rifles. Oh, cool, that's that. And so and I've got a mouse, I'm using the NDA three X. It's a very nice variant. I like it. Three. Threes to hit. Yeah. Okay, threes to hit with the two Gauss rifles. Is he shooting me? Yes. yes. Be oh, fours yeah. to hit. Okay. Fours. Yeah. So you need fours to hit. Fours to hit with the two Gauss rifles. They both hit. Fours. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Good job. barely. Yeah. But then the yeah. snubs are the same. Fours. Okay. So let's roll locations for the Gauss rifles. Mm -hmm. So 15 to oh, 11, the 11 and oh. a 6. 15 six. to the 11. Hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And you said 2 to what? Right 6. Right here, so. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Man, my, my mech is getting painted a different color very quickly. So now snub noses, okay. uh, those are going to be fours to hit again. And I assume at this point it's all short range, so these will be full yep. ten points. Yep. Both hit. Okay. So ten points to uh, nine. Okay. And ten to seven. So Three, center four, torso. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And ten to the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And then the medium you lasers. You mediums, right? Yep, the two medium lasers are at medium range, so that's going to be at a six okay. to hit. I have faith in you. You can do it. One hit. See, you did it. Roll for location. Eleven. Eleven. Different color dice for different movements. Uh, like five damage? Seven. Se seven damage? Yep. So, two, three, so Wandy, four, five, yeah, six, we're using different seven, colored dice. We're seven. using white okay, for walking, it. red for And then running, my ER small laser. <laughs> oh, most of us. At are. long range. He's an artist. So he's that's an uh, eight. Yep. No. Missed. Okay. Well, well, definitely got a PSR so far. He did what he could. Yeah. It's going to be suicide. Can't ask for any more. I don't know. So... I don't know if withdrawal things are in, mo in, uh, in effect. I, I'm going to fire the chameleon, and I'm going to fire it into him. Uh, right. So I don't need very much to hit. So I'm base base two, plus two for running for a point-blank range, plus one. I'd need fives with my regular weapons. With my pulse weapons, I need threes. Okay. With so, which weapon? Which you? chameleon. Okay. Yeah. Twi so I've got And firing at? Uh, thank you. Yeah. So Making sure I grab the right three, record three medium. Uh, so I'm going to fire my two medium lasers first. These need fives. And my two machine guns, which need fives. Okay. So medium lasers first. I'm not firing the large. So hit. Have you fired this hit. guy? Yep. So locations. Huh? Is that yours? Two yeah, I haven't fired it yet. Okay. Are right. going to be the c center torso and five. Uh, medium, so fives? So five damage each. Five to the center torso. And then five right to the... The five is right leg. Right leg. So the machine guns. Oh. Well, uh, both hit. 
Okay. Uh, location two damage each, but location is to the center torso okay. and to the six, which and is to the, the six, which is right torso. Yep. Then we've got the pulse lasers. Please look over and make sure I'm doing everything right. I am. EMX I'm... pulse lasers on threes. Oh wait a second, is that hardened armor? I yeah, you completely screwed that up then. Where does it say hardened armor? Right here, hardened. Oh. So minus off half your damage. Yep. Okay, hold on. So those twos become yep, one, yep, so yep. spies become yep. two and a halfs. Well, let How you do hardened armor oh, is you do I know, X's. you do the X's. Okay, hold that Good time. thing I looked at you. I know. Aha. Okay, so. And you have to do 20 pips one, of damage two, in order to make a PSR one, roll. One, two, three, Not 20 four, point. five, But six, if he does have to make a PSR, he has a penalty. Right, plus one. Seven, okay. And there was five on the leg, right? Yep. So yeah, one, so. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Okay. Okay. So then I hit with both pulse lasers. Okay. Or, then I'm firing with another pulse laser. Just so we'll get these all out of the way first, which also hits. So the three pulse lasers all hit. First two hit in the seven, which is center torso. Okay, so one. How much damage? Six each. Okay, two, so. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then the other one hit in five. Right there. Okay. Yeah. And the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last one Left is leg. into the nine for your. I think you take twenty points of damage though, so one, can't keep going. One, two, out. three, four. Because those five. are those are three. One, two, three. You said six damage, right? Four, five. Three, yeah. three, three. Everything was doing three basically, except yeah. for the machine one, two, guns. Three, which did four, right. five, six, seven, so. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So 14, that is exactly 15, twenty damage. Sixteen and a half. Sixteen and a half. Hold on. If it's forty damage, I missed something. So, oh no, that's right because you you do the fractional, you don't round up. So, yeah, so that right, makes sense. he'll yeah. take more damage though. Yes. Oh, probably. Yeah. Um, so now that that's done, we're going to shift over to the Demolisher. The Demolisher only has range to take into consideration. It's at medium range firing the Roku. It needs an eight. Okay. If it hits, Roku. it does twin AC 20s. All of it's on one roll. That's you. So will we roll an eight? I'm going to roll the big dice just in case. Ballistic reinforced armor. How do I do that? Half, half damage for all uh, ballistic weapons. Okay. It's the best thing to shoot at anyway. It misses all oh, by one. So zero damage. I am <laughs> very happy with that result. <laughs> so Star Slayer is going to pop. I had to look up Lister Green Force. Star Slayer is going to pop the coolant that. pod. Well, I looked it up for And we're going to Alpha Strike. I'm like looking here, going Avalanche. <laughs> so uh, four. Uh, how far did the Avalanche move? So two. So that's, uh, I need, um, he's a two, two. So I need sixes to hit with everything. I'm Alpha Striking. So imp so heavy. Five misses. Five passes how much heat? Whatever it's marked. Hits. Uh -huh. So heavy large laser hits. Uh, then we do the SRM. No, we're going to do the medium lasers. So uh, two ER medium lasers first. Both hit. And then we go over to the ER small laser, which also hits. And that's it for. And the SRM4 one shot, which also hits. Oh, you fired everything. Well, I'm gonna, you're going to try to push me off the map, so I might as well try we're to get We're not going to push you off the map. We're going to kick the crap. Sure. The crud off of you. Well, I can't. I don't have hands. The so. poop nuggets. Well, it's going to hurt this turn because I hit with everything but one large laser. So you're going to avalanche, right? Yeah. Okay. So In the avalanche? Yep. Okay. Well, I didn't hear that. Okay. I thought you were shooting it, right. So Yeah, I was distracted by my own things. So for the avalanche, uh, the improved heavy large laser hits him in the... That's cocked. 11. 11. So left arm. 16 damage. All right. Left arm's got 15, so one point goes internal. Roll for so crits. Is there going to be any crits? There is not. So next up, we have the two. The oh, We'll do the ER small laser. Get it out of the way. ER small laser for five damage. Wow. Uh, His plan? Wow. No, yeah. no. I can't have fired that one. I apologize. It's rear facing. And it can't shoot anything You're else. forgiven. Yeah. So that one didn't hit. So that's All right. ER medium laser hits in the eight. And the other ER medium laser hits in the six. These are clan quality, so there's seven damage. All right, each. so matching tattoos in both torsos. Okay. And then the SRM4, we'll see how many missiles hit. Uh, seven, so that's going to be... Seven on the four. On a four. Three. Three. So... Three. Yep. <laughs> well done. So eight With and, confidence. Eight and eight. So two hit in that, and right. the last one hits in the five. Right leg. So six. Yeah, I got a PSR coming. Oh, yes. And then uh, for my shooting, that's it. All right. Do you want to do yours? And then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the Ossol is going to fire into 
the sword guy. Sword wielding wielding yeah. tyrant of doom. <laughs> well, on this map, you got to be more. Yeah. You got to be more specific on this map. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> um. So I've got. <laughs> Actually, mine is a small I'm gonna shoot. blade, and, and the other one is a hatchet. So yours is the only one with a sword. I, yeah, I got a. I'm gonna shoot with two the two e, er PPCs and two er medium lasers. So let's right. go with the PPCs first. That is two gunnery, two defense, two three. Shoot. Oh, three, yeah. Uh, so because of the yeah, so we're looking at four, uh, five, six, seven. Yeah. So sevens to hit on both of those. Nothing. Wow. Medium lasers, same thing. They've been doing a dance my or something. My Intimidation's SPA kicked in. Both of those hit. So both medium lasers. Okay. All right. So that's five damage to um, your five and your ten. All right. Right leg and left arm. Okay. Can In I the see? I, can, I can't. I can, I can see the Hellstar. Is he From behind? Oh. Is he behind level two? He's he's not behind level two. If he's I am not, not behind, behind level two, to yeah, my knowledge. So, yeah, you can nope. absolutely shoot the hell out of and, him. And yeah, he does not pick up partial cover because he's not next to it. Nothing. Yeah. Okay, so I have a one defense just begging for attention. And quick you've got a ton of SRMs. Yeah, quick. The quick draw is going to fire with the so ER trouble. mediums. Oh, yeah. And uh, the streaks, and I've got a targeting computer. So let's go with the. Two medium lasers first. All right, let's do it. Ram. So that's three. Y your gunnery is a three? No, my gunnery is a two. Gunnery is a two, and you jump. jump. So jump. that's three, that's so that's five. And then you've got a six? I got yeah. a six, and it, and range. Uh, But the medium lasers are the targeting computer. So so five. Okay, so it's medium range, but targeting those, computer brings it down. Oh, uh, are they ERs, or are they regular? They're ERs. So okay, they're one, short. two, three, four. It's short, yeah. So you need fives, or they're yeah, ERs. Yeah. 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 Both got them both. both them. Nice. So Bring they, it on. they hit for five, eight, and ten. Eight is torso. going in. So we'll roll for crits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Got Hold one. Hold on. That's a medium laser. Oh yeah, it's a medium laser. So it's I, a five I'm, just, I, I'm just marking way too many dots. Hold on. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. It's okay, five. did you get any crits? Yes. One. And one. then you also your left arm's hit, by the way. Uh, ten is for, for five. five. Yeah. Yeah. One. That I left. can take. All right. So roll crit. Roll location. I do have upper and lower. So lower? so lower, three. Lower three, double heat sink. Oh, you're going to go a little bit warmer. A little bit. Little but you're alive. I now only have 58. Okay. Um, this is where it's going to hurt, though. Then uh, SRM fours. Uh, those are both at short range, so it's still going to be, it's going to be sixes to hit because yep. the targeting computer okay. doesn't work for those. Yeah. Both. Are they streaks? They hit. They are both streaks. Oh, God. So Excellent. Here, Bring here, it on. Here comes eight two pointers. Yep. Okay. So. It's just a flesh wound. 11 and 9. Yep. Left leg, left arm. Left leg takes how much? Two. These are two pointers. Okay. And. Left arm. Left arm. Okay. Seven and eight. Center torso, left torso. Seven. Roll for crits. Eight. Left torso. Roll for crits. <laughs> Oh, Miss. Yeah. Nope. Oh. That's four. All right. That's four. Nine and two. Center. Nine and two is center torso possible critical. Roll Wait, for crits. Is nine or is that four? I thought it was four. Four and seven, I thought. Oh, nope. It's a, it's. I'm it's, not sure. It's, it's four. That's right arm and left torso again. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So right arm for two. Okay. But you have a left torso possible. But also crit. a left torso. I, I yeah, thought so he said he's going to roll for. He did, but he, he just counted. He paired the, he the dice wrong. Yeah, he, he sat there and mixed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, not a on. smart person. So there's no center torso possible critical? No. No. Okay, so where were the, where were the that, two locations? That would go left, tor left torso and, and right arm. Le and right arm. So yeah. left torso and right arm. So there arm. is a crit. Yeah, there's possible. a yeah, but it's right crit in the torso. Right. And so he did. Yep. You have to yes. declare which one's upper lower. Oh, it, it, oh so I did lower get a crit. four? Yep. Right. No, no. No, no. no, no, no. I got the, I confirmed the crit. And yeah. now he's rolling for it. So three so lower top, upper. Upper. Or upper. Five. Double heat. All right. And you, these and are your last two my missiles. My last two missiles. Twelve. Hit him in the head. Yep. Bell and wrong. six. Right torso. 
And right torso. Okay. Yeah. This would be the funny part where the final right. flex. All right. Out. Do your consciousness on check. Ones. Oh. I saw that one. Yeah. Pass that. Can you imagine if it's just like. <laughs> I could. Right. Five minutes? Fifteen minutes? Oh, man. Y you said. Fifteen. Fifteen. Don't try to take we're, this from me. We're going to get. We have lots of time to destroy them. We got plenty of time for physical attacks. Yes, we do. And well, then a whole other round of destruction. Right. But he's got this, and then I've got mine. So. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Caesar. And we've got the tanks. Yeah. Uh, the Caesar can can see the the yeah the Hell Star. Yeah, I don't think there's any trees between. I don't us even at all. think you get the trees. Seven, yeah, eight, nine. So that's gonna be long range on my lasers and uh, Sheriff, short Sheriff range Morrison. short range on my snub nose and medium oh, on my Gauss rifle. Let's start with yeah. the snub nose. Okay. Good lord. And that's gonna be. So your gunnery is a two, and what? I've got a one. Three. Three. Four. Oh God. Four. <laughs> and range. It's short. It's short. All of it is short. No, no, just the snub nose. <laughs> snub nose is short. Snub, snub, snub nose is short. Okay. <laughs> you're looking, looking the way you're looking. You were, I lied yesterday. mine. <laughs> okay. So for the snub nose, we got the five. So that's going to be ten damage to six. seven. Six. Six. Right six, first, ten yeah. to the six. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Okay. So Gauss rifle is going to be. A I can six. see sunlight through my armor. Gauss rifle is going to be a six. Yeah. Is it? I yeah. I said, didn't he's these fives are short. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. He's good. Got him. Got it. Okay. He's Bring just, it on. He's just rolling exactly eight. what he needs. <laughs> Twelve. Oh. That's Boom. gone. Boom. Reprise him. He blows us up, and then you know what? Um, it's a good prize. I got him, and then you see the hell. All right. So we have the hell fire. Everything else you were going to fire at the hell of prey. That's automatically, yep. and it's right, right. Yeah, gone in a glorious badoom. It's amazing. He domes the devastator, and I can imagine him just celebrating. You guys, I got him, and there's a flash of silver. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> It explodes. All right. And he's going to fire so we can take him off. Yep. Right. And that's all mine is. Mike, you still get to fire. <laughs> Keep in mind, anything that fired at him, boom. <laughs> track your right. Yeah. But there was, there, he couldn't fire anything at it because oh, okay. he was bought. Awesome. Bring it on. Right. Yeah. 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 So, the goss. Yeah. So you know, let's see. I can't I've believe you headshot him. He headshot him. Has like, only got both assault. commanders went down. A, 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 a really ER medium laser blows into the head of the devastator yeah. and the guy's so. like, garage, yeah. garage, as you just. So see I guess I'm shooting the ER side, medium laser that, at the the guy right yeah, over yeah, there. The flash. The from your Jenner. Have the little flame No, not for my Jenner. For my watch. My flame. Oh, yeah, you're just going to empty everything into this guy. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to say the ER medium laser. That's the more than way Oh, because you... You want to blow the off. Yeah. So, yeah, just a laser and a flame. Right. So, let's figure out what I need to hit on those. Oh, my God. Oh, so the gunnery is two. The gunnery is two. You got one two. for moving. <laughs> so, that's three. And then the avalanche... Is a two. Is a two, so it's fives. Fives. But you get rear attacks on the Roku. They go right into back armor. Oh. oh, so go into the rope. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah. okay, pause. Okay. Shut the hell up. I'm on their <laughs> he team. He declared what he was He's doing. on our side, though. <laughs> now, th these are coming from the flea? Yeah. So these yeah. are lasers, so you don't get the uh, special knife right. modifier. So it's right. just one laser and a flamer. Or yep. a laser and a flamer. Yep. Okay, so. So for the five. Fives for each, the, I guess. Well, five for the, uh, go with the laser. Oh, five for the laser, okay. Got, Got it. it. And that'll be five damage to roll the location. What is going on with that mech? Five to the ten. Yeah, five what, to your... six five four. Is that a real sheet or is that a yes? Mis that is a real that? sheet. That's going to be the left arm from the back. Okay, left arm rear for how much? Five. five. Okay. Yeah, you got to take off five. One, two, three, four, five. And then the flamer. And then the flamer, the dreaded flamer. That's that's it. Yeah. So still the five. Got yep. it. Yeah. Got it. So uh, and then. Two points of damage to six. six. Right torso the rear. rear. Right torso rear. How much? Yep, two. 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 Okay. A fearsome two. That's left torso, Brent. You should, Come on. You should, side. You should fear that the power of the flea. I the, do? Fear the fear, the, fear the power of the flea. The greatest invention of the free world's And league. then the, the All right, just machines. unload into that now, guy. Does the, does the Beagle Active probe, probe do anything for me? That's, uh, that's, it, it reveals hidden three. units if oh, we had any hidden units in there, but we don't. Yep, yep. 
Dave so, yes, Zero, it does do things for you, just absolutely, not in his instance. Right. Absolutely, so Dave Zero. in this particular case, it's a beautiful thing to see in a game. These piloting two ranges uh, zero. Right. And and we're firing four ER medium lasers and an SRM four. Yep. So that's oh, three, okay, four, five, right All right. six, seven, eight. So you need eights to hit. Okay, eights to hit. So let's start. That's right, right? I'm sorry, who's shooting what? The Jenner shooting this bad boy. Yeah, one, two, three, right. four, five, six, two for me. Yep. Eights, Eights to hit. Eights to hit. Okay. So you, yeah, this is going left side. So, so, so this is me. Right if side. you want to start with That's right, right two side. each, just the first so two, two medium, medium lasers. I'm going to need your help with the chart. Uh, miss. miss and miss. Next two. Hit and hit. All right. Roll location. No, no, eights. I need it. So I only so got one hit. One hit. hit. Yep. One hit. So roll the location in the rear table. How no, much? No, I, left. Who are you shooting at? This guy. That's Remember? right side. That's right okay. side okay. table. Okay, right yeah. side table. Yep. So Still an eight on the right side table. Center torso. Eight on the right side table is center torso. What weapon was it? That yeah. was uh, medium laser. Five points. Five points. Okay. okay. Five points. And then the SRM four. Uh, that's also going to be eights. Yep. Oh, did we fire with the Manticore? Yeah. No, we no, didn't. No, that's those. next. Yep. And that yeah. hits. Yeah. Nice roll. So, nice number of missiles. And nine. we got nine on a table of four, so that's three missiles. Three missiles. Three, yeah. First two Which locations. Just enough to take me into a pilot check. Are five and six. six. Right arm All right. and right leg. All right. right. And then the last one is a eight. an eight. Center, Center torso. torso. Yeah. Yep. All right. That's 22 points of damage, so I have a PSR. CT, and we're there, and he's clean and then on heat. So. The Manticore. Uh, what's its range? Oh, you can hit anything, can't it? Oh, you can see. The I don't know where the card went. Hit. Yeah, I think the Manticore can shoot, shoot just about everything, right? Yeah, it, can, it can see everything. I thought both the tanks had a pretty good view. Yeah, the, the yeah, tanks the, have a good the, view. The, 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 I just don't know where the card went. Yeah, where'd the Manticore oh, that's right. go? Where I know I picked up the Demolisher. I think it got tossed over there. You took it at some point. It just quit. It's drinking. <laughs> Maybe I covered it here. Did, oh, yeah. there it is. Ah, yep. I'm like. So, uh, oh, it's got a range of six, twelve, and eighteen. Seven, eight. So. Yeah, we've got just it. medium, yeah, yeah. medium Thank to you. to drill yeah, into him. The Roku, it, yeah, it's absolutely worth it to shoot medium instead of long. Right. Uh, ballistic weapon or energy? I think it's energy on the Manticore. Okay. And so, what do we what do we need to roll for you the just, Manticore? You just roll once. Right. So six, and then medium range eight. is two, eight, and then nine, ten. So tens to hit. Yep. Tens to hit. So All right, bring it roll on. a ten. Nope. Nope. Nice. That's so it. that's everything. So we get a pilot checks and then physical. Do your pilot checks and then pilot physical combat. Yep. I Nothing. have no pilot check. No Dachi needs no a five. Pilot well, I mean, the Devastator would have had a pilot Ooh. check, but he's a little bit... Uh... My Ostel. The Akuma took a... quite a bit of damage, I Evelyn. believe. That was this turn, Passed. right? Passed. No, uh, was last yeah. Was that last I don't turn? think anybody That's shot true. the Akuma this turn. Everybody was going for the Hellstar. Uh, yeah, the, yep. the Hellstar would have had five. to have made a, a PSR. Ooh. Oh, it would have. <laughs> made that with a five. <laughs> need a five, got <laughs> a five. Get enough. Yep. Did I use five Panther? Um, it was real good. I, I needed five for the lamp, but I got it. So excellent. All right. So a physical tax. You should physical yeah. first. I should. You should. Okay. Uh, you have performed excellently this time. Avalanche. One, two, three, four, five, six for running. The modifier for the uh, Star Slayer is a two. Yes. Okay. So, oh, my pilot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back two is a six. That gets you. Uh, Fifty tons. So this is ten points. Can you look on your kick table? Uh. Yeah. One dice, five. Five is le uh, left leg. Left leg for ten, please. One, two, three is right leg. That's the Star Slayer. Right. So five, touch. six is left leg. Ten. Ten, ten points left leg. And you have a pilot check. All right. And then... This is this is all we're doing, right? On the Ostrock, I have... One, get two, to, three, I get four, to kick five, six, six, seven, seven so back two. I need so a five. I've got uh, presumably a, a two five kicks. Yeah, five up for him? that guy. That's a five. You got it. This is a 14 point hit. One die. Oh, one. No, it's not. It's not of a. Are you? Oh, you're using your sword. Yeah. I thought you were kicking. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. Good. 14 to the right arm. That's why I turned it on. Yep. Yep. Uh, roll a crit. All right. 
Yeah, but it's an Aust. One. There's one. It's an Aust. It, oh, it's it's uh, I lost the arm anyway. Okay, yeah. And it's just uh, heat sinks. All right. Okay. Uh, my Viber Blade is going into the Star Slayer. Yep. Uh, I'm a one. I. You're two. You're a two because it's pilot. You're right. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I walked. I believe. Three. Yeah, so you got yeah, a two four, here. Four, five, yeah, back so two. Is four, it five. You need a three? Vibro, yeah, I need a three. Yeah, just don't snake it. Yep. Here comes hey, snake. Never ice. underestimate my ability to roll a three. <laughs> there we go. There okay. you go. So. so full body hit. And this is full body hit. Yeah, full uh, I think it was on a sword. Is it on a small Viper blade? It's a, yeah, they're all. It's physical attacks. No, you, you actually all, get a okay. benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I rarely use them. Eleven. Left arm. Eleven oh, from no. the left, left side. side. Is the right arm, I think. Uh, right oh, leg. Right leg. Okay. Uh, that's a, not the leg that was kicked, so that's okay. So, seven damage. Okay. All right. Uh, the Star Slayer is going to kick back. And then you've got some against the Chameleon. You can have a kick in there. Yep. I do. I will be flea. kicking. Or you could kick the flea. Uh, I could kick the flea, but I will, would rather kick your head off. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> tonnage to kick piloting head is off. two. Uh, he did run to get there. Four. Three, four. A defense modifier. Two. Five, six. six. Back two. Back to two. So Need four. four. All right, here we go. Come on, Ghost Dice. Don't let me down. Roll it up. Five. Got him. And roll roll D6. D6. Punch table. Uh, that is not right arm. Head. Right arm for 11. One, two, three, four. So then we get to punch everybody. Yes, we do. Or kick yep. everybody. Yep. Uh, you get to punch with arms that did not have weapons yeah. required. Yep. Or you, you get can kick. kick on anybody you can kick. Yeah, so Mike can throw a kick into me and to, because you're right. kicking I'm, from the rear. I'm throwing a kick into the avalanche. Just get it out of the way first. All right. All right. Uh, two, 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 two. I have a basic uh, piloting skill of three. So uh, three, four, five, six, seven, five. Yeah. So on a five. Got him. Got it. Uh, so that's 10 damage to the three. Three is so kick chart. One to sorry, three is kicking uh, one. Uh, the avalanche. avalanche. The avalanche. Right, right. Leg, the avalanche. Right leg, ten damage. Right leg, ten damage. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten. All right. Okay. And then uh, that's it for my physical attacks. Okay. I, I think I've got two kicks. Yep. So yes. The, the flea, flea kicking there. No. Well, you can, but you're going to have to do a gyro check. Okay. Oh. And. <laughs> It's the last turn anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's right. right. So yeah. So piloting plus three. Piloting plus three. Okay. Well. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I got it. Uh, well done. One d six is your your one level higher, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is on the punch chart. You can punch his head off right here. Two. Oh, that's gonna be right torso rear. No. Right torso. No, I'm sorry, right side. Right, you're right. Right Two, side. Yeah, right torso. Two. I know it's part. It's punch shark. Thank you. Yeah, it's yep, right torso. Yep, yep. Right torso. For how much damage? Uh, he's a four. he's tonnage four damage. twenty, so, so four, four damage. Right torso, four damage. Okay. Yep. Now, but by the rules, I still have a. Uh, I have two pilot checks. One okay. from Mike and one from. That's four. yeah, you're, makes you're it. Up. And I need a four again. All right, good. All right, good. Okay. And then, and the, then Jenner. The, the Jenner. The Jenner. Into this. Yep. yep. Do it. So the Jenner. Then Brian, if you don't have any He's weapons, three. Here, you can either kick me or punch me twice. You can, the kick's more effective. So, oh, so help me count this out. I, sure. I, I, I've got a. Uh, he's a pilot three. He, he jumped, jumped. his six. Right. Yeah, he can punch. Defense modifier two. seven eight. He can yep. punch because yep. and he, then minus two. I've only got two, six. one seven, hand six. left. So though. five. He's six. Right. Oh, six. 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 He's six. Seven. There you go. You got it. So this is this guy. Now this will automatically go to his right leg because you're Five. on that yeah. gap that right. determines it. So and no Jim, matter what, it's going on the right so leg. So Jenner's a 35 turn. So uh, 35. Seven yep. Seven so seven damage right to the five. Oh, uh, Mad Cat understands it. Do yeah. it. Do it now. Ah. That's right. <laughs> I need a four. Okay. All right. And then from you, Brian, you can either kick or you can punch with one arm. I'm gonna. You should probably kick because. Does more damage. Does more damage. Yeah, more damage. I'll yeah. kick. I have to do. And the you have a better check. percentage chance of hitting on a kick because of the minus two. I've got a piloting a three, and then running for two, and then your defensive three. So that's five, seven, back down to five. Okay. No, back down to six. Back down yeah, to back six down two. to six. Still worth it. One, two, three. Is it piloting four, five, a three. Well, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. So roll one d six. <laughs> six. Left leg. Left leg for how much? Uh, sixty. So twelve. Good lord. Ouch. All right, four, eight, twelve, and I got another pilot check, which I never laugh at because I failed too many of these. Okay. Oh, you did good. I did good, but 
And I never tempted ice guys. All right. <laughs> now that we have completed the game, because yep. this is it. This is a remarkably time. even exchange. Yeah. No, oh fantastic. no good. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good solid. And well, the my our dro jump dropship has been <laughs> protected. Oh, fuck. No, but he got his head Not this off. time. No. <laughs> I did. It was glorious. <laughs> the who did win? Karita. Karita has won. Yes. On the score. For the glory of the coordinator. Karita has Took finally a put hours. a scoreboard <laughs> up this, this battle. And it's well-deserved after the treachery they just went through. I'm so glad we reduced it to just one map. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was a lot yeah. Of fun. It was yeah. far more about actually shooting each other than chasing each other around yeah. the hills. Yeah. Well played, gentlemen. Thank you very uh, much. Yep, yep. Well done. Chris says when you, you Except for you. Uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was great playing with everyone. I want to thank everybody for being here. Yeah, that was awesome. We will have more content coming through after this game, of course. You just have to hold on for a few minutes, but will they rearrange things for the next part of the Battletech Adepticon uh, stream? So, uh, Palooza? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to see everybody in that, I suspect. All right. All right, thank you. That was exciting.
we nuke that, then we nuke no Avalon where everything's good. <laughs> We are we are now live now. Uh-huh. Welcome back, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, Warriors of all ages. Thank you so much for staying in with Tayun with the live stream today. My name is Talon Coleman. For those of you who might recognize me, uh, since I have not been here for most of the weekend, I was the face of the Clan Invasion Kickstarter to help run it. And with the Mercenary Kickstarter, I also assist a lot of the back end with Lauren, Randall, and the whole team. So super excited to be here to give Michael a, a break from his voice. For those of you who have been hearing him over the weekend, uh, he asked me to step in so that we can give his voice a break. So I will be doing in this uh, next hour-long segment an interview with Lauren Coleman, and yes, I know he is my father. No, it does not make it awkward. So, Lauren, why don't you give a for those who don't know who not might even be a little bit awkward? Not even a little bit awkward. Nope, not, not even, bad. not even, not even a bit. Uh, so, right. why don't you give a small interview for those uh, who might be new tuning in um, to BattleTech or Catalyst in general? Uh, who you are and what you do? I am the owner of Catalyst Game Labs. I am the uh, published novelist of about twenty some BattleTech and MechWarrior novels. I have written source books. I have scripted computer games. I have done, if there's something to do with Battletech and, and uh, creativity, I've probably touched on it at some point in some way. Um, and I've been doing uh, Chaos Game Labs for, oh my God, 17 years. And uh, we're at our biggest and best year ever. So uh, we're just, you know, our job is to grow Battletech and grow Shadowrun and grow Leviathans and just keep these games coming out for the fans, and that's what I'm here to do. Awesome. So, so you you mentioned uh, that you're working on you've been working on uh, this for 17 years now. I actually wanted to bring up a couple of numbers this year for those of you who've been keeping track. Uh, 17 years was uh, correct me if I'm wrong was the year that Catalyst formed, uh, and specifically for taking over the licenses of Battletech and Shadowrun. Correct. Correct. 2007, we were a small um, <clears throat> licensee of WizKids at the time. And uh, I think Tops just acquired WizKids, and they came to us and said, hey, we want you to take over Battletech and Shadowrun, and, uh, you know, can you, make it, can, you know, can you make it profitable? Can you build it? Can you keep the trouble, you know, off of their desk? And I said, uh, yes, yes, and no. Uh, I said, we can't keep the trouble off your desk, but if there's a problem, I'll bring you three solutions. You can pick one. And that's when Joe Houck shook my hand and said, congratulations, you just inherited Battletech and Shadowrun. So that started in 2007, and and uh, we've been just going crazy ever since. So you also had another company prior to that called In Media Ray Productions, uh, yes. which started in 2003. So what was so for those who, who have been around long enough to remember, what did In Media Res do that, that first kind of started you working kind of more hand-in-hand with uh, Battletech and, uh, and Shadowrun initially that eventually led into the formation of Catalyst. Yeah, we started we started a property called Battlecore, which was supposed to be an online fiction anthology, uh, uh, live, live kind of like before, before streaming was a thing, uh, we were streaming uh, Battletech fiction. And we did pretty good. Uh, it, was, it was hit or miss some months, but we did overall, we did pretty well. Um, In Mirror Productions was the company we formed to um, that basically uh, oversaw the Battlecore product. Um, uh, business tip for anyone out there looking to get started. Do not name your company a pun in Latin. <laughs> Nobody will ever get it. I don't think everyone, I don't think anybody still gets it. Nobody will ever even pronounce it correctly. So yeah, that was in Media Ray Productions, um, which was a Latinish for in the middle of the story or Actually, in the middle of the media. Ker- Kerm- uh, I, I, I'm going to botch your name. Kerm- uh, Day or Kermand? Uh, still says no. In Media Ray is still the company coming up with PayPal. Use the pay for stuff from the Catalyst store. We we have we have done we have jumped through so many hoops to do to change our DBA from Catalyst to actually our business name. Officially, it is now the name of the corporation, Catalyst Game Labs. But not everyone got the word out there. In fact, even Chase Banking screws it up half the time. It's just an artifact that's never going to go away. And it's a good little tidbit of history, as you know. The next, hopefully, you know, ten plus easily years of managing <laughs> these properties, you know, it'll just it'll end up becoming one of those little pieces of lore that kind of stick around and just end up turning into fun stories afterwards. At least that's what I see it turning into. Well, you know, we were we were learning, you know. I was a I was a novelist and a, I was a game writer, a game developer, novelist for for FASA. Um, I wrote a lot of source books, a lot, a lot of novels. When it was my turn to 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 try to be a publisher, um. I knew a little enough to get going. I knew enough to be dangerous. Um, I still shot myself in the foot a couple times along the way. So, 
you know, we learn. And the, the trick is just don't make the same mistake twice. And, you know, just get your kids in the industry and, and ruin their lives forever more, right? Yeah. Just, you know. So I have to say that because he dragged me into this industry. Oh, yes. You were, <laughs> you were, you were kicking and screaming the uh, whole way. 100%. Uh-huh. So let's go over some numbers real quick. So we're obviously, everyone obviously is very well aware that we're celebrating 40 years of Battletech. Um, obviously, we haven't been the custodians of the property the entire time of those 40 years. No. Um, as you said, over the last 17 years that we've been kind of the custodians of the, the licenses and properties. Um, but, oh, and then uh, 35 years, for those who might be some Shadowrun enthusiasts in the chat there uh, who might be playing both games, uh, 35 years of Shadowrun, 17 years as Catalyst. I think that makes four-ish years as in Media Ray prior to that, doing the fiction and publishing, like you said before. Yes. Um, so over all this time, you know, starting from just the, the time when Ca Catalyst became the custodian, how have you... What what has been what you think are major changes that you made to the property lines as the as essentially the CEO or a, a very much a content creator oh, wow. that has directly influenced the growth that we see today, even if it was something in tidbit that you thought that this might have been the turning point, you know, ten plus years ago that you might have seen this coming? Um so that's a good that's a really good question. And and there's 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 just no easy answer to it. Uh we did a lot right. Um, first of all, we 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 got we went we went there and, and we we dredged up every Battletech content creator we could get our hands on and said, you know, are you willing to come work with us? Um, there was a lot of uh, uncertainty and bad blood only because uh, the previous company uh, had stopped paying bills and a lot of people hadn't been paid for product for work they had done. They got published. Uh, to my knowledge, anything that we Accepted from the previous company that we published, all was taken care of. All the creators were paid, but there was still a lot of people that didn't get paid out there um, for, for, by the previous company, and uh, and that was just just a shame because because first thing a company should do is be financially responsible, um, and I do say that with a straight face for those who are going to start uh, uh, chirping out there. Uh, yes, you're going to make mistakes, even big ones, um, potentially even company-ending ones, but if you just get back in front of it and make it all good. You can succeed. You can continue. Um, to my knowledge, we have never had an artist or an author go away uh, without having their contract paid. Um, so that was the first thing we did. Is we just made a point of getting all the talent we could get together. Um, and we did that. And then we just worked on really focusing on the story. Uh, uh, Battletech is full. At the end, Battletech is really, as much as a wargaming uh, board game, it's also a story. Um, lots of stories. That's why it's it's lasted for 40 years. Um, so we, we, we focus on the story and keeping the story going, advancing the universe as much as we could for as long as we could. Uh, that was the second thing we really did right. And the third thing we did right, the thing that really, really put us back on the map. And we were doing well three and a half years ago. We were doing just fine. Cat Catalyst was doing well. Baltic and Shadow were doing well. But the thing we were able to do is bring plastics back to the box set. I was saying you're referencing back to the Clan Invasion the, Kickstarter. Uh, right, bef uh, right, before right before that, actually, we put the we put the uh, about, uh, plastics back in the game of armored combat, and that was a uh, that was an effort, and but it was it showed us that there was such a huge upside for that. That's what that's what really got us going on planning the Clan Invasion Kickstarter to ter to return plastics, um, to take Baltic into plastics, which it really had never been. Uh, it had plastics in the, in the box set a long time ago, but more recently. But Baltic had relied on metal for decades, and and there and I remember metal still to stay does great metals, but the industry had been changing. Um, the gaming industry had been changing as evidence on Kickstarter with with the uh, huge uh, uh, prevalence of. Uh, Plastic-based miniatures companies. I think, just, one of the big, I think one of the first ones that I, we did research a lot together yeah. on that. I think one of the big ones we researched into um, at the time was Reaper Bones. Reaper Bones, Kingdom Death. I yeah, mean, Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Death. Death, right? Yeah, Kingdom, Kingdom Monster. Death. Uh, they were showing us there was a real move toward high-quality plastics. So we we did we we really scraped together everything we could to return plastics to the box set. That was not easy. Uh, we were doing well. But the margins were thin enough that we were just, you know, we were doing well putting the profits all back into the company. But it was still an effort to get all those models done, all that figured out, and get them all into the box set uh, for that first print run was a stretch for us. And it was one that paid off. But that was, you know, we're talking that was only like, oh, man, four or five years ago of our 17 years. I mean, we spent 12 years 
slowly building, at, you know, doubling the size of the company about every three or four years. Um, and uh, yeah, Plastics was the big was the game changer. And then of course the then the Clanvision Kickstarter, and suddenly Baltech is everywhere, and maybe as big as it's ever been, maybe bigger than it ever was uh, under the past years. I don't know the numbers. But I suspect we're doing extremely well in it, comparison. It's it really crazy to know whether or not we have finally, even with the change of the dollar, have finally found that tipping point yet. I mean, back then, the box set, the Game Over Combat cost $30, $35, I think, back then. Uh, it was much less. I mean, you know, so we our prices have gone up, too. But, um, you know, the, the King Charter just really vaulted us back into the gaming eye, in the eye of all the gamers. And suddenly, we're, our conventions are taking off more. Uh, distribution is like, you know, beating on our door saying, can we get more product? Um, and we're thinking, okay, you know, we're back, finally, after after 12 years, we've, we've, you know, 15 years, we've got it, it's moving. And then um, we did the Mercenaries Kickstarter last year. Yeah. And we discovered there's a lot more room out there for us to keep expanding way and growing. More. Yeah, way more than we thought. So, you know, in, in order to... Just... Bring in, bring in as much talent as we could get, keeping keeping make sure that the talent was getting was getting uh, compensated for their work. Focusing on the story first, because that's what we could afford to do, and then focusing on the the production quality, which included bringing back the plastics. So uh, there's actually a really great question um, that's in tangent from NC uh, Corrado. But before I get to that, actually, something I uh, I know that we've talked about before, but not necessarily on stream was actually maybe another key point that maybe you missed there, is that at one point you had mentioned that one of the, another key driving success, that we've at least mentioned it in passing, was keeping Battletech in stock. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we were, we, just, we, we started Catalyst with, you know, uh, you know, a couple credit cards, uh, a small some small loans um, from friends and family, and a whole lot of smoke and mirrors. I mean, we just, we hit the ground running as hard as we could, uh, to get that, to get the the brand back out there, that's what Tops challenged me to do. Put Baltech back on the map. So it took a while to uh, to get to rebuild it. Um, it took a while to get there to where Baltech was, you know, where it was all profitable. Uh, what profit we were making, and we were profitable. I see a question there. You know, how long it takes CJ to turn a profit? That's actually the question I was going to get into after that. It took about six months to start turning our first profit. The the pipeline started. A profit. That's from 2017 that, then, yeah, right? Yeah, 2017. By the end of 2017, we were making a small profit. But that profit just turned around and went right back into the company uh, as much as possible. So, you know, it just takes time to rebuild a brand, the the perception of it, um, get get the gamers to come back who had, who had walked away, uh, create new gamers, um, just just make Battletech a name again. So Dodd says, oh, you know, it was, it was, it was seven, eight years before you stopped hearing, oh, Baltech is back? Like, it never went away. People just didn't see it, and so they assumed it was gone. Like, no, it was it always was there. But, uh, you know, we made, we made a profit. We put that back in the company. We just kept we kept focusing on product. Keeping it in stock, there were years when we'd have Baltech in stock only for, like, four or five months out of the year. And we, we I, remember, I remember those days. We, well, you do a big print. We could afford to do a big print run, which made, us more, which made it more profitable. But if you think about it, you spend all this money to do a big print run. Now you got to wait for it to, to get made. You've already spent the money. It gets made. It gets shipped. It gets to the warehouse. It goes out to distribution. And finally, six months after you paid for the the, the run, you finally get your money back and your, and your profit. And by doing these big runs, we, we had a bigger margin. But it took longer to get to realize it, which means we had to sit there and wait, wait, wait. Oh, the money's in. Make the next big print run. And eventually that, that window got shorter and shorter from like, you know, hey, we're eight, we're eight months with no box set, then seven months, then six. Finally, I'm not sure when it was. In the, uh, it may have been right before the, the, the first Kickstarter. We finally had the box set in print and in stock all year long. But it just, it just took time. We went with a strategy of maximizing the potential to build for the future. Yeah, that, that took several years. I'm, it took I'm several sure. years. It took, it took, when we started that process, it took about four, as I recall, it took about three to three to four years um, before we finally got the box set in. It was in stock most of the year. Yeah. Um, Minor hiccups there and here and there, yeah. but overall a pretty major victory 
I think for us. And I know you mentioned that as a key point of one of the successes of, you know, battle take to where it is today on on occasion. But I I just want to see if you still felt the, felt the same way since then. For what's that? The, the, of of actually keeping the product in stock. Keeping the product in stock is. There is no better marketing than having your product always available in the stores. <laughs> there just isn't. We chose, for the most part, we chose a slight different path that meant feast and famine. The product was, we'd have, we'd have huge reserves, then nothing. Then huge reserves, then nothing. And that was an intentional pattern that we chose to maximize the, produ- the, the potential margins to build for the future. If we would have just kept, you know, a, a, uh, you know, kept kept small runs going all year long. We could have kept it down, you know, kept a good thing. But we, I don't think we've seen the big the big peaks, and the big peak drives a new baseline. Here's your baseline. You want to prove that baseline? You got to you got to you got to, to peak somewhere. Big sales, big promotion, big something. It peaks up, then it comes down to the baseline, and the baseline is is now it's, it's bigger. Peak, and it's bigger, and then bigger. So we chose that kind of a pattern. To go for the big peaks and then the, the and then the, uh, the the bigger baseline. It just took time. Even if it meant we had some uh, some months out there without our core product, because we had secondary and tertiary product that was still keeping the, the the lights on. It was a it was a decision. Would I make the same decision again? I don't know. Uh, the the best of all worlds would have been to uh, find a way to afford to do a big run, two big runs a year, so it never went out of stock. We just got the big the big spikes, but it's what we had. So we just, uh, I, is Rem threatening me again? Yeah, okay. she just said hi. Everyone behave or Rem will just deal with me. Rem isn't here. I can say whatever I want, and Rem can't punish me till uh, at least Monday. At least Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. So, uh, hi, Rem. How you doing? So there's a quick question before it goes off the screen, because Shock and Oz, one of our admins. What was, what was the imp- uh, impetus Uh-oh. of uh, putting a painted mini in one of the force packs? So you are actually a major decision behind this. Yeah, because you, yeah, you actually were one of the key components key people who said we are going to do this yeah. and if Randall Randall I mean, Randall wanted to do it Randall wanted to do it but he's like are we going to sell one more force pack because of it and I'm like I don't know that we are but it's the I said yeah but it's the anniversary year I said uh you know it's our fourth anniversary we got to do something really big and cool why not a painted miniature and he would say but it's you know but we won't sell any and usually it's the other way around usually I'm arguing against that and Randall's like let's do the big thing like Will it sell more product? So we completely reversed trends on this one. <laughs> and Randall goes, Will it sell more product? Like, no, but we can do the Star League. And Randall went, Oh, Star League. And so suddenly <laughs> I had him on my side, and that was it. So you bribed him. I had, I mean, I always had bribed him. I, just, I, I was very convincing. <laughs> and apparently, Ram just goes, Lauren, no, please. Um, so before I answer, get a, to a couple more pan, uh, questions in there. Just that I want to try and get them before they kind of slide off the screen. I know it's a little rough. Um, so if we happen to miss your question, feel free. We're going to take some a lot of questions at the very end here. So feel free to fire away as we get closer. We got a whole hour here with Lauren. Um, so when you started as an author for yes. uh, Battletech, I know you didn't st- strictly do stuff for this battle. You did a lot of stuff with Conan. You did stuff. Um, actually, you tried doing some. Uh, I remember some years where you were trying to do some stuff with, uh, I think it was, Car- was it Cartoon Network or something like that. You were trying to do some. Uh, children's stuff at one point as well. We uh, actually you do. You, wow, you you remember that, don't you? I do uh, remember that. I had a point at one point to write uh, for Powerpuff Girls. Actually, yes, I was very aware. I was going to use the name in case we couldn't use it. Nah, but... I, I don't care. I was I was it was just a thing that someone offered to me to do a a a, a Powerpuff Girls uh, series of uh, choose your own adventure books. So I worked with that. I did. Uh, I start. I mean, I started my first my first published novel was BattleTech. My first four or, or so, and then I think I wrote a Vor novel for FASA. A Crimson Skies novel for FASA. I did a trio of books for, like you said, The Age of Conan. Um, those were a great, uh, a large amount of fun. Love those books. Um, I've had the opportunity to write a lot of fun stuff. And uh, <laughs> right up, I'll check my hard drive. It was never got published, but I may still have a Powerpuff Girls Two Short Adventure story <laughs> on my hard drive. I just might. I know that, that's the more shocking one right there, the uh, Powerpuff Girls one. You know, but, it was uh, it was just. One of those things that came across, I get the weirdest things that come across my desk some days. So, so talking about, yeah, so I, I did, I did all those books and yeah. as a novelist, and I never took on a project that I didn't, that I would not have fun doing. So, so, so speaking of your days as an author, because way before you were CEO of Catalyst or even just in media, in media Ray, 
you know, what started you on your journey to being a writer? Um, what was okay. the def- what was your defining moment? I had transferred to a new high school. I was coming in late to the school year, and they were trying to fill my um, they were trying to still get me started as a freshman at this new high school. And one of the only classes available was a creative writing class, which was usually reserved for sophomores. But there was everyone else was full. So I got I snuck into a class that usually you can't take till you're a sophomore. So my freshman year as, as in high school, I got into a creative writing class taught by my one of my first mentors, Jim Lamonds, and uh, I learned about writing fiction. And I loved it. And I took in my uh, eight semesters at, at that school, I took six semesters of creative writing. I took creative writing, advanced creative writing, other creative writing or something. Like I did two or three semesters of independent, what was called independent study back then, under directly under Jim Lamont. It was just me and him. Like it was like I have a free hour. He would give me some 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 uh, mentorship that I would just go in the library and I just write. Um, I just I loved it. And I got a, I, so that's where I got introduced to fiction writing, and I, I loved it. I had so much fun. And then I got out of high school and I just I quit. Yeah, well that was cool. That was high school. Now I have to go on to do real stuff, right? And, you know, writing is not a real job. Um, and I went. To, eventually, I went to the Navy, and it was like it was about uh, three years later, four years later. I said, you know, I'm going to this med cruise, and I have I'm gonna go crazy. Six months on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean with nothing to do other than stand watch and then play poker. Um, and I said, you know, I used to enjoy writing. So I just said, I'm going to try to write a book on one thing I never wrote was an actual novel. So I went and bought a Smith Corona word processor with a separate Daisy flywheel printer. Everyone in birthing loved my Daisy flywheel printer. You ever heard one of those things go off? It is like, like a teletype on steroids. Like, da, 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 da. It's just, so like there is four o'clock. People still, are sleeping. Do you still have it? Oh no. But people are <laughs> sleeping like, you know, all around the clock and that Daisy flywheel goes off. It's like, it is a wake up call. Uh, they they all love me down in, in, in the birthing area, um, but yeah. So I, I did that and I wrote my first novel on a med cruise, and uh, and so I and I found out like why did I ever quit? I I love writing. I loved writing before. I love writing now. And by the time I got to the Navy, I had written a novel, uh, four or five short stories. One of which almost you know almost made an Asimov. Got a nice rejection letter from the the uh, the uh, editor at that time. Uh, I was getting enough enough uh, uh, feedback to know that I maybe could make this work. So when I got out of the military, I just wrote. I found an amazing writing workshop. My next set of mentors, Dean Chris, Dean, uh, Dean Smith and Christine Catherine Rush, and they just took me under their wing, and and I believed I could make a living at this. And they told me, if you've got the staying power, uh, you can make a living at this. And that's where my fiction began. It started. It started in high school, small hiatus, and then a med cruise when I knew I was going to be bored to shit. So someone actually, yeah. in reference to the when you were doing the Navy, What's someone that? asked, "What was your job in the Navy, and which boat were you on?" I was an electronics technician, reactor operator. I was a freaking nuke. Um, and I was on the. Uh, I started on the USS uh, Theodore Roosevelt after A school and power school, and I ended my I ended my uh, Navy career on the USS Truxton, out of Bremerton. And uh, I did one med cruise and a couple other minor cruises. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was my Navy career. Um, and it was an interesting part of my life. I mean, I, I learned a lot. Um, I, the schools were awesome. The service was eh, kind of boring, but I played a lot of poker. And, uh, you know, and I learned I learned to just how to write again. So that was good. Yes, my shipmates must have. Yes, they are. Yeah, they <laughs> they all actually were fairly cool about it. I I was I tried to be not um totally obnoxious, and plus I left the story, I left chapters out. I actually had a lot of them actually reading my chapters as I wrote them. I would actually leave them out for, and people would read them. I had one guy who loved my story so much. I I I, I tried it. My first cliffhanger ending. I I did a cliffhanger ending on a chapter, printed it put it on the desk for people to people, people to read if they want it. And I went down to stand watch. And about an hour later, um, uh, I can't remember his first name. His last name was Herlocker. Came down and said, I'm relieving you. Go write the next damn chapter. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are not leaving me hanging on this. <laughs> like, cool. I got out of watch. Um, 
So they they were actually uh, they I did wake up them from time to time, but most of them were fairly uh, let's just say grouchily accepting of my hobby. So awesome. Yeah. I, I know it's something we haven't really talked about before, but because we always talk about you know what it, what makes a strong writer and we always persistence, talk about, persistence, persistence, which is usually what we always, which is what we always get. And it's not that you're wrong. It's just you know but we don't talk a lot about where you started as a writer where it. It persistence started... in the face of overwhelming critique and, and uh yeah and just and you write for yourself first i was having a great time writing and no one was i wasn't ever going to stop the only question was could i make it a career so and uh i didn't find this so later but at one point uh your mom uh went to my writing mentor and said i need to know can lauren really make a living at this because if not he has to go get a job and they <laughs> said seriously they said Absolutely, he can, and he will. And she never told me that until years later that she went and asked him to, uh, you know, kind of give me, you know, handicap that. It's like how off, how likely is this, and what will happen? And so, uh, yeah. So I, I, she, she, I supported her through college. She supported me through my my uh, journeyman years, effectively my apprentice and journeyman years. And and uh, you know, I wrote a lot of novels. I'm still writing novels. Yeah, so uh, when are we going to see your next novel? Oh, you had it. I walked into that one. <laughs> yes, you did. You even set it up for I know yourself. I did. Uh, I, heard, I saw it coming. Uh, That's the one with me. Now. Just for those who might not know, what's the, what's the novel and who I, you're well, I have, Okay, with? I have two unfinished novels, both of which are Battletech-related and both of which Battletech fans delight in, in ribbing me about. Uh, I started writing a book called um, Shadows of Faith, which was the next Battletech book following Endgame, which was the kicking off the Jihad and the next the next uh, era of Battletech. And it, it crashed after about 10, 12 chapters for a reason I only identified really just about a year or two ago, like what, what I did wrong. I kept going back and getting another chapter, a half a chapter out, then it would crash again. Um, but Shadows of Faith has a, a, is still out there hanging. But recently, um, I started writing a book with uh, Mike Stackpole, as Rem said there in the, in the chat window, Den of Wolves. The origin story of Wolves Dragoons. And if you think you know the origin story, yeah, you don't. Um, it was a, uh, it, it's, we're definitely going to you know, keep the facts as, as straight as we can. Because obviously when I did all the research, there's a lot of contradictory facts about the foundation of Wolves Dragoons. And Natasha Kerensky and Jamie Wolf. Like, when were they born? When did they promote? When did they start working together? Um, there, there was a lot of contradictions. So we're cleaning that up. And we're writing the origin story. And it will have things in there that may not made it into the official histories. Um, so we're working on that. And that is about um, Mike and I have been working on it. We're both about we're, we're both writing half the book. And we're both about two-thirds done at this point. We both have about another 10,000 words each. And we're done. So it's, it, I was just writing uh, – actually, I, was, I just wrote two new chapters – uh recently before you know before our family tragedy so um uh which so that derailed me a little bit guys but uh, i was writing new chapters and i intend to finish this book it is going to be finished going to be finished this year uh mike and i are determined to uh to get it done so, sweet yeah so where obviously with the research uh i, sh- I shouldn't all researchers because obviously that was we we, we were kind of calling it that about five six hold years on, hold ago. on uh Follow-up question on Den of Wolves. I guess it goes more into how they as clanners had to adapt to the sphere. No, actually, Den of Well, Mike and I thought we'd get that far. And as we got into it, we realized Den of Wolves is barely going to get to the point where they're forming the Dragoons. The the Den of Wolves is actually Jamie. uh, There's Jamie and Joshua at the first, but mostly it's about Jamie's path to get to where her and him and Natasha are working as a team at the same time as they form the Dragoon Compromise. So I believe Den of Wolves will end right as they decide to form uh, the Wolves, Dra- Wolves Dragoons. So uh, it's really about Jamie's path, his early career. His early ascendancy. His early, well, his early career, as, uh, I'm not going to say too much because Jamie Wolf may not have had the history you expect him to have. Again, what we know about him is very little, and it's often contradictory. So book two would be about the actual formation of building and training the Dragoons, it would probably end about the time they were going to be sent to the Inner Sphere. And if we ever do a book three, that would be their um, adapt, adapting into the Inner Sphere. 
Okay. Their first contract showing up in their first contract interfere. So we went all the way back. Like the only thing the only thing I could do this be further back is to tell Jamie Wolf sto- or Jamie's story growing up in a, in his Simco years. And I'm not saying I'm not going to do that either because I've got some great notes for it. So, so, so good. we went all the way back. Is Den of Wolves the Dragoons prequel? I guess technically it is. Yeah, technically, it, Den of Wolves is definitely the Dragoons prequel. They, it, it's, it ends about the time the Dragoon compromise is made in the uh, uh, the Grand Council. So, but that it was a story we felt we needed to start there. Um, so while so some more questions are coming in because I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of Den of Wolves stuff popping up because of that last comment. Uh, how do you see BattleTech? Um, because from Clan Invasion, obviously saw the big a big um launch up through the Mercenaries Kickstarter. Where do you see BattleTech going from here? I mean, there's been some talks about whether we do another big Kickstarter again, some couple of years in the future. Do we do some smaller ones now, or do we let the well, do we just create more auxiliary product of the la- of new lances? And... I mean, this, the 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 Kickstarters have been pretty story um independent. Um, we did, you know, we, we, our first Kickstarter big, the big one was a, a clan invasion Kickstarter, which was, God, I mean, what was a clan invasion? 1990 ish, I think, or 19, yeah, 1990s. I mean, uh, we went way back. Um, it was divorced from the storyline intentionally. Um, and then the mercenaries Kickstarter again, mercenaries are a big part of the Battletech story in general. And each mercenary unit has their own great stories, but it's fairly independent of the, current storyline so that way if you're not whether you're a a, a a 3025 purist a clan invasion uh a, a dark age an ill clan doesn't matter no matter where you are in the timeline mercenaries exist have fun where do we go next we've got some great stories out there the ill clan era is is just kind of getting going um we will still produce material to flesh out as much as we have left of the uh jihad Early time. I mean, hell. You're talking fiction wise. Fiction wise. I mean, story wise. I mean, uh, Mech Warrior uh, product games, the Mech Warrior 5, 6? Mech Warrior 5. Mech Warrior 5. They're going back and retelling the Clan Invasion again. Like, everything goes full circle. They're back at the Clan Invasion telling the story of the Smoke Jaguars. So, everything old is new again. We don't know where we're going to go next. We are, we are going to go wherever the funnest, the best, and the funnest and best stories are. And will we do another Kickstarter? I gotta think we will. What will be the theme? I have no idea. None. No, no inkling yet. No. It will. Eventually, it will figure it out. It will. It'll probably be somewhat story agnostic. Though again, with each Kickstarter, we do some stories in there, but we just that's, that's not the focus of the Kickstarter. The focus of the Kickstarter is on the game, the miniatures, the game rules, the playing at the table with friends. That's what the focus that is and should be. If there's some ancillary product that also supports the story, great. Like this time we did, uh, this time we did two uh, in Baltic uh, pop culture items. We did the Art of War. Um, I was, I was actually about to the, ask the, you, what, your fav- what were your favorite couple and, items that came out of Mercenaries? And the Art of Food. We did a, the ba- somebody even asked about the Baltic cookbook. Uh, that might have already scrolled off the screen. Uh, Let's see here. Oh, will Let's the see. cookbook be released eventually to those who are in the Kickstarter? Yes. Is the PPC drink in there? I think think there's a cocktail section, but I have not looked at it recently. I can't quite remember. I can't remember. I think there's a cocktail section, which case the PPC has to be in there. Yeah, it would have to um, be. But yeah, we, we did some product that was like complete. It was past storyline and into a meta product. I, I wrote um, in the middle of all that, I, I rewrote The Art of War from a with more modern language, but as, as annotated and uh, with annotation observation by Jamie Wolfe. So it's actually Jamie Wolfe's interpretation and annotation of the art of war. And it was a great deal of fun. It's being, for those who have seen the book, because we have a copy here at the show, it's been very well received. And uh, the Kickstarter, I think we put 15,000 out there, 15,000 copies. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot mean, of that, copies that's of the art of war. Copies, and that tells me that the Baltic fans are willing to go into all sorts of awesome places. Uh, nonfiction, fiction, meta, meta fiction, whatever, whatever it takes. Yeah. So anything else other than the art of war that you found that you really enjoyed outside of the, outside of that one for the Kickstarter? Yeah, there's something that was created oh, that you personally um, enjoy. Like you can't wait to see it come out for yourself. Well, I can't wait to see the cookbooks. I've only I've only seen pieces of that, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, Leah, uh, as part of their as part Leah, our 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 production uh, company, as far as uh, 
uh, for their point, for their uh, to put something out there for themselves. They gave us a like a a, a big uh, like four or five inch tall um, Timberwolf. Timberwolf. They just made it because they said, "Hey, we wanted something cool for the fan base," and you know because things got a little shaky last time. They just want to do something nice, so they gave us this really cool like you know Timberwolf that we. We put out, we and we gave. I think we gave one with their help. We gave one to everybody for free. I can't. I've seen one painted now. Yeah, we have the one painted here like, on the show I can't wait to see more of those. So those painted. of you who might be at Adepticon, yeah. if you come to our glass shelf booth, you'll see on the bottom shelf, you'll see that painted red Timberwolf there. Yeah. So watching people paint those up at that scale, that's going to be fun. Um, I mean, other than that, we 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 uh, we prompted some really good fiction. Um. We have some great mercenary fiction that, that came out by uh, Mike Stackpole, Brian Young, Michael Ciaravella. It, it, it all it did prompt other stuff. It just wasn't the focus of the case. Story. It, it just it just got some got some uh, some things rolling. So yeah, I'm looking forward to all that. I mean, we heck, I mean the uh, uh, Randall's. Oh, it's heavy. Randall's uh Baltech crazy, you know, universe book and. And, and box you know, set. And box I mean, set. So this cover. would this would not have happened very unlikely without the Kickstarter. And so I just want to put that there. D. It exists. It, it's also it's also extremely it will, heavy. It will kill small animals. This thing is crazy. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, John has a prototype of the cookbook there with him. I have not seen it. So help us. Where yeah, bring me a cookbook if he's listening. Yeah, if you're paying attention. Um, Davy and Long Pork recipe. I'm not going there. <laughs> are they are they giving food ideas? Oh yeah, I see it now from uh Beskar. Have so, you all considered doing Baltic models like Gundam has? Yes, we have. I, I actually keep bug I once a year and I bug them about that, it. That's where that that's where that answer is staying. Yes, we have. <laughs> I bug them once a year about it. We may have we may have something going on to uh for that. We're we're still working on it. Heavy enough to beat the lore into the new fans. That's yes. very, that's very true. Uh, so, yeah, the universe book actually in it, the the book you you open it and it actually has a sound uh, chip in it, so it does the old uh, reactor online sensors online. It's actually from, from like, the old Mech Warrior two or two. three or something. I think like, it was two. It was fun. Um, Randall went crazy. I let Ra- Randall always always ask me for a pony, and this is why I said, Randall, you can have your pony. Do whatever you want to do, and he did. The only thing, the box is a metal. He actually wanted a metal box. I finally said, you know. This thing's heavy enough without a metal box. And then, and then we had, at one point, if I'm, remember, if I'm remembering right, we were looking at Kevlar on this we, box, well, too. It right? a fake Kevlar. That's we were fake... doing real Kevlar. I couldn't stop a bullet. Uh, maybe the next time. So before we before we go, I, I, we're about nearing the, uh, not the end, but we've got almost uh, 17 minutes. One one last thing from uh, from you before we just probably go into a, sure. a nice Q&A with them. Um, so... What? Let's see. How do I want to phrase this real quick? Did you ever see a point where BattleTech would be this large again? No. No, I didn't. I would have been happy to just continue the uh, to get to continue the tradition of, of BattleTech fiction. That was my initial plan. I just wanted BattleTech fiction to remain out there because it was a it was a fiction universe that meant a lot to me. That's where BattleCore came from. Um, when we got a hold of Baltic license, I would have been satisfied to simply get back to roughly where where Fast had ended, where things were at least was still being published and was maintaining a game out there for people who love to play, who love the books, who who loved you know whatever. Thinking we would ever get back to the heyday of Baltic and maybe even eventually surpass FASA, no way. I, I would not. Have, I would not have had that much uh, ego. Uh, <laughs> To think I I could uh, uh, resurrect you know, resurrect or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, um, I would have been happy at at half the size. The fact that it kept growing and has been a crazy ride makes me so happy. Uh, I love this universe. I love Baltech. I love Shadowrun. Uh, but obviously Baltech has a special place in my heart because I've spent so much time in it. Um, and so would I have ex- would I have imagined this? No. But has it been an amazing journey? Oh yeah. Awesome. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see where, where it goes next. So we have about 15 minutes. So I think that we're going to move fully because we were already answering questions to you guys. Anything? I think we'll go into a full 
Q and A here with Lauren at the very end. So you know, Lauren is you know has his pi- fingers in the pie everywhere. So there's pretty much a not a uh, question that he couldn't answer. So if now I don't know the answer. I'll make it up. It'll sound very plausible. And then Ram will shoot both. And of then us. Ram will yeah. Then Ram can be, get upset with me on Monday. Uh, let's see here. Right, lies. Hey Ram, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? <laughs> don't want to talk about anything she doesn't want me to talk about. She should, she should post that right now. Uh, will we get the Maxim uh, hover transports in either a Lance Pack or a Company box? Oh, the Maxim is a classic. I would think we will do it eventually. Um, same with some of the other like you know high end vehicles that, are just, that haven't made the cut yet. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great mechs that haven't made the cut yet, but the Maxim that's a classic. I I, I think I feel safe in saying eventually you'll see the Maxim. Um, I, saw this, the questions. Really yeah, I saw I saw this come uh, across a couple of forums. Will there be a retaliation pack for Alpha Strike in the Mercenaries box? And because I saw this twice, will Comstar come ba- or Comstar come back in any form? Never say never. You know, uh, we you know having Comstar, you know, the blackout just was natural. It was just you can't have an independent or uh, uh, interstellar organization based on interstellar communications that doesn't have interstellar communications. Yeah, I mean, it was like. It was just a, a natural that Comstar had to fail. Also, with Comstar and the word of Blake, that schism had just run its course. Now, now that they're both gone, can something come back? Of course it can. What will it be? I have no idea. Because no one has found a cool enough idea yet to say, this is what we want to do. Yeah, you me- you do. mentioned a lot of times that, you know, everything can make sense as long as it makes sense in the story. And it's fun. It has to make a good story. It has to make a good story. Yeah. Until then, it's going to lay there. F- I mean, again, we, 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 have, we, have, we, have overtur- we have turned that field. We're letting it lay fallow for a little bit. And we're going to see what grows there. Someone's going to th- think of something we haven't thought of yet. There was a first part of that question of, will there be retaliation packs for Alpha Strike and Mercenaries boxes? Uh, by retaliation packs, I think they mean the just the uh, quick uh, mech refill uh, packs. I think that's uh, what they're referencing maybe yeah, to as well. Yeah, I think that's what those were. Um, we, we haven't we, done those in quite a while. In well, quite we, a while. we did a set for the uh, Climate Kickstarter. And I believe we do a set of retaliation packs in the um, Mercenaries Kickstarter that was available for them to buy uh, through that, and if there's any extra, we'll throw them out there on the Catalyst web store. Okay, but we won't; those won't make a. They won't be a a, a evergreen product or anything. It's just as soon as they're out, they're out. But I believe we did do uh, some. Awesome. Any players use this part of Destiny support product? I think I can say yes, but I I I, I know I've heard. You know, we we've we haven't retired it or anything. It's just when we have the right product to move forward with something else for fun we will destiny did okay enough that we haven't you know we haven't said, well it's dead now it's like we just don't have the item that we want to do next uh other than i think so we're doing some pdf stuff for it so, so uh everything battle tech because i know i missed one of his questions earlier and uh you know if you want me to do the beard off i don't i don't care but i assume that at some point we will get the beard off done this takes time to get everyone's schedules aligned here's you know, like, what, you know why the beard off it doesn't happen very like i can't grow a beard to shave off. It's, <laughs> you also do a beard on. Like if Lauren was, he has to grow a beard for six months. Oh my God, that would be just terrible. Well, that's why he said just replace you with me. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I, I can't do it. Um, so he has I, a... would, I wish I could. I just, I, yeah, not possible. Yeah, but he had a second question here. That's why I get back to that from earlier because I know that yeah. was way early in the in the stream. Uh, he says people connect a lot of Steiner versus Darian Civil War era and MechWarrior Four mechs like the Mad Cat MK2. Saw the Mad Cat MK2 Thanatos. Argus, Hellspawn, Civil War theme product a possibility. So, I completely lost track of that very long. Yeah, it, it, look, it looks like he's saying but that. It's still, still like the question I, I would say is that is a Randall and Ray question. Well, he's asking if there will be any Civil War themed product be a possibility oh. in the future. That's really, really what it comes down a to. Civil War themed force pack. Uh, sh- possible? Sure. Yeah, just because why he, not? Just because he was mentioning that in MechWarrior Four, they're seeing more like the old Mad Cat MK2 so in the Argus and Thanatos. We didn't plan to do a Star League product. We were supposed to be doing um Davian and and the uh, Karita force packs by now. Instead, the Civil War or said the uh, Star League force pack. Kind of pushed those downstream because I wanted a painted mech in the anniversary year, and it didn't make it wasn't fair to give it to a a, a, a current faction. That's how Star League snuck in. Will there be a Civil War faction force pack eventually? I'd be fine with that. So someone I'm asked. No. Someone asked Lauren, could you put a Catalyst Game Labs T-shirt as a present to all backwards? They look awesome. Just kidding. 
They do look. We work really actually hard on these. Just kidding. It looks awesome. We're just kidding. They want one for all backers. I mean, the want one for all backers. But you know, we use these as staff shirts, so that'd be a, that'd be a no in the first place. Um, what's funny is people keep asking us for a Catalyst Game Labs T-shirt, and honestly, that's that's a really uh, awesome. Uh, is that jazz hands? No, it's ten minutes. I know. Uh, it's really actually very awesome. People ask me. They they say they want to wear our company logo. Uh, it's very rewarding. Um. Will we ever do one for the for the fans? I would say, <laughs> I would say probably at some point because I think Rem will, uh, is having a heart attack right now. But uh, it's just something we aren't focusing on yet because we still need. There's still a lot of products to get out there for Battletech and Shatter and Leviathans. And, and don't forget, we still have yeah. like six to eight more shirts from the Mercenaries that we have yeah. yet to release, which are being reviewed and processed right now. So there's still like a whole other eight more shirts just for Mercenaries alone. Uh, though someone said, sorry, I asked if this was asked in another Q&A and I missed it. Is there a chance of other lamb packs? I'm assuming Absolutely, because <laughs> Ray Arrestia is all about the Battletech lambs. So I would say it's very, very likely that Ray will just, I mean... He said he was, actually he was said on streaming yesterday that we need more lambs. Did he really? He actually said it. No way. I don't believe you. I want to go back and watch that he one. Did. Something like that. They were like, dude, you, you said that out loud? Really? Not for the backers, put it on the website. That's that's probably what we'd have to do. Uh, yeah, Rem, Rem, sorry, Rem, you are correct. We we we're not adding anything to the backer kits right now, uh, to backers, uh, but could we have it on the website for like a catalyst logo shirt for the fans? Absolutely, and it'll happen when it happens. We got to catch up on all the the final mercenary stuff first, guys. So a question that I should just scroll off the screen. So I'm just looking at my phone here to pull, pull big up. Will your program for tablets ever be fully functional? My group uses Mech Factory virtual record sheets at the moment, but I like your better Mech Factory. Just has all the mechs. Are Mech Factory is it fully functional? Um, well, is, then, it, is it breaking, or you just need more mechs in it? No, it, it, we're, at, we're adding more mechs to it. Yes. I think that there's a, you know, the, I've heard I'm this sure. asked a lot of times where they just ask whether or not if more functionality will be in place, will we clean it up? Because it was, you know, back during the clan invasion where we first started that project. And I don't, and, you know, I don't know for myself because I, I don't work with that part of the team, but I just don't know what's been changed since then because I haven't looked at it in almost four years myself yeah. since I first reviewed it. So, yeah. You know, where, 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 where's that going right now for that, for the, for our mech, mech factory? Um, it's being, again, there's someone who's working, who's in charge of it and they're working on more mechs to put into it. Uh, it did okay. We, we were happy to do it. And for those who are enjoying it, I'm glad. Uh, someone next... says Lorna has a lot of bugs. What's that? Says Lorna has a lot of bugs. All right. I don't, I mean, I believe you. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't use it personally, um, very often. So I haven't used it in a while, but I will, I will have it looked into because I think we should make sure, make sure that's cleaned up for you then. Um, and else we got to do one t-shirt for each division of Catalyst. Uh, there is only one division. It is just Catalyst. It's just Catalyst. There oh, is no. The, there is the CG. There is the there CG. There is the one Catalyst. And it, uh, yeah. I guess there's the, the board game Taiwan side now. Taiwan is part now. of Catalyst. Dude. I know. I have said that. Uh, looking forward to seeing you CGL land at UK Expo. Uh, yeah. There will be a, t there'll be a, uh, a CGL uh, 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 crew at UK Games. Randall and Bryn and maybe Mike and maybe Ram. I'm yeah, not sure. You're not going to show up? I don't know. I got a lot of things. Uh, May is a really crazy month for me right now. Oh, is that so, in May? Yeah. That is a pretty tight. That is May. a pretty tight. But there will be a team there. What so the thought process of giving, giving the Force of Venus only two hex bases? They're just tiny. Come on. They're, they're tiny little they're tiny little things. They're like roller skates. Um, they might as well I be. I assume the question is, why do we put two Savannahs on a hex base? Because they're small. And you gotta you gotta stack them up anyway to you you know let's face it you got Savannah Masters you got four six eight of those things and they're all still in one hex so you gotta kind of figure it out break you want you want more like you know break off more and glue them onto more hex spaces or do you want like one per hex space I mean Rem, Rem does confirm that she'll be there so okay so Lauren tell us about the new things coming out you don't want us to know about yet I think I think I hear Randall sprinting across the uh -huh. convention floor about uh -huh. ready to nail him with a book actually in fact his universe book. Well, I mean, I already said yesterday, I already got, I got to break the this day that we're doing a really cool uh, Field Commander carry case, which is like a combination, like it'll hold some rules, some record sheets, a company of mechs, some dice. It's it's, it's a grab-and-go carry case where you don't want to haul around your uh, your big battle foam or, or your big giant case, more of a little trapper keeper size. 
And this kind of this looks good. You could customize it with some uh, Velcro patches. Yeah, it'll, it'll have soft size yeah. Velcro across it, so you can throw you know a whole swath of uh, patches over it. Uh, someone says, yeah, any chance I, I, of... I mean, I really can't talk about us redoing a new Game of Our Combat box set or in in the uh, or uh, or beginner box. I shouldn't do that. No, you shouldn't do I that. I shouldn't do that. Uh, someone asks, uh, any chance of infantry? It's been, I think it's still a little bit out. If you mean in plastic, I assume they mean in plastic. Yeah, I'm not gonna say no, but I'm gonna say right now, if we were to do them, you wouldn't even recognize them infantry. They'd be like little stick figures on a base. Um, if we were to keep it tr to true scale with the mechs, the elementals, and infantry, you wouldn't be able to see anything. We've been working with true scale recently yeah, over the last just, couple of it years. It just doesn't really it doesn't really lend itself to a good game experience. Uh, tokens and 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 uh, are just a better idea right now for infantry. But I'm not going to say no. If we find a good way to do it that looks good and makes playing with them more fun, then yes, we will do something with infantry for 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 miniatures. All right, I'm going to take one last question, and I'm going to take uh, best guards just because it's about traveling. Question from yesterday at PAX Australia: You said you'd be waiting to see if you are going. Wondering how confident you are you're going to be there. Tickets go on sale in two days. I heard that we got taken off the waiting list, and we're, and we're, be given, we're being given a booth. That is what I was told unofficially by someone in the Read organiz Read Pop organization. I have not got an official email confirming that yet. So yeah, Obviously, it, as soon as we can confirm it, you're yeah. going to see it all over our shoulders, and we will post about it in our Discord. So we just don't have as – just here at Adepticon, we just don't have great information this time because it was followed up before the Adepticon show. So we actually just got our last warning here for our last so, three minutes. Well, so, well, the, so the solitaire will be the new uh, game of combat. Wait, with well, a solitaire? Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, you can answer that one yeah, before you finish. Yeah, I mean, it'll be the solitaire is coming because it's it's one of the mechs that I am adamant will be in it will be in a in a box set coming up very soon. What the new game of combat could look like, who knows? It could look like something else entirely. I'm just saying, it's always possible. Threading a needle, man. All right, guys. With that, thank you guys Come so on. much for joining me here with uh, interviewing Lauren Coleman. Don't even, hey, don't even point that no, round. Like, you know, the Harry Potter game of our combat, the uh, the Star Trek game of our. See, we could go anywhere with this, and then get sued into oblivion. Well, that would happen. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for joining me here for this last hour with Lauren Coleman, the CEO of Catalyst Game Labs, and obviously a renowned author and man of many talents who have worked within and out of the Baltic. Uh, and Catalyst Field uh, throughout the years. Um, up next, we will have for you guys an interview hosted by John Helfers because we don't want Michael Sierravella to maybe spill some secrets of his own. So that interview is coming up next. So we will see you here in a couple of minutes as they get set up. So until then, see you later. Thank you.
And welcome back to Adepticon 2024 in beautiful Schaumburg, Illinois. My name is John Helvers. I am the executive editor at Catalyst Game Labs. We are here on site celebrating Battletech's 40th anniversary. And this time I am with someone who may need a little bit of introduction. I am, I am pleased to be sitting with Michael Ciravella, uh, who has been a long time a Battletech aficionado, a player, a demo agent, and more recently a writer. So, Michael, welcome, welcome. And he's also been doing our scheduling and been doing a terrific job of it. So, uh, Michael, it's good to have you here. Thank and you. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the company and for the show. Why don't you tell everyone how you got started in Battletech? Oh, that's a good one. I always love telling the story. Pardon me if my voice is still a little hoarse. It's been day 10 for me now. Uh, I went with my father, who was a uh, traveling manager for uh, Caldor, if everyone remembers Caldor, Sears. Oh, my um, God. All, wow. those, all those years ago. <laughs> so I didn't see him very much. But I loved uh, uh, science fiction ever since then. I'd read the first Warrior book by Mike Stackpole. Did not realize it was a game at the time. I just thought it was a book. Uh, it was, it was just a book. Space space opera. Opera. Yeah. Fantastic. Came for the uh, political space opera. Stayed for the big stompy robots. Okay. But I went to... As many do. Yep. I went to Icon on Long Island, uh, which is a... I hope is coming back. One of those beautiful uh, conventions that was at Stony Brook University. Uh, but I went on the... Uh, what seemed like the fourth day of a three-day convention. <laughs> it was Sunday. Most things were already shut down. Uh, all the Star Trek stuff had already passed. Oh, Star yeah. Wars stuff had passed. <laughs> he was a little disappointed, but <clears throat> came up on a little booth uh, at the time. Fan pro agents and a gentleman handed me a little plastic dime bag with a uh, uh, silver uh, javelin inside. Okay, you and said, remember the me the first mech you ever I've got. I still got it. I was still wow. Well, as soon as we say the first hit is always free. It is indeed. <laughs> and he said, hey, would you like to, uh, to learn to play? And I sat down. So, wait, wait, how old are you at this time? Oh, I'm going to say 10, maybe. Oh, my. Okay, so young. Very. He kind of looks young, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Uh, but all I will really remember is I loved the game, but I saw my father standing there with his aching feet after having worked six days at various stores, taking me there. It's always going to be one of those warm and fuzzy memories. That is me. awesome when parents take an interest in their kids' hobbies and, yes, and it will go out of their way to do what they their kids want to do. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, to mention, I'm sure at some point my mother is going to be watching this. Hi, Mom. Oh, my God. Don't make me tear up here. I'm a, I'm a humble senator, remember? Yes, you are. By the way, yeah, I'm I'm you give a shout-out to Rem right there. Hi, John. Hi, Michael. Miss Hi, Rem. Sweet. We miss you. Rem is up at Gary Con, which, unfortunately, for some mysterious reason, is on the same weekend as Adepticon, so we have to split our forces. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, when did you start getting into the demo team? Because you've been a demo agent for a long time. Oh God! Uh, no, I was doing it. I was doing a lot of private stuff up in uh, upstate New York at that point. Uh, but then I joined the demo team. I'm going to say 10, 12 years ago. It's going to okay. be something like that. Uh, I've been very active. I did. I came to Gen Con. I came to Origins. I did all the competitions. I loved that. Uh, earned a blood name, did the Solaris Malie Championship earned multiple times. No, 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 slow down, slow down. So you earned a blood name against a very, uh, very capable opponent, so I've heard. Why don't you tell the story? Oh, we're not playing. Oh, must we tell that story? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm sure the fans want to know, because when they hear who you, who you won it against, I'm sure they'll be very interested. Fair, fair. Uh, okay, so the... Uh, the background to this story was I would go to uh, the conventions and I love to do all the, the tournaments. So I won the Solaris Malie tournament many times. Uh, I uh, won the Battletech Open several times. I love that. But every year I wanted to do the Blood Right, the Trial of Blood Right. Mm. Um, and for a six year span, I came in second place. Every single okay, year. Okay, I haven't even heard this. Yes. Always, always, need, never a bride. Uh, six years, long, second place, second place, second place. So I'd go home with a bunch of pre-printed professional miniatures, but no trophy. Right, and no blood name. And no blood name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so then I... Uh, 
in an exciting seventh year right there. Okay. Seventh year's a charm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I, everything was going wrong. I was the very last pick for Mex. I was, uh, I barely skinned through the first, uh, by the skin of my teeth, that first really? round. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. It was, it was very unlucky. Uh, did very well in the second round. And then met up with Brent Evans, our art director. And is, so a massive battle to play master. It's the game inside and out. Has been playing, I think, out of the womb, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Him, and, him and Randall. So, all right, good luck, Rem. Uh, the battle She's that, stepping away. So, uh, yeah. We'll miss you. She doesn't need to worry about us. We're exactly. All right. So, you're sitting down against one of the greats to ever play the game. Yep. Seriously. Very true. And once again, now, once again, everything was going bad for me. I didn't get to, uh, the map was terrible. It was literally a cliff. Oh my God! And I was on the wrong side of it. Oh, uh, we had uh, Brent had got to pick the mech, so I'm in a Cobra with only small, uh, uh, multiple streak SRM. So just uh, I had nothing <laughs> that could do more than two damage. Uh, little spots right there, mm. uh, and he was in a gorgeous heavy mech. I was toast. Wasn't going to happen. Absolute toast. Uh, first turn, I run right up to the cliff and make him spend three turns coming up to get me. Uh, that was uh, that was very entertaining. Then he comes over the cliff to take me out. I fire off all my SRMs. Literally, nearly everything hit. Something like 14 criticals when all was said and done. Wow. Uh, and I managed to eke out a small victory right there. But Okay, no he, longer second place. You had uh, finally you had finally conquered. I had So what is your blood name? Uh Pride. Uh, as Wendy yep. said the only one, Wandy said the only one in we're fighting for is Pride. There you go. And that is exactly that is exactly the one. But it still gets better. Brent Evans, who I'd, I'd met, but I not didn't really know at that point, comes up to me later and says, "We've got a spot open in Masters and Minions. You are going to, to you you're going to go with three others and fight me and Randall Bills. <laughs> but we're going to tell Randall that you've never played before." <laughs> That is wonderful. It was a very funny time, and I don't think Randall has ever forgiven me either. I don't think I would. But that's terrific. I've, I've never, I've known you for years. I've never heard the entire story. story. No, I don't think he's had too much. Oh, no. Ever since Brent starts going around calling me Brent's killer. Yes. I've had to hide a little bit. Which I, I, Brent. Which I think is a great nickname, by the way. So now we have to start calling you Michael Pride. So, which I wasn't it's saying. Funny. I'm not going to lie. I thought I, that was very great. So, demo agent, blood name winner, Brent Killer. Brent Killer. But you also have always wanted to write yes. Battletech fiction. And it was, now, did you start writing at a young age? Was it kind of a thing? Or oh, yes. game came first, and then as you grew older, maybe you decided to get into the arts? Oh, I always love to write. I've got half a dozen novels in various stages, as always. You know what it's like when you start writing young. You look back I, at it and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> yes, yes I do. Yes, yes. Writing as a teenager, I would not want to inflict that on my worst enemy. Yeah, you don't know really my old writings. Hopefully I will improve them at some point. Uh, but I always love the Battletech universe. I used to get in trouble uh, in my social studies class because I would be reading Battletech books under the desk. When I was supposed to be in class. So, no, I'm reading your science fiction text. Oh, yes. No, um, I, that sounds like someone I, I may know who may be also sitting at this table. Yeah. Who would read unapproved manuscript or books or, or even work on role playing games in class. It didn't, didn't go over well. No. Not at all. But uh, so that was what I'd love to do. Uh, I actually had the wonderful opportunity to meet you at a Gen Con. I believe I was stalked, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, something like that. Yes. Yes. Tracked down yes. like a predator. No, no. And now he has bodyguards. Yes. Trust me, you can't, you I, can't redo what I did. And, 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 yeah, that's true. They're, they're very hidden. I think, I think you had a great opening line. Like, I want, I'm Michael Cervillan. I want to take you to dinner. And like, who could refuse a gambit like that? And so, yes, we got to know him. And uh, I found out what Michael did uh, just before, and he said I was interested in writing for me and Battletech. And years later, now you are a full fledged novelist. I am, and uh, have been doing great, great work for us. I'm very happy about it. So, so, um, what do you like most about writing in the Battletech universe? 
the rich political landscape. I, I love the theory of Game of Thrones in space. Everything yes. wants to be Game of Thrones in space. That's fair. But I love the depth of the characters. I love the various nations. I love how if you like one aspect, you can focus on this. But two minutes later, I want to be... If I want to do the knights in shining armor, let me potentially look at my Davians and look back at their history. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I want an incredible, in-depth story of Bushido. Let me get to my Draconis Combine. Yeah, yeah, you can do it all. And you can, and it's every time it's a little bit different flavor. You want a murder mystery, a spy novel, or all of the above right there. You can find it in the Battletech universe. And, of course, Big Stompy Max. And, of course, Big Stompy Max. So, now, your first assignment was, I would say, uh, a bit challenging because we handed you, we were wrapping up, we were preparing for the Ilkhan, the Ilkhan era, and we had to wrap up some loose threads in Dark Age, and one of them was moving uh, what happened on the action uh, at Northwind. Yes. And we and the Highlanders, one of the most storied, celebrated, and famous units in the game, mercenary units, and we thought you'd be the perfect person to handle that because you are a Northwind Highlanders fan. Oh, yeah. So, we said, yeah, write us this duology and make us this story. Um, what was your reaction when you when we said this is what we want to assign you, and then how did you approach uh, Grey Watch Protocol and Paid in Blood? Well, I how I, when you told me I you asked me if I wanted to do the assignment, I was thrilled. I would have written anything. I would have written the uh, uh, the list of foodstuffs on the back of the box. If you Sun Tzu Lao's laundry list. Absolutely, and I would gladly have done that for the opportunity to get into the game. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it was so really handy. This very rich assignment upon which a lot of hinges. The story has to be told right and well. Yep. So did were you were you at all nervous? A little bit. Uh, well, more so once the, the novel was done and then the <laughs> writing process. Okay. I was not expecting what come, comes next, of course. No, no author can, unless right. you've done it many right. times. Uh, but I reread all of the books involving the Highlanders right there. I went back to my source books. I made copious lists. I plotted out the uh, the games on the board. Uh, okay. right you, you did. You actually yeah. out like the campaign. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you did a ton of prep work. I did. Which I have to admit, in Battletech, is kind of a requirement because there's yes. so much lore. 40 years, 40 years of source books, 40 years of way of advancing the universe, hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, centuries. Yep. Um, and so and so when you started to write, you, you pretty much had the whole story mapped out. You knew where you were going. Did you run into any challenges, anything that kind of didn't did went awry, perhaps? Oh, plenty of times. And finding the balance is important. Uh, the one you may be alluding to, but that made me laugh right there, is one of the first notes that uh, I got back was, all your characters are women. <laughs> yes. Uh, because at the time, I didn't know uh, we'd had a, a very strong female lead. We had uh, we had a strong male lead as well. Yep, but yep. at the time, the we didn't know that both of the opposing units, both of the opposing Capellan units, were also canon as being currently led by women. Yeah, women, yeah. yeah so first note I've got right there is, wow, why is it? Where are all the men? Where are all the men? Where are all the men? And so that I do remember that it yes. was fun. Yes. So we had to make some some adjustments. We did yeah, was... absolutely, and we had to go back. And uh, once again, the story was also growing a little bit, very naturally, as we, as it does. Yes, as it does. Uh, we were looking at our first duology. So as soon as we got Greywatch Protocol settled in uh, a complete story, we were right into Paid in Blood, uh, yep. closing up what we were looking at. Which then... really is the second half of the story. There's there's no break. It just keeps going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I have to correct you. Remember, Lauren did the Capellan, uh, a two-book Capellan duology. Yes, it is. It's all a solution. But yes, it was pushed in a long, long time. Correct. Yeah. So actually, I, again, I keep teasing you on that. I'm actually going to pull that together in an omnibus, so it's actually one book. So, yeah. Uh, also, with the little companion piece, uh, Perception of Victory. Yes. That we uh, that yes. we did uh, for online. Part of the, the, yes, the, uh, it was the uh, Mercenaries t-shirt line. Yes, yes. So uh, let's uh, real quick take a little bit of a break. Uh, Beskar66 has two interesting questions. Well, number one, and we're going to get into Damocles Sanction in just a moment. But let's go into what was your favorite moment. Actually, let's talk about Damocles Sanction first, okay. which is your first, now this is your real novel. You, yes. You, 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 you hit it out of the park, and you're ready for a big one. And, of course, now one of the things we had to wrap up is 
Davian and or not wrap up but advance Davian and uh, Karita. Yes. And of course, you are the biggest Davian, one of the biggest Davian fans I know. Uh, you love that, and so I, I, I can't remember. I think you did lobby for that one, and we're like, okay, he's ready. Yep. He proved himself with Northwind. It was a terrific story, and now it's time for a big book, and which it was. It's pretty much kind of the spine novel of that year because. Th- it's a long running, one of the longest running rivalries, the longest running wars. We had kind of left it sitting, and there were a lot of plot threads too. So this was a bigger uh, novel, whereas you know Northern Highlanders was kind of like a GDL book. This one's going right to, I was at least warrior scope, if not kind of a Krensky scope, a blood of Krensky. So how do you tackle this one? Because you're telling now you got a much bigger stage. You're dealing, you're dealing with heads of state, Julian Davian. You're dealing with you know uh, the not the Tyso, the Court, uh, you're not, you're not gonna. Toronaga. Yes. Yeah, Toronaga, sorry. So how did you approach this one? This one was inc- this one was incredibly difficult for a bunch of reasons. Uh number one, very passionate about the project, uh, which is always which is a plus. interesting. A plus, uh, always but a plus, always a yeah. challenge as well. Yeah. Uh number two, these characters, Eric Sandoval Grohl is has mm. been written about in the Dark yes. Age more than any Extensively. other character it seems. Yeah. By, yeah. Than, uh, it was he'd been done by four different writers. Right. It was short stories, novels, a little bit of everything. Julian Davian had shown a wonderful progression. And these are not minor authors. This is the great Lauren Coleman. These are these are these are authors who have really established the character. Right. Uh, so right. We, I needed to be true to that. And d- due to the nature of the time period we needed to hold to, the one of the biggest battles has to start first. Yes. You not yes. only need to, yep. there is a lot of world building. There is a lot of set building that you need to do because we haven't touched on oh, the Davians in quite some time. Right. So it's bringing, in the bring the readers sons. back up to speed and yep. what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And we had to touch on a ton of different items, and that was a great challenge. And which you accomplished magnificently. Uh, the book was everything we hoped for and more. Thank and you. Apparently, as I best Scar seems to agree. So, so let's get to the questions here for a little bit. Uh, best Scar sixty six. What was your favorite moment from Damocles Sanction? My his favorite, their their favorite novel. Uh, I'm gonna have to say there were a bunch of them. Uh, it's mostly going to be the prison scene. It's ah. going to be once and again. Those who read the book, I think they you know exactly what we're talking oh, about. Oh yes, yes. If you haven't. We're not gonna spoil it. Yep. But it is, I think, an iconic moment in that book, and there are a lot of iconic moments. And another thing is the importance of the line developer and the uh, executive editor in this thought process. This was a, we just finished working on another one of my novels last night. We're still going over a few scenes. These are dangerous scenes. These are world shattering scenes if you do not do them right. We have to tweak, we need to adjust. And I think John will tell you, I am not a timid writer. When you let me run in this direction, I'll worry about it. But I'm still going to do it. And, and he's going to run full tilt. And I'm yes. going to run full tilt. And it may, apparently it's been well received. So we'll take yep. it as a win so, until I hit the wall. A, a main plot of Damocles, besides, of course, the campaign to retake a certain planet that's fallen into Davian hands for over a decade, I believe. Yes, indeed. Is the, let's say, uh, relationship between Eric Sandoval Girl and Julian Davian. Yes. And uh, that, of course, needed to progress. But we also didn't want a certain character to come out looking like an out-and-out villain. So that took some finessing. How did you approach that when those scenes were together? When those two characters were actually interacting together and they both had competing goals, competing desires? It was very challenging because uh, Eric was uh, has been a villain has been a hero. He is walking the line. Been, yeah, yeah, very much so. Very and, much so. And so that's been a challenge. And Julian himself is, has been very heroic, but has been forced to do some terrible things in the line of his duty. Right. Both, neither one is inherently evil. We love having these complex characters. Both of them are doing what they think is best. Even yes. some of the tacit villains of the piece, Toranaga himself, it's he, none of them are evil. They're right. just their goals may be counterproductive to everyone else and the lengths that they're willing to go with those goals. Right. It takes a I took a lot of focus, a lot of delicacy to try to find that middle uh, ground. Yeah. And once again, you never know if it's going to be effective until you see it in the full uh, in in print and finally. Yeah. And I, and I think you managed to to work both of them because both Eric 
and Julian, what I liked about it was both characters wanted to do what they felt was best for the Davian state. Yes. But a lot of times, what each wanted to do was very different than the other one, and that's where the conflict came in. Oh, very well. So, uh, uh, let's see. So, another question to Michael. If you could write any BT story, what would it be? Oh, I... Uh... I pitched that one to John. We've got some fun stuff. I'm very excited for the Jihad era. I know there's some stories there that I'd very much like to hear myself. Uh, but, of course, they've got me on a full schedule moving forward as well. So we'll see how that falls out. I, I do have Michael kind of tied up with several across, across actually, one of the few uh, writers doing greens in all three of our major IPs, all three of our universes, which I'm very much excited Looking forward to seeing those come out. But yes, we, we have been working on uh, Trial by Birthright, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yep. Uh, and the editing, uh, this, so we were sitting down with Ray, our line developer. He had some notes. Wanted to make sure everything was uh, good before Michael starts the next pass. And this is how the, this is how it works, working tie-in, running a tie-in novel. You will do several passes. And it's not just writing one pass and done unless you miraculously happen to hit it on the head. And Battletech is a complex oh. intellectual property. It is a complex universe. It is 40 years of lore. The details have the details matter. The details must be done right. Wouldn't you agree? I completely agree. And yeah, the devil is in the details, and no matter how well you know it, John and I joke a lot of times. When I first met him, I knew everything there was about Battletech at that time. I now know less. <laughs> and, and part of that is now I know more or things that I can't say. I regularly go back and go, Can I say this? Right. What right. do I know right yep. here? It's, and, it's a constant kind of okay. struggle with what we want to tell people and what we can. Absolutely. Yes, and legitimately just the sheer amount of storylines that are coming in. Keeping a track is a full-time job. Yes. Armani Lisp is a Davian fan with a merchant cap. I don't I don't think that's a merchant cap you're wearing. Steiner, it absolutely is. But I, I love them all. I, I love all my factions. A nice co a nice compliment for Best Guard. Damocles, hands down, the best modern BT novel, at least for me. Reread it like five times. That Thank is you. lovely. Uh, Lorcan Nagel has come into the chat. Question for Michael. What character, faction, and era that you haven't written would you like to write in? Oh, that's an excellent. Well, that's a very that interesting is, question great, indeed. Yeah. Well, he did, now, he did mention Jihad, but let's let's, yeah. let's keep going. There I, also, I'm curious about character and faction. Yep. Yeah. Uh, character is going to be a little challenging. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who, but I've got a, a few that come up in uh, Trial of Blood Right that I was hoping to uh, write for, so that one's tough. Uh, the faction, I would like to get a little Steiner love going on right now. It is, okay. we've, got, uh, we've got, we have not had the chance to get back to the Lyran Commonwealth in quite some time, and I'd love to see a little bit of what we're looking at in the future. Interesting. Okay. And as everyone knows, currently the, uh, I'm not sure if we'd say the Lyran Commonwealth is on the ropes, but but they're they're not doing well. They are, they have some challenges, some and severe challenges. Might be interesting to hand you the reins and see where you would uh, take them in the context of of where they need to go in the story and how they would get there. I uh, so it. yeah, uh, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 this was Wandy Elizabeth Steiner's the only house ruled by ancestor lineage currently, so Steiner is Davian. That's a, that's a fair. That's a fair. Absolutely. I can see that. And it's the only correct answer by the best card. It was a piece of art that scene. Yeah, I I got chills reading that one. It was a really a meeting of two two warriors, yep. two warriors who've been fighting a long time for for different goals, and it was a, it was a fascinating character study for both of them. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm aware, Craig. I'm aware we have to cut words. Believe me, we will be cutting words. Yes, yes. <laughs> Always do. Always do. Uh, let's see, best card. Question to both: What is your opinion of the word? of Sandoval Civil War. If you're confused, and I am, ask Big Red. Okay, if I ask him, I'm going to be more confused. That's not going to help. We will ask. Uh, okay, I'm not so sure how it's going to work, but we will check. Michael, do you, okay, this is interesting. Do you have a favorite clan? Including splinter factions from a clan. That's that's plenty. There's a lot to go over there. There are a lot, a lot to go through right there. Uh, favorite clan, I'm I've always been intrigued by the Snow Ravens. It's been a, it's been an area I've been very curious about. I don't, there's no clan I don't like. Uh, so each of them have had their charms. Each of them are very, very interesting. But I would say Snow Ravens at the moment, which which haven't certainly gotten having a lot of love, certainly haven't got a lot of love in fiction. Very true. So, which is one of the projects you and I are working on correcting. Yes, so, indeed. absolutely. Yes. 
So, uh, and okay. Let's see. Confirmed, Confirmed Michael is a song reader. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, how much do you use Sarna when you're researching? Always, time. Time. always up. Oh, Sarna yeah, always is on open. my phone. Yes. Sarna yes. is everywhere. I really appreciate all the work that goes into it with a with something this large, oh, even God. with our private databases and everything else. Yep. It is impossible. I, I love reading the source books. I love going back to them. They give me a warm and fuzzy feeling, but when I need to find some information, Sarna is the option or i just message phil <laughs> yeah, that works too yes yeah, sarna is invaluable because we, we can't keep track of all this no we can't there are lineages going back hundreds of years there are mix going back hundreds of years true it's it, you know it's it's always in flux it's always changing and things are always from a certain point of view which makes it there may be times we have to actually go directly to ray and say hey ray can we say this like mm, no you're going to leave that vague because that's not exactly what we want to give an impression of oh yeah so and yeah it's it's uh, nick and the team over at sarna thank you very much for all your Back hard nick. Yeah. dedicated work and putting it out they stay on touch with yeah, on top of what we do almost better than we do sometimes to be completely so absolutely yes, absolutely oh we've had those funny moments not to mention i've had to go back to see what stories i've written all the time i joke that sometimes i need to message i've got private message with john and Ray oh, yeah. always open hey well, we we need need this. this is a joke yeah well, we, we, need, do we have a weekly meeting we do have a weekly meeting because we have to keep up on everything that's going on yes uh 30th, 30th century fox any chance of layering the older eras of second tier hero, heroes akin to what star wars did with clone wars bad back series that's a fascinating idea i really is. think of it when we were talking about Jihad a while ago, when Lauren yeah. wanted to do this novella series, he mentioned a character. I think it's a, I think it's a Steiner actually, who was always in the kind of the background and never got any play. Like he was mentioned in passing mm -hmm. all the time. I have to think if he could think of that name, because we might want him to take a major role in the Jihad fiction. I agree. So the possibility there is very yes, it's very possible. Absolutely. Well, also that's going to be vital to focus on some of the second line characters. Yes. Because yes. so many. Characters were killed in the journey. It's such a high body count. Yes. Yeah, we, yes. Need to, we need to focus Absolutely. On Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Uh, Exile. Uh, raise so some Raven love there. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Ravens would be a good chance to flesh out warship ops. This is true. They are the Space Navy clan. Uh, that's very true. So, so warships are still a thing. Is that what you were saying, John? Uh, is it in the chat? Is uh, warships, yes. Pocket warships, not so much. Well, hey, let's talk about what you have coming up. Uh, of course, everyone's been talking, and as we were discussing, uh, the big one is trial by bir trial of trial, trial of birthright. birthright. Yes. yes, yes. Again, Michael has said suddenly seems to have a you seem to have a knack for falling into um falling into kind of these big books, and this is it, it doesn't come any bigger than this. I love spy novels. I love yes. big chunky tomes. Short stories are fun. Novellas are fun. And you're here adapting both of those as well. I yes. appreciate that. I fight with John regularly as to what a novel is. I'm used to reading the the old mass market pa paperbacks that blew out my pockets right there. Uh, the, the, the Michael Stackpole's X-Wing series, the massive books right there. I love them. Uh, but yes, I love doing those bigger novels on a regular basis. Okay. And, and I'm lucky and, enough to be able to weave together some of those threads, apparently. Yes, yes, exactly. So we're we're talking about uh, Trial of Birthright, which goes back to Terra. After three years of real time, after Hour of the Wolf, which came out in 2021, we're going back to Terra finally. No one knows what's happened. The wall has been up. It is a mystery. Yep. And so we hand this to you. It falls into your lap. I say, yep, Michael, why don't you do, take us to Terra? The first on-screen appearance of Alaric Ward, yes. the Ilkhan, and we find out what's going on. So when you found out that this was happening, <laughs> what, was your, what was your reaction, first and foremost? I got into a huge fight with Lauren Colson. <laughs> that was the very first thing that happened right there. Uh, we were talking, we were actually, actually happened, uh, I'd already been assigned the project, but we were at the Writer Summit. Yes. In Seattle, which was wonderful right there. And Lauren comes up to me and we're talking about the story and uh, how it weaves into a bunch of other things yes. right there. And I I had some thoughts. He had some brilliant thoughts. We were trying to weave them together. But we originally knew that the story we wanted to tell right here was huge. We're not talking a tome. We are talking about a, uh, could have been a trilogy right there by itself of cover everything that we'd not hit so far. Right. Uh, 
so we needed to figure out what the specs of that were. Yes. And why it had been mentioned, oh, we're going to do the first Alaric novel. And you saw me shudder a little bit. And I don't want to do the Alaric novel. However, I do want to do the first new Star League novel. I want to show what has happened to the Republic. I want to show what has happened with the Wolves. What has happened with Terra? And... How how are we going to make things go from here? That I was excited for. He got me so excited for it, and I start just started off and running. Yep, and uh, this is a, how a project can change. Originally, uh, Trial of Birthright was supposed to have a big, long kind of a subplot thread dealing with uh, House Lau. Yes, indeed. But this is a book is so big, and it is. We had to cut that. That's an entirely different novel mm -hmm. because the events there were so pivotal. We handed it off to another author, uh, Tom Levine who's had turned in his first draft, so we have to dive into that one, too. Yep. So those are kind of two halves of, of one story. So, yeah, and it was, we, we just, at the same time, was like, we have to cut that out into its own book. And I resisted at first, because I thought we could do it, but no, Michael's turned in, current draft is over 120,000 words long. It's supposed to be 80. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it, a story is as big as it takes to tell it. It's as large as it takes to tell it, and this, this is the broadest canvas possible. Oh, I'm sorry, John, I didn't quite hear that. My throat's been hurting. I, I'm having trouble hearing. One more time. I said a story is as long as it takes to tell it. Ah, uh, yes. Now, there is, of yes. course, the editing phase, which hasn't truly entered. So I am sure we will, we will, we will cut down the... Um, I won't call it fat necessarily, but we'll make it a lean, mean plot. Everything will move to brilliantly. Yes. Wow. Wow. You all heard it here. You're, you're deathless pros there, sir. Absolutely. Fatness. Wow. <laughs> uh, let's see. There was a question up here. The uh, best car asking, what was the hardest thing, right, Michael, for you to write and me to edit? Are you talking about Michael's work or for me just in general across the board? Because I've done a lot of editing. Books. Well, first of all, what was yours? Uh, what, what's the hardest thing for me to write? Uh, the, sometimes the interlude scenes right there, you, you get so focused on, you want to create this scene, you want to create that scene, but then you need to put something in the middle so it makes sense somewhere else other than your head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be a big challenge at that same point. Sometimes that's where some of your best work can come from. <laughs> Craig at the bottom there. <laughs> Fair. Uh, let's see. A uh, hardest thing for me to edit. Hmm. I mean, I like to consider myself a pretty facile editor. Uh, some, I think the heart of the spine books are difficult. I'm not going to single out one because they're all difficult because there's so much going on. There are plot threads to keep track of, both coming into the book and setting up threads for future books. There are character arcs to, to, to you must know backwards and forwards. Because if characters don't change, if they remain the same, that that's not exciting to write about. Very true. And there's conflicts. And, and sometimes just the, the planetary, can a ship get to here, to here, to here in time to actually do what they're supposed to do in a battle? Mm -hmm. It's uh, So, the, yeah, the spine novels are, are extremely challenging. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Is it true Alaric plans to recruit for the Star League through checking the scores of an arcade game? Arcade Warriors. We miss the Arcade Warriors. Angeline, who knows? Uh, I ask myself, was the wall something the Republic came up with, or did Comstar, Word of Blake, already have that technology? That's a great Ray question. I know, I know an answer, but I don't know if that is the final. That is all the answer. answer. That is exactly. a great question and fantastic for jihad fiction. Uh, yes. Oh, that's a that's a really good kind of a sub thread. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Best card trial by Blood Rite is going to be like the most important novel of the Oakland era. It's. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It will determine how the rest of the air will pan out. Couldn't be in better hands. Well, that's wow. Thank you. Yeah, all right, all right. He's up, Beskar. His his eagle's gonna fall. And this is a big hallway, but he's not gonna be able to fit through the door. Okay. Well, but no, no, you can. You are right. Right. I think we chose the right author for this one. Uh, I and from what I've seen of the manuscript so far, we we absolutely made the right call. Yeah, let's see. Shocking what you get. I do not get paid by the word, folks. No, no, these these are just massive, massive stories. Uh, absolutely. There's, there's no way you... There are certain scenes that have to be... That we've When we were going through editing, like I said, this scene has to be... This speech has to be written out. You can't summarize it. This scene has to be expanded. Yep. And, which is terrible, because I can find what else to cut to make it work. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Absolutely. Let's see. Um, I could have forgotten to translate first stuff. Wow, Dan, thanks. Don't make me go to Google Translate to look up your German, okay? You're not going to like that. I guarantee it. Uh, gentlemen, I know that Frankenbecks are sometimes a touchy subject, but has everyone thought about throwing 
a Yamur chassis on a demolisher frame or any other duct tape. Well, I've only, I've rarely seen Frankenbacks, to be quite honest. Wow. Wow. That's a really interesting idea. Um, we're talking about the demolisher tract with the with the Yamir body at the top right there. Oh man, I I, I need to. If that's what I'm thinking, ouch. <laughs> I'm I, a good Frankenmech is a good Frankenmech. Well, yeah. Now I'm really curious. I I wonder if anyone's touched on that in Solaris. I think that'd be an awesome, that'd be an automatic uh, uh, campaign or a or a uh, tournament. A tournament. Frankenmech yeah. tournament would sound like it'd be amazing. Frankenmech tournament. Right. Right. Mm, exactly. That sounds fun. Uh, let's see. To both of you, what is your... Okay, that's a very unique... What is your opinion of the 3250 source book blurbs? You mean like the back of the back of book writing? The, the, the back of book text that tells kind of what oh, the book no, is about? I think the notable mech warriors and uh, the pages itself. We may need some more information. I love the TROs. Uh, I love the source book blurbs. I love hearing all about... It. Sometimes it's the stuff in the margins. If you went through the Jihad era... Some of the best pieces of story were hidden along the sides there. Gotcha. Did we ever tell the story of uh, when uh, Jihad's Conspiracies came out? No, I don't believe so. Jihad Conspiracies, brand new book is coming out at, I, I believe it was Gen Con. Okay. I'm playing in the gaming hall, and suddenly robed figures come into the room and just start yelling at the yes. Yes, yes, exactly. And they've got books, and they're ripping out pages, white books, and just throwing them everywhere, and it's in the middle of the Battletech area. Right. Apparently it was the word of Blake. So I, I go over, and I see what they're ripping up, and I, I see source book pages. <laughs> I, I don't know what this looks like. I've not seen this source book. I start gathering up. I'm, I am Lao at the wedding. I am gathering up every page I can get. I've still got them at home. Uh, of course, I bought the book two days later when it dropped, but it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Beginning of the, oh, oh, okay. Thank you, Best Guard. Beginning of the source books, I talk about what happens in 30 video from the perspective of a lore master. Um, I... We'll confess, I am so busy, I don't really have time to read those. We had the Lore Master fight last night. Lore yeah, Master yes, and yes, the Clan Watch. But if it was you... already fixed. So it, I was already fixed. it was already fixed. It was already fixed. Uh, there was a question of release date for the TRO Ill Clan 2. Well, I think that's the Ill Clan we have right here. Should be in stores, uh, or at least on on the store on the store on the, where, uh, on the, uh, the web store. Web store. It looks so good, folks. Some of these new mechs look oh, stunning. Yeah. Hermit crab, carrion crow. That never had. Head. Head. Oof, love it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, is, this is what's coming home first. We are we are getting some comments that the audio mic quality is subpar. Um, check, folks, if you can do a, if you can somehow fix it, but really appreciate it. So let's see. Oh, is there a video on YouTube of the Trump conspiracy gag? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's see. So as I mentioned earlier, Michael, you are a kind of a hybrid author for me. And that's that's someone I call who who works in more than one IP or more than one universe. You also have a uh, Shadowrun novel. I do. That is currently underway. And um, why don't you tell the folks a little? I mean, this is I know this is mostly Battletech. This is mostly, but there's some Shadowrun fans out there. Oh, okay. Why don't you tell them a little bit about that one? That is the uh, Chimera. The Marathon Spikes. Spikes, Complex, yes. Not yep. Complex. This, this is looking for the opportunity amongst all of these uh, spy novels, which is great. I love, once again, the giving the full area. Pardon me a second. <laughs> Need to stay hydrated. Uh, I love that, but I wanted to get more, even deep, get even deeper into the characterizations. Right. I right. wanted to get a small Shadowrun runner team able to go do some fun missions, do some exciting things, and Shadowrun is particularly well placed to be able to do that. Right. Right. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then also. You are involved in Leviathans. I am. And you did a little bit of fiction writing for that one. Yes. And then we tossed you a Leviathans novel. So let's talk about that one a little bit, too. That one's another fun one. I love Bryn Bills, the line developer for Leviathans. Uh, I'm currently working on a novel uh, with a uh, famed Italian hero that they have created. I get to show off some of her early battles. I get to see some wonderful successes and her journey, which is going to be fun, interesting, and I just love the concept of naval warfare, whether it's in the sky, in space, yeah. oh, absolutely, water, absolutely, wherever it may be. It is very exciting. Ah, uh, that's fantastic. And yes, we're looking forward to what you're doing in that one too. So it's, and you know, it. 
<sighs> Michael makes it seem easy, I think. And she, she, you come and you play the game for 12 decades with a blood name. Oh, yeah. And then you're off. Yeah. But it, didn't, it was, he had to, he had to kind of go through, not take his lumps, but he had to prove to us that he knew what he was doing. It took some time. Yeah. And one of the best things that I need to recommend to any writer is just keep it up. That was my next question. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. Is, is, is. If you want to get into writing for Battletech or Shadowrun or any kind of tie-in writing, well, how do you suggest uh, authors go about it? Well, now that we have Shrapnel, we didn't have Shrapnel when this I had that. This is true. Right this there. is true. Uh, now we've got the opportunity to submit smaller stories, get them in front of great editors like yourself, Phil Lee, yep. Uh, yep. his slush pile team, all of that, so you can learn exactly what works and what does not. But the most important thing is, as Randall and Lauren love to say, and Mike, you're a writer if you're writing. So write a little bit That's every day. True. This is true. Even if you scribble a couple of words right there, there are some yeah. writers that can do 2,000 words a day, some that do 500, some that do 100. And you're still going forward, you're still writing, and you're still creating. Right, right. I know that's, that's very good advice. Quick question from Magnum Morbius. What exclusive merch are we going to see at the cons this year? Do I need to remortgage before digging all my credit card suffice? I mean, look, the plan is this year to uh, fulfill the Mercenaries Kickstarter, which has been in play at this very con. We launched it last year, and we are still looking at, I believe it's going to be a May, uh, April, May, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the, the first wave is going to go out, uh, which is incredible for as much stuff as we did. And uh, being a year away from launch and having it fulfilled uh, oh, for yes. the most for far away all backers. It's incredible, especially given the scope change from Incline Invasion to Mercenaries. So, um, but I'm not in charge of what gets there, but I assume we're going to be a wash in, in Mex Mer uh, Mercenaries merchandise. So if you're a backer, you'll get most of it, but there's going to be new stuff, of course, at every convention, but I don't know what we what we bring. That's I'm, I do books. There will be new books. I am seriously hoping to get uh, Forces of War out so I can put that into a big fat nice. anthology. That's going to be awesome. Uh, so I got my part to play, yes. And, of course, new fiction, always new fiction coming. But as for, like, merchandise for uh, mercenary sigils or T-shirts, that's that's more of a Randall or a Ray question. Very true. Uh, Very let's true. see. Uh, James Sutton said that uh, Ill Clan Recognition Guide 2 is not on the web store. Just checked. So if, if it's not there, it's going to be coming soon. So let's see. Um, yeah, it's still waiting for hopefully the Internet or the sound's gotten better. We apologize for the uh, audio difficulties. We apologize for anyone we lose, but keep reaching out to us in the future. We're going to try to do many more of these. You saw them last year. We're yeah. broadcasting from several conventions, and hopefully you will see a lot of us. Uh, Kurt Spearing, if I were, if you were going to buy a single issue of Shrapnel, which one would that be? I have an answer. It's it's sort of a cheat, but it's it, it's my honest answer. So, Michael, which one would you buy first? Uh, I'm going to do two because I have a short article in there, and I have a one of the fun stories actually going to one of the the uh, nice questions right there. Uh, the Black Marauder series uh, is wonderful, but I've got another ghostly mech story uh, in there. In, in Devil, uh, double take the hindmost. Take the hindmost. Yes, You're indeed. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, mine would be issue 15 that just came out because our boss made us do it. It is a double length issue and it's all mercenaries. Our mercenary theme issue, which was amazing to put together, but sometimes it almost broke us. We have a new story from Michael Stackpole. We have Brian Young in there, Rusty Zimmerman. It's all mercs all the time, 24 7. It's just amazing. It is a double size issue, so well worth your time and money. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Beskar, if there's one specific story I'd love Michael to write, it's for the Black Marauder. I know Lance Scarini has given his permission for others to write about it. What's your thoughts on that? Well, Michael, since you did do kind of a haunted mech tale, what are your thoughts about maybe continuing the Black Marauder um, mystique? I, I would love to do so, but at that same point, Lance is so good. There's so much charm there. There's so much, just so much, just a fun, enjoyable writing. If he would write it, I would be honored. I'd love to read it. But at that same point, I'm happy to step in and work with any of these great authors. I chat with Brian Young weekly. Michael Stackpole, I have the honor of uh, uh, knowing him well. Lauren, Randall, Phil Lee, all of the great team. Jason Hans is here with us. Uh, we have Rusty Zimmerman here. We have a fun little 
playful competition ever since the uh, Shadow Run fight last year, uh, playing the new Shadow Run takedown, and him seeing I was not enough of a bullet shield for him. But no, we love these sorts of things and love these yep. people. Yep. Uh, yes, very silent mouse. Welcome to the chat. Year one does have all of them, but year one is year one is issues one through four. And the the fourth part of Michael Stackpole's If Old Acquaintance Be Forgot because we couldn't quite fit it into four, so we, I put it in there as an add-on. But year one's also only available in ebook. It is not available as a print on demand because it's too large. So yeah, that year one's a great way to get started, but you will never have it in print form. Mm-hmm. So uh, yep. Uh, look look. Honestly, I, I would stop for buying any issue. You can't go wrong buying any issue of oh, Shrapnel. There's no bad issue of Shrapnel. Although, and Lorca's leaving a little ahead by saying 17 or 18, so uh, okay. You go king. I assume you have some things in there. Let's see. Occasional popping. Point of time with a video going on. Scrambled briefly. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Let's see. Uh... Audio, well, Ray, thank you, Ray has entered the chat. We're we're dealing with it, but I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. So we're just soldier on as best we can. But, yeah, I'd be nice if that would be kind of fixed before the next panel, which is another one. Indeed. Uh, let's see if it's the Coliseum lives. Uh, We've got about 15 minutes yeah, left, so please uh, jump in your uh, questions while you can here. Right. So, you know what, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your kind of daily writing process? Are you, are you a daily writer? I am. You, you, so every day, without fail, you try to put something down? I absolutely do. But I cheat. <laughs> um, legitimately, I've got a fun writing program. Some of you may have seen it uh, called For the Words. It's a gamified system. So oh. with every r- word you write, you kill monsters, and it's fun and enjoyable. Sometimes I'm writing just to get to that next level. I love games in all forms, but it helps get me going every day. Uh, I try to put down at least 500 words a day uh, during some of those special months when there are good contests. I'll do 1,600, 2,000. Uh, I find it very easy sometimes to get the words on the page. It's getting the quality ones there. So I spend a lot of time editing and fixing back at that point. But it is something I love to. But I do uh, try to do my writing in the morning every day. It doesn't usually work out like that. So I'll do the late nights. Uh, I, luckily, I'm very blessed to work with Catalyst. So we've got a lot of nice meetings in the evening. So then I can stay good. I'm not sure anyone's meetings with a company blessed, but you, you, you do you. Exactly. I get to talk to Ray Arostia on a regular basis. There's nothing better in this world. Wow. Even better than talking to your editor. Gosh. I adore him talking to you, Ray. But there is. But Ray is the best thing in the world. I see how I read. Sure, sure, sure. You have to You have to be very blessed to have that special time. Because he has so little. So, um, of course, we require plot outlines. Because we need to see what, what you have in mind. And if anything needs to be tweaked. When you sit down to write a plot line outline for a battletech novel, how do you approach it? Do you start with characters? Do you start with the overall plot? Do you start with setting? What what what? How do you start with it? What's your process? Uh, for me, when I'm trying to outline, pardon me a little bit. Uh, when I'm trying to outline, I try to go with the overall theme and any questions that I want to answer in this book. It helps to keep me on track right there. Characterization, making fun and interesting characters is great, but I want to look at the book and go. What do I want to know at the beginning of this? And what do I want to know at the end? I love a good mystery. And I want to add that into literally everything I write. What are the questions? What is going to inspire people to uh, move on with the book? One of the uh, jokes that we make all the time is uh, for Trial of Birthright. What if you have a Star League and nobody came? Yep. It's a very interesting. uh, It's one of the first questions that hit me and allows me to start my process and see how do I make characters that work well with this? How do I find the road that we should take? Yep. Uh, Magna Morbus, due to the incredible success and popularity of the first animated series slash propaganda series. Will we ever see another animated series or live action episode? I would love that. Unfortunately, the answer down that Tornante, which is a uh, Michael Ovitz company, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Is it o- Eisner? Eisner, Michael Eisner, sorry. Wrong, Michael. Uh, that company owns the rights, and it's rather complicated that Microsoft owns the video rights, so the rights are split. And that makes it very difficult to land a deal anywhere because studios want to own everything. So, yeah. If I had my way, what interesting directions would you take the setting? I happen to love the direction the setting's going in right now. I love the openness of the Battletech universe in and of itself. 
I would love to dive back, as we said, into jihad fiction. I think that's an interesting area. And I would like to take a look at some of the various houses, uh, once again, it's personal pa uh, passion project and clans that now that we're in the ill clan era, how did we get here? How are we going forward? And really being able to delve in because everyone has their favorite faction and I want to help continue to flesh that out a bit. Yep, and, and that's very appreciated, too, because a lot of times a, an author will come up with an idea that we never even thought of. I'm like, well, that's fantastic. We're now going to go a little bit in this direction. Of course, it all has to kind of fall under the master plan. True. It has to fall under where the meta plot is going, which is a complicated, unwieldy, sprawling document detailing all the plans for all the clans, the great houses, and things like that. So an author has to know how to work their way in there, how to insert without upsetting the, the, the mech cart, without upsetting the dropship. Let's we'll use yeah. that term. So uh, have you ever had any difficulty where something you wanted to do has run into uh, editorial? And they said, well, look, we're sorry that this just can't happen. Oh, no. Once again, we we do this in a group setting because it's so successful. But I've got Ray sitting on the other end of the table right now. I've got John here with me. Once again, we had some very good, very productive conversations, but we're all also very focused and very passionate about things. Once again, I'm not going to win all these battles, but at that same point, I believe it's going to be a wonderful book or a wonderful project, and it is going to go in the direction that the line team uh, intends, which is the most important thing. Having the honor of playing in the sandbox is huge, and I'm thrilled for just the opportunity to be able to do what we can. Uh, well, we have time for one more. Uh, will we see more of Zeta Battalion uh, from Shameless Warrior? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. I think it might be time to revisit them. Uh, the Dragoons, of course, are still out there. They're still doing business. And, yeah, I, I don't see why we wouldn't. So I think we're coming up to time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, we're about there. Uh, yeah, Michael, any last thoughts? Uh, it's been a pleasure to sit here and interview you for an hour and learn about your process, and that, that true first story. Uh, any final thoughts about Adepticon, Battletech, the 40th anniversary, writing, any of the above? I do indeed. And once again, I'm going to use my platform as I can right there. I, I got to say that I've loved the Battletech uh, universe since I entered it. I continue to love it. Uh, it is the fact that so many people under so many umbrellas can fit here. I, I met my beloved wife uh, through Battletech stuff. I appreciate that. My Amy is magnificent, and I adore everything that she does. I have uh, my family has been so supportive. But the beautiful thing is, I get to work with such great people, and in a area that we all love so dearly. I hope that Battletech continues to stay incredibly successful moving forward, and I also hope that it can be a place where anyone who wants to sit down and play can. I want to play with those who want to play, and that is an important thing for me. Well, and that's the final comment for us is, I've given plenty of messages about our fans. I know how terrific you are, but I'm actually going to address uh, Black Pants' uh, how to make bacon. It's the microwave. Absolutely. Pop it in there. It'll spray oil all over. It'll be great. Nice and crispy. All right, folks, that is it for us on this interview. Michael, once again, thank you very much for sitting down for this. This has My been pleasure. very informative and a pleasure. Uh, we are, again, uh, more coming from Adepticon 2024. I'm John Helfers from Catalyst Game Lab saying we will see you shortly. Have a great day.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Catalyst Game Labs at Adepticon. Once again, I'm Michael Ciravella, one of the Battletech authors. Uh, we are about to do our gorgeous new uh, fiction uh, roundtable. We've got some fun things to talk about today, uh, including one special project. But let me introduce the wonderful people who are here with me. To my left, famed author of stage and screen and all major things, uh, we have Michael Stackpole, one of my favorite authors of all time. Thank you, Michael, for being here. The check is in the mail. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, then we have our executive editor for Catalyst Game Labs, John Helfers, also one of my favorite people. Uh, very exciting. Very wonderful. Uh, across from us, we have Brian Young, the esteemed author of a, a Question of Survival and several other fantastic uh, novels and projects such as Fox Patrol, one of the best-selling books that we currently have going out. And then what panel would be complete without the man, the myth, the legend, Ray Arostia. Well, tell us how they were his favorite people, but we weren't. Yeah. Well, you're on that side of the table. He 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 has to like us. Absolutely. No, but all of these people are some of my favorites, and I hope they'll be your favorites too. But now on for the fiction panel. Okay, who wants to let it uh, let it out? It was oh, not in the uh, update. I will. No, I I will jump in on this one because this is very exciting. So uh, we've done fiction panels before. But this one's actually more of a specialized one because it's taking Battletech fiction into a new medium. Uh, of course, everyone who knows who started with us in the uh, Mercenaries Kickstarter uh, knows that we have a four-issue graphic novel story. And, of course, I, there was a lot of interest about it. But then it kind of – I don't say it fell by the wayside. There's been a lot of activity behind the scenes. But we haven't talked about it. So we're here actually to announce that that is, of course, moving forward. And the team that we have uh, hired – to do so is Michael Stackpole, who has done many, 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 many comic series, and Brian Young, who has also worked in the comics field. So, yeah. gentlemen, uh, this is your first official kind of announcement that this is live and happening. Uh, right. Why don't you give us a, a little pricey of your work in the comic field, Michael, if you wouldn't mind starting out? Well, sure. Uh, I was real lucky that, that I got my start with a with a premier uh, uh, product, which was Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, for uh, I've heard of that one. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, basically, IP. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing the Rogue Squadron uh, novels, uh, Dark Horse Comics contacted me, and, and they wanted to do an X-Wing comic, and so I got to coordinate that. Uh, I did the, uh, the story arcs for the first five, four-issue uh, 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 story arcs, of four-issue sets. I did the story background, and, and there were other people who, uh, who scripted them. Uh, especially Jan Stranod, uh, Jan was great in getting me scripts and showing me how this actually works. Uh, and then from uh, issue 21 through the end of the run, uh, I scripted uh, all of those issues, uh, wow. including the introduction of Baron Feld of the Universe. Uh, and then I did, um, with Tim Zahn, I did half of the... Uh, uh, half of the uh, Mara Jade miniseries, six of your miniseries. And then I wrote the four issue series, uh, Union, which was the marriage of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade. Wow. So, so, you, did so some, you did some huge events there. I, I have, uh, yeah. I, I, and, and I just, I, I love writing graphic novels. There's so many cool things you can do with it. Right. So when I saw this, you know, project, and it's like, Yes, please, John. By the way, you know you know somebody who might be able to work on this. I would be, you know, <laughs> yes. yeah, you, I might be interested. Uh, yeah. And and Brian, I know you were just as excited to uh, to hear about the project, and possibly. I mean, you were pitching, I think, even before Michael was, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I, even before there was a Kickstarter for it. Yes, um, we had talked. We had talked about comic books previously. Just it, it is a medium I've always wanted to go into, but of course. Kick, they are not cheap to produce. So, but 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 yeah. tell us a little bit about your work in the comics field. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's hard to go after Mike to follow that, <laughs> right? But uh, you know, for my steps into the world of comics, I actually started uh, as an owner of a comic book store and a hobby shop. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, yeah. So I I was the guy for three or four years that was reading everything and recommending everything, but also like I made half my money on Hero Clicks and uh, Mech Warrior Dark Age, so uh, <laughs> that was a lot of really great stuff. But uh, I actually did a—I was one of the writers on a ten-issue series for Slave Labor Graphics called Pirate Club, 
Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we did some shorts in uh, Images Pop Gun on anthologies uh, okay. for Image Comics. And it's just a medium that's really close to my heart, especially since I really love working in film. That was my day job for a long time, working in film and yeah. being a writer and combining those in graphic formats always been something I really love. Um, okay, that's awesome. And uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't get to work on Star Wars comics, but uh, I've I've done, you know, a fair bit and really enjoy it. You know, actually, this leads into a question I have for Ray because I'm not even sure I know this. Ray, are are you a comics fan? I grew up a huge comic book fan, and actually, my love of comic books is what got me into gaming. With oh wow! DC, okay. uh, with Mayfair's DC role playing game. With yeah, yeah. Entry into yeah. broader yep. gaming. Okay, yeah. so and I, I fact, did the Batman's horse book for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep, that's yep. right. <laughs> So they good. It, so, but... so this is a natural outgrowth. I, I hope that. I mean, obviously, we have to go through you to get things that approved. But I, I hope you're just as excited about this as we are. Very much so. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think one of the things, and 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 Brian's alluded to it, uh, writing for screen and writing for a graphic medium like comics, a, a huge new skill set is required. It's, it's so right. much different than. Yeah. Their narrative fiction, and uh, I, me personally, I just found it incredibly exciting. Uh, so let's let's actually expand on that, if you don't mind. Uh, how do you both find the process of writing comic scripts, which is a script, right? yeah. almost like a television show or movie, different from pure fiction? I I think one of the big things is the idea that you have to remember that you're working on the blueprint for the final product. Oh, yeah. well, that's a not good necessarily it. not necessarily the final product itself. So. The demands are different, the audience is different, and the requirements of what need to go into that are different, right? Yeah. Um, if I were writing a novel, it would be very direct to the audience. But this, it's it's notes and layout to an artist who's going to be collaborative in that process right. to tell a story uh, through the juxtaposition of images and how they move across the page and how, how we do those things. So really, the big difference is, is that the reader isn't our final audience with a comic script. Okay, Michael, anything to add on that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it's so cool because you are working with an artist, and and so much of what you'll communicate to the artist allows you to hone your piece of it. For example, you know, if the artist does a a close up of a character and that's what you call for, and that character is angry. Uh, you know, you can have a single balloon where that character is saying no, or you may need no word balloon whatsoever because the anger in that character's face communicates everything that's been asked for with that panel. So, so really, you're trying to do this where you get to accentuate the art and use the art. One of the other things which I absolutely adored was the ability to uh, have two stories going on in, in a panel where you have characters in the foreground having their conversation and you see action in the background. Right. And you could never do that in narrative fiction. Uh, because, I don't see how. Yeah, <laughs> because, I mean, the, the second you call, call attention to the fact something has ha happened in the background in narrative fiction, it's now suddenly moved to the foreground. Right. And so, right, it, right. And, 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 and there are other tricks that you can do cool things that you can do that yeah. really just leverage the art for a lot more impact than we would get in, in narrative fiction. So now one thing about, of course, writing a script is your, you folks are limited relatively to dialogue, that, that you're just providing a lot of the dialogue and then, of course, directions yeah. for writing. So first of all, on the panels, how I guess how how detailed do you go? Is it is it to the nth degree? I, 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 what I understand, I think Neil Gaiman writes like huge paragraph yeah, description yeah, yeah, yeah. do you and by the way i real quick i know the author the artist we're working with on the entire series is eldon calger which i'm very excited about one of our very best battletech uh, artists who's worked in the comics medium as well i cannot wait to see what this this collaboration is going to pull off yeah, yeah. so how much direction do you give the artist is it a lot a little somewhere in between certain details of course have to be in every panel right. but then you let them kind of not run amok, but but use their own imagination to fill in the details. How does how does that work? The collaboration between artist and author. I, I do remember when working for Dark Horse, we were doing what's called full script. Okay, and, so, and what's that term mean? And, and so what that meant is that I would do a breakdown of 
how many panels on the page, what size the panels were going to be, where they were going to be located. Wow. So you were uh, and, truly storyboarding the whole thing. Uh, storyboarding the whole thing and, and providing the, the descriptions of, of what should go into the panels, you know, when I needed it for the story to be that tight. Right. But then there would be something like, you know, literally, it's a, it's a two-page spread. I need an inset panel in the upper left corner. I need an inset panel in the lower right corner. The rest of it is a space battle, and I literally would say, "Knock yourself out." You know, <laughs> you, you know, the only things I need are this and this, and the maybe that blowing up there. Yeah. And 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 so, for me, it was always a thrill to see what the artist was going to do with with the words that I'd provided. Yeah. There's, so, Brian, what about your experience with uh, yeah. working with artists? There's there's definitely an element where you have to understand how the, the comic is going to flow, how the panels are going to get dragged through there, and how you're going to uh, take your eye across the page and how many images you're putting on there because that really decides how much and what dialogue you need to be in there. But you're also managing the pace as the yep. page turns. Right. So you're managing right. all of those things. So the writer really has to be involved in giving that direction and what's going on. And I found, you know, you'll write out your your idea of what the best panel layout would be to uh, get across, you know, point A to point C on the page so that when we turn it, we're on point D. And sometimes the artist will go like, yeah, that's absolutely right. And sometimes the artist will go, you know what? I can get from A to C in a way that's going to work better. And there's that conversation, right? right. Uh, and and I'm really excited. I'm I'm really excited to to dive into that with something like BattleTech because it's it really is a much more visual way of storytelling. And I think BattleTech is perfect for that sort of thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. I think it's going to make I already have an amount of fun playing with 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 mechs in battles. Right. But being able to work with an artist as talented as Elden to to actually bring some to life in a visual format, it's going to be so fun. Yeah. yeah so, so Ray, of course, you work with illustration in the source books all the time. Yeah. But that's not a graphic novel. No. So what do you think you're going to bring to the table on this? Of course, because you and I are kind of overseeing the project. I'll be editing, working on the script and stuff like that. And of course, we're going to run everything by you, um, not only for continuity in the universe, but also, I think, story-wise. So, you know, uh, how are you going to approach this working with the three of us? Well, other than whatever you need to come to me for, for, for continuity and oversight. Um, what I hope to bring to the table with you guys is um, making sure that the story has a place in our current lineup of stories. Absolutely. So it's just another source to, to go to for our, our current era of Battletech. And, um, and it fits the tone. Make sure that we yep. hit the right tone. Yeah, I think we've chosen the uh, very good authors. However, you guys are not the only authors doing the stories. Uh, when we first got together and talked about this for Volume One, we're going to introduce some new voices in BattleTech. I'm not going to reveal who those are just yet, right. but rest assured, there's going to be there. There are some giants in the comics right. field that we have that I really want to talk about, but. Right. There's no contract done yet for these other people. We need to get that set first. Right. We will. We will make a a very pretty splashy enough that once we have it all locked up. Well, sure. I say, so. Brian and I have been lucky enough and are, are able to leverage some of our friendships with very talented writers mm -hmm. to say, hey, yes. look, we know you haven't done Battletech before. Here's a project where, where you know, the, the, the front loading is going to be relatively limited, but we want you to be able to tell a story. So we're going to be able to work with, with these folks and, and, and bring them in right. so we get some new perspectives. Uh, I, I'm Again, very excited about yeah, that. Yeah, and when talking about it, again, unfortunately, cannot mention any names yet, but I am right. extremely excited about who we're talking about to bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, Best we did mention that Eldon Calgar, now this is interesting, Eldon's going to do the entire run. We, we felt from the outset we wanted the same artist, even though we're having different authors do the scripts, to have, keep the same visual tone throughout. Normally, we might experiment with different ones, but I, we felt that the story, uh, as, as we set it up, Volume 1 is going to contain... Um, the kind of a it's kind of a mix, and we should talk a little bit about the plot. Is it, it's definitely a mercenary themed. Uh, the whole arc is mercenaries because, of course, it's part of the mercenaries Kickstarter. Right. And volume one is going to be a series of small set pieces, but then two through four is going to be afterwards uh, a more developed story that's going to cross all three volumes. Should we? I, I mean, talk about 
the page count. So I mean, like I think yes, sometimes yeah, I think that's a good idea. When people think about like, oh, it's going to be four issues, we're talking about four eighty-eight page. Right, right. This is a novel series. It's a four volume. Yeah, series. Th these are going to be real books. It's it's a multi-year project. Right, it's and... not going to you know an Elden for Elden. I yeah. hope he's really up for the challenge because <laughs> that's going to be a lot of panels. I mean, you know, for perspective, again, when I was doing the X-wing books, every four issue story arc. The stories were 22-page uh, stories, so you're packing a, a solid short story slash novella into each yeah. issue. Right. You know the amount of stuff you're doing and covering. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's, it's very exciting. I I cannot wait. Let's see. So wait, let's let's move to the chat if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, let's see. The best guy we did talk about the artist. There's only one artist. Right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're moving to questions, Mr. Stack. Well, I hear you're somewhat responsible for a character called The Revenant. Yes. With some other property. Is is that correct? No, no that is 100% correct. Uh, Aaron Williams with his uh, PS238 uh, uh, comic about mm -hmm. uh, uh, about children of superheroes and gifted right. children. Um, I, I, I've known Aaron for years. Uh, he gave me uh, some issues to read, and I liked him very, very much. I had done some comic book, some narrative comic books, comic stories with characters, and uh, I handed those off to Aaron, and I said, you know, if you ever need a character that might, that this character might fill the bill, you know, and you just wanted to have somebody cameo, and he said, yep, I got something perfect, and and uh, and so uh, my character uh, Revenant just started showing up in uh, in his book and it was it was it was great fun. it was a great thrill for me you know to uh, yeah. to be able to see that uh, so. okay uh dana robinson comments or asks one thing that is a bit counterintuitive with comics is that more text on the page leads to a slower pace for the reader yes how have you learned to balance that coming from word-based or completely narrative-based fiction that's a great question it is a great question um again i had a really good uh editor uh through uh, through uh, uh, Dark Horse Pete Janes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said, look, simple rule, no more than 12 words in a, wow. in, in a balloon. In a balloon. Okay. And, 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 you know, when you start thinking of that, it's like, okay, you know, this is, you really, it really, really has to be tight. Mm -hmm. But what you learn then is that if, if, if my word from the characters are going to be real, real tight, you have to trust the artist that the artist is going to get everything else right, across. Right. So I only need two words. I don't need 12. Yeah. And and once you get used to that, at least I thought, it becomes very liberating, especially when you've got characters that can, you know, cross talk against each other and, yes. and yeah. you know, have mm -hmm. lines going back and forth because then it, it does become very, very snappy and, and right. a lot of fun. Uh, Brian, any, any thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, no, for me, um, I come from the world of film. I actually teach screenwriting at the University of Utah um, in their continuing education department. And one of the things I tell my students there is I teach them about Alfred Hitchcock's method of creating stories. And Alfred Hitchcock always would develop the stories with his writers and they would develop all the visual story beats in the set locations and what was going to happen. And then in his words, he would go send the writer to do the unimportant parts, which was the dialogue, oh, right? No, no, because, no. because you're telling the story visually, you're telling the story with those things. And, and one of the, the, the big things for me, especially in dialogue, in comics or in, on screen, or, or even I, I, I feel like, and, and people can, be the judge of it uh i feel like i'm pretty good at dialogue even in fiction yeah and part of that is i really try to make sure that the characters are speaking to each other and not the audience right and that helps yeah. cut down the amount of words that you need to explain or get things across yeah that's interesting that i, I i've often thought the hitchcock in movies the dialogue was a little banal and now I know why. Yeah. Because he didn't really care about it. No, but it, it was everybody was a, a prop for the yeah, filmmaking yeah, yeah, yeah. he wanted to do. It's also really, really important. A lot of times in narrative fiction, you might have a character say, did you see that car go speeding around the corner? Well, you know, when you're doing a, a graphic story where we have the panel where the car is speeding around the corner, the line of dialogue is, did you see that? Yeah. You know, yeah, I, because we've seen it. It's right you there. Know? And, yeah, and exactly. so that's, you know, and, and, and the cool thing is when you listen to people and 
their dialogue, when they're in conversation. I mean, I tell students this all the time. Go to Starbucks and just listen to the halves of conversation that you can hear. Right, right. Or, or in an airport. I mean, we're all, we're all away from home here. So we've been spending time in an airport listening to half of a cell phone call out of an airport. Mm-hmm. People, you know, uh, uh, someone will, in a, in a cell phone call, will say, where at? Yes. You know, in proper English, that is, where are you? But yeah. where at, we suddenly understand, and that's communicative, and, right. and so we can yeah. use that. Yes. And, and so for yeah. us, we just have to find the where at's that fit into the Battletech right. universe. Yeah. Uh, uh, coming from Mad Docs, thank you. Howdy, y'all, long-time listener and first-time caller. I just want to say I've been encouraging people to read the novels for years. Thank you so much. I love the fiction and creating things with this setting. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, Karamind, I guess I have read the entire Sandman series, and yes, I'm not sure exactly sometimes how they made those stories, but boy, did they. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mad Ducks teaches screenwriting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Stephen Toprov. Oh, hi, Stephen. Glad to have you in the chat. What are some non-BT, non-Star Trek, sci-fi comics, or, or even non-Star Wars comics that would, you would also have a similar vibe to how you want the BT graphic novel to have? Well, that's a really good question. I don't... I'm going to go first because I, I want to hear what everyone else says. I sure. don't really have... It's going to be Battletech style, yeah. which is our own style. I, I don't want... We're not going to ape or emulate, I don't think, anything, really. So... But actually, I want to toss that question to Ray in case he has any kind of uh, influences he wants to draw on. But for me, I think we're trying to create something that is truly and only solely Battletech. I'd have to go through some of the stuff I've I've read in the past couple of years, which has not been a lot. But uh, I very much like your answer that we're, we'll have our own style. It needs to feel like Battletech. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brian? Well, you know, I, I, I agree. Like, it needs to feel like Battletech, but there are some in my head, writers at least, maybe not in the tone, but at least in how capably they tell the story uh, that I'm really interested in. Like, I think back to uh, Walt Simonson's adaptation of Alien, the movie, Mm. and how beautifully he tells the story across panels without a lot of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. Uh, Interesting. Or, uh, that's a really great comic adaptation. I should check that down. That sounds fascinating. Um, And it's interesting because he built that off of a work print, so it has all the deleted scenes in it, and he works those in. Oh, my goodness. It's really, really good. Uh, That would be Um, one I'm not a huge, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge comic book reader. I prefer prose, but that I would love to see. Walt Simonson is just great. He did some of my favorite runs. You know, he did he did my favorite run of Thor. He's just a really terrific storyteller in the medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so looking to those writers who do those things, you know, another one would be um Jeff Smith in the Bone series. The way he can create story across panels and manage your uh the manage your experience as you turn each page is is just really unparalleled and it's just really terrific so yeah it's it's less the tone because i think battletech has its own tone right. and it's more the techniques of the greats i keep looking for yeah yeah michael well i think the other thing is, is that we have to remember that that battletech is a game yeah and that as we present this it has to be recognizable that way I mean, we can have a, a An additional a, challenge there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can have a battle scene that can flow over several pages and stuff. We're just going to have to make sure that it feels like a battle tech thing. Right. You know, it, it's right. not going to be, you know, robots, you know, drop kicking each other or, you know, a lot of this stuff. And, and you're going to see damage accumulate as opposed yes. to necessarily every other mech getting capped. Right. You know, right. so right. this is going to be an, an, and figuring out how to tell that story and, and, and how to reflect the relevant parts after a battle and, 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 and the relevant cultural parts. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting, too. Battletech has two very distinct play modes. You know, a lot of people, their experience is the video games, and that is where they see a lot of the visuals of how mechs fight and perform. And it feels very different than the tabletop game. And the tabletop game has a whole bunch of different visuals to it. And to bring people into the setting from wherever they might be used to that and blend that in the comic is going to be really fascinating because I think between us and the other writers and Eldon have to really create a language for how that's going to work best so that it's a great introduction to Battletech fans however they get to it. Right. There was a comment I wanted to go through earlier. Someone asked, why uh, don't we... 
can't we get a series based on the Warrior Trilogy? And if, uh, if this goes well and the audience wants it, that one of the things I'm looking at doing, uh, this is a big experiment for us. It's a right. huge, we've never worked in this medium. There, there have been battles at comics, but CGL has never worked in uh, comics before. If this does work, I am very open to serializing those, those famous series, uh, Great Death Legion, Warrior, right. Blood of Kerensky. So, yeah, that's very that's very possible. Well, it, it, another thing that question it asked is, they were referring to a movie series and said, why would screenwriters, you know, feel they needed to rewrite the original books and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, Graphic storytelling is a, is a different mode of storytelling than narrative fiction is. For example, the easiest way to point this out, in a narrative, we get to be inside a character's skull and see how they feel and 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 explore those sensations through being you know behind their eyes in a graphic storytelling novel that has to be what's on their faces that's mm-hmm. what has to be in their body language right so a screenwriter is going to be taking everything that that I may you know I may have a page of a character dealing with conflicting feelings uh, before they answer a particular question, right. you know, a screenwriter is going to have to have that in three panels, you know, and right, so, right. and and again, some material is not going to be germane to the thrust of the story, right? And so, you know, we're going to have to we have to work around that. Yeah. I think I think uh, one of the things to look at too is that there's more material in your average novel than can fit into a movie or even uh, an 88-page graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Right. The scale of storytelling is so much bigger, and so you have to make choices yeah. as a screenwriter or as a graphic novel writer if you're doing an adaptation of what goes in and what gets cut. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Graham Greene, who's a really terrific writer, he wrote uh, The Third Man, and he wrote some other, he adapted other of his books into movies, and he said the only time he had a good time was when he adapted a short story. Yes. Because it was the only one he could where he could expand on the material rather than have to right. trim it down. Ah. And, and, and just for, for people trying to figure out these differences, you know, a short story, when we do a short story for something, we're talking three to maybe seven thousand words yep. okay yep. whereas a novel is going to be in excess of a hundred thousand words right so and and if a if a 22 page uh issue of a comic is half of a short story or maybe the the full short story you know that means per force if we're going to adopt a novel in four issues we have to leave out three quarters of the damn thing. Oh, that would be you impossible. know, and so, yeah. so that's just how that stuff has to be has to be reduced. Yeah, right. On the other hand, the whole idea of someone you know putting on their cool and vest, climbing into a mech, getting the cockpit, the, the neural helmet, all that can be accomplished in a simple series of like two or three panels. Absolutely. Where on a page, it might take a page and a half if someone gets really detailed yep. about oh, it. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So you, and the shortcuts for visuals. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to work out. I think it's going to be amazing, mm-hmm. especially since we have so much terrific mech artwork. Yeah. And, yeah. and the worlds that we've had fleshed out too. That it's yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're going to be going to a lot of different places. I know that it's going to be a a fairly wide ranging uh, story. I can tell that much. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh, will Mech, will Mech warriors be in full clothing suits or half naked like in the books? <laughs> I, I would guess there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be choices made. Yes. There's going yeah. to be different individual pilots. Styles will be represented by what they wear in the cockpit, how they present themselves, and again, those are going to be visual cues to who those characters are. Right. Right. Uh, question, did you let Mike, well, first of all, that wasn't the Death Kangaroos, that was actually the Kellhounds. That was the Kellhounds. And did you get the decoration from the cake this morning? I did not. I did not. It, it may be sitting back there somewhere. It sitting, but... That's true, that's true. Let's see. Uh, Lorcan Nagel, I'd love to see a Battletech comic with a similar vibe to Masamuni Shiro's slick SF action thrillers, but less his more recent work. I don't know if anyone's a fan I, of Masamuni. No, I, I really like a lot of, like, if you go back and look, I, I'm a huge fan of, like, some of those 80s sort of, uh, anime and manga mm-hmm. properties where you've got stuff like Appleseed and, and Dominion Tank Police yeah. and um, those sorts of properties. I really like those both in print and uh, in, you know, is visual. So 
I, I could see that very uh, you influential. Know, that's that's going to be interesting. Like, Battletech, of course, the original game used models that were from yeah. another game, uh, straight out of, I think it was manga and anime, right? Or It was it was Robotech. Right? Robotech, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank Lacrosse. you. But obviously, it's going to be bald and grown past They're that. All the same designs. And I'm curious if you guys, if, if you think the audience is going to come into us expecting a more anime manga style, which we're not, again, we're not trying to go for. We're going for Battletech. It's right. a Battletech graphic novel. Um, and I wonder how the the audience is going to respond to that. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing out a focus group. Mm. You know, because because that is not a question. You know, we are not going to be able to read the minds of the audience. This is well, true. maybe one or two people, <laughs> but you know, uh, but yeah. So, so, but I think the real key thing is what we've all talked about in all the meetings is we want this to be BattleTech, right? You know, right? Uh, an, another another time, maybe we you know take stories out of shrapnel and do some one shots that would be manga style and. Yeah, we are, we are considering things, an eight-page you know, so. insert, uh, possibly, if I can get the story down to that page and, and, and right. uh, script it out. Yeah, that's the one thing we would but, do as an experiment, for sure. I think, so. though, like, really, Battletech, yes, it had its origins there, but it's really evolved into its own style. Yeah. And oh, the yeah, book really absolutely. needs to reflect that. Right, right, right. So uh, I think I, we really want the, well, I want the readers to come to it. Expecting Battletech and nothing else, in, in my mind. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would agree. So, yeah. Uh, see that artwork for the 2C line? Absolutely. You'll see the, have you seen the Blackthorn comics or Battletech full? Yeah. Okay, yes. this is hilarious. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jennifer, the one who found that. Um, yeah, we, we, are, we have the old comic series. We actually have the pages, and we are going to put those back out. I'm not sure if we're going to collect them all in any kind of a, a volume issue or what, but including the 3D. And we are tracking down. I have Jennifer. I have your glasses. I have like 25 pairs of cardboard 3D glasses, and we're going to see if it works on on an iPad because it looks like it will. The colors are there, and it's very odd. And we're going to put on the glasses and see if it actually keeps the 3D effect. I don't know oh, if it's going to or not. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, we're a long way for 3D work on ourselves. An Apple Vision Pro, you know. Yeah, probably. I think you I guys know. should buy them for all of us. <laughs> you know, Mike, you know Lauren the best, so I think uh, Christmas <laughs> presents this year. Yeah, Lauren, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. You know, so yes, yeah, those are going to be coming back out, uh, just because Jennifer has has been kind of to track those down. I don't know where she yeah. found them, but she got them. So yeah. Who's the scariest at the table, and why is it Rem? Rem is a sweetheart. Yeah. Just don't cross her. <laughs> that's what well, that, if you remember pretty, that, you're that, fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, here's here's a question I'm going to throw out to the table. And, and Mike, I am, I am so sorry. I asked you to moderate this, and I've totally taken it over. And then you put him right on the inside, so he can get out. Yeah, I'm the best moderator in the world. Uh, I get to say great. nothing. I am wonderful. I've gotten in no trouble in the last twenty minutes. And we're oh, letting your voice heal. Exactly. So, what, what do you folk, what do you guys hope to accomplish with this graphic novel uh, series? For me, I really want it. I, there's a lot of folks who read graphic novels but don't read novels there's a lot of folks yes. who play the game who don't read uh novels the it's it's another avenue for people to enter into the world uh -huh. right. and if we can create a really great on-ramp to show people how BattleTech works and why the characters are so compelling in a graphic novel format we're going to create new BattleTech fans and we're going to give stories to BattleTech fans of old that they've been wanting to see in these visual formats for a long time. So I just see it as as we're going to bring more people in. Yeah, Ray, how about you? Well, yeah, it's basically those two things. One is um, it's another way that Battletech fans can enjoy Battletech. It's another medium. And since it's another medium, it's a way to expand and, and, and bring in new people, introduce people into the yeah. Battletech world. Okay, Mike? Well, it, it's funny. Uh, earlier when we were doing the signing, a, a guy walked up to me and he said, said many years ago I had been reading a bunch of stuff and I was sick and tired of reading and I was just exhausted and I just wanted to read a crap novel. Mm -hmm. And he says, I picked up Warrior on Guard <laughs> <laughs> and I started reading it and I was so disappointed because this was a good novel. This was, you know, so so he had gone and looked at, oh, here's his game derivative stuff. This is a piece of garbage. And, 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 
and and I think there are a lot of people that that you know haven't gotten the memo about graphic uh, graphic novels, graphic yeah, storytelling, yeah, yeah. and so I think that this both both current BattleTech fans and just other people, and I think this is another cool thing that we would be able to to do to be able to tell a BattleTech story in this new format mm-hmm. and show that yeah you know th- this universe will support that. And you know, and we've got the talent and the and the willingness to deliver that and play. And I think this is really a I think a key thing for the future of, of BattleTech. You know, we're here at a convention where tons of people are playing and they are all having fun. They're all enjoying themselves. And that's the purpose for which we do this. Right. So when we write a fun story and you know, people get to smile and laugh mm-hmm. and man, did I just read that? Let me look, you know. We we got them and we engage them and we're giving them what they come to us for. I think that's real important. Yeah, I I, would, I everything everyone has said here is true, but for me it's it's the excitement and the challenge of bringing Battletech into a new medium. Yeah, I am so excited and it's the fans, new fans, old fans enjoying it, but but new fans who who some people it did look a hundred thousand word book is not for them. I understand yep. that. I get it. It's just doesn't work for them. So the visual medium. And the dialogue and the script and the story we can tell, I, I just can't wait. Yeah, that that's my biggest one, to bring it to hopefully a brand new audience that yeah. wanted to, but hasn't had the way to, to, to engage it until now. Uh, there was a question about uh, the Lauren, Lorcan Nagel. Will the comics be ebook POD? Will they get a full retail release? That's going to be a very interesting question. Obviously, of course, uh, Battletech Mercenaries Kickstarter backers are going to be the first ones to get them. And that's going to be ebook, I know. I want to publish these. I want to put them out into stores. I have to see how we're going to do that. I, I'm not quite sure yet, but I would love to do it as a full retail release. Uh, let's see. Jade, I am Jade Falcon. There are so many good standalones. Uh, Wolves on the Border, Heir to the Dragon. Uh, there's a ton of them. I think that would be fantastic standalones. I, I am Jade Falcon would be a good one too. But I really think we have to have Jade Phoenix first. Um, that one also would be a great transformative uh, series, uh, the Legend of Aiden Pride. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Question: is, I own a mech Oplex in the periphery, and we made our own. Okay, with hot air balloon. Do we have to buy? It? <laughs> All right, Mad Ducks. We're gonna let that go. Uh, can you describe the art style of the comic? That's best. Guy, that's a really good question. I only know Eldon's work from the great covers he does for us. Um, I have not really actually read his comic book work. I'll have to go do that at some point. But I am confident. I'm 100 percent confident we are in very good hands. With Eldon doing the comic book work, I, I I can't wait. I wish he was here so we could talk about it. Maybe we'll do another panel at Gen Con, and uh, which I, he usually attends, and maybe we'll have him talk. Maybe by that time, hopefully, we'll have more to talk about. Yeah, in terms of we've seen a lot more of the breadth of his work in the Brush Wars series, which hasn't been published yet. And I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The Brush Wars BattleTech series, it just yeah. hasn't been published yet. Oh yeah, okay. Well, yeah. he's done so, all sorts yeah, of artwork exactly, for that. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> um. And Barnes and Noble does have an expansive graphic novel section. Exactly, it'd be great to put those in there. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Will there be variant covers for the graphic novel? Well, you guys are asking some great questions. Maybe it is very possible we might do variant covers. I know yeah. that's a big thing in comics now. That would be really cool if we can make that happen. I think that'd be sure. awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I got the Battletech Second Edition because the Robotech mech on the cover. Yeah, that one was really kind of an iconic image. Absolutely. It, they, they, they also wanted to know what era. Can is we this say? Be set oh, in. yes, yeah. absolutely. No, but it's Ill Clan. We are yeah, telling a, what we, we call yeah. a modern era story. Um, yeah, we, when we first talked about what we wanted to do, we we talked about other ways, but we felt that setting it in the now, I think, was that we we all agreed was right. the best way to go. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yep. absolutely, yes. So. Uh, as well, uh, without venturing into spoiler territory, will PB, TPC shots be balls of energy or lightning bolts? Lightning they're bolts. Actually, they're actually uh, grain alcohol and something else. That's So okay. they're going to be... Those PPC shots are... I don't know why you're talking about energy or lightning bolts. They yeah. come in a glass. So you're saying it's going to be a complete black screen. Yeah. After you yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. It will be a blackout. Um, I think, you know, probably Ray's going to have some input on what we wanted them to see. I always like the beam, like for example, the uh, it's a peeping shot on the cover of fifteen, right? That's uh, the beam with the kind of spiraling energy around it. That's the one I love, mm-hmm. and that's uh, well, that's gonna be fun to talk about. Yeah. You know, uh, what are lasers? Uh, is it gonna be the is it pulse laser gonna be laser burst? Mm-hmm. It, but is a regular laser gonna be a laser beam? And we're gonna have fun, really fun defining that because it, right. it, yes, it's done in video games. Do we want to follow those or do we want to make our own path of graphic novels? And I think that's gonna be half sure. the fun of doing them. 
So let's see here. Uh, even worse, a footnote in, in Falcon history. Has there been ever thought of going to a manga or doing a manga style story or series? If this is successful, maybe. I mean, one thing I, I've been really looking at is the is Star Wars, uh, is it Visions? Yeah. The animated series, which yeah. I really, really have to watch. Where they Very just good. gave a whole bunch of Japanese, I think it was writers and animators, like kind of the freedom to tell their own story in, in um, Star Wars. Yeah. And I love that idea. And it's very possible you might, look, I'm open to different artists and different styles. That would be really cool. Uh, it's just a matter of let's get this one off the ground first and hopefully the fans will like it enough that we can do more. Right. Otherwise, it's going to be a quite pricey experiment that's not going to work. I'm very confident it's going to work, but we have to do this one and, and then we'll see. I, we're, I, I have really high hopes for this. Right. Now, well, let's see. In the cookbook, a kitchen sink drama set in the Battle of the Universe called Love and Dropship. <laughs> <laughs> Look, is this anything? If this, somebody if this wants works, Battletech romance, that's what a dangerous idea. I know, right? And who that, would possibly do that? Although, no. well, romance comics are a big thing. So there we yeah, go. Yeah, I guess they're coming back. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Have to just, define what color the various laser sizes are. I have tried. Be, I have been yeah. trying to do that for years. So yeah. and failed. I will say, um, I have a a chart that I've been using to keep an internal consistency of what they all are for at least my books. So okay. I'm happy to 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 change I that. I thought it was that. one, and then someone said it was the exact opposite of what I was writing down. So, really? I don't know. Ray, Ray what, are, are there codified colors for the type of laser that's being shot? Yes and no. Yes, there are, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the last time I came up at a group meeting, it was shot down to codify them, to accept them. So, if it comes up again, yeah, we have the... Yeah, and I'm pretty I, sure it's the same I'm, one you use. I'm happy yeah. to follow green, your lead on red this. For, red for mediums, green for, uh, for large. I'd have to yeah. look. Red, and green, it's a blue. I know that. Medium. Green for medium. And I've that... always used red for medium. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of on a sliding scale, and the clans are a little bit further up the visual spectrum, so mm -hmm. they're right. they're larges. I think the larges are more blue. Oh, you have a and... separate list for clan and. Yeah, because they're just a little bit up the the ultraviolet scale. Yeah. Okay. Because they're a little more powerful, so I imagine they're but they're I, higher on the frequencies. You know, obviously the variability. Different manufacturers. Different, different. Uh, that's stuff fair. Like that, that's you know, fair. Yeah. Without getting into the fact that they should be invisible. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh uh, well, yeah. It's CR said, "Hey, we had Victor and Ami romances there for the taking." This is very that is true. true. That very is true. true. Uh, Wandy, question to Mike: When you create characters like Victor or Corin Horn, do you improvise or do you make blueprints as to how you want them? That's another excellent question. Um. Usually. Uh. Uh, two things. One of two things will happen. Sometimes the characters just kind of come to you. Uh, but in the case of both Victor and Corin, there were certain things I knew I wanted and needed, uh, and that uh, allowed me to build them. Uh, so for Victor, I knew that that Victor's dad is very famous, and I knew Victor being the the child of a of a famous father would have a lot of pressure on him. Also, to sort of emphasize that, I made him smaller physically, so he would be pushing a lot harder. And and this need to push, this need to succeed, really helped uh, construct him and how he would approach things. Uh, and this was to differentiate him from his father, but also to set him up for the, the struggle that literally, you know, defined his life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with Corin. I knew I would need a Corellian aside from Wedge. Mm -hmm. Wedge was a Corellian. He was also a smuggler. Han Solo's a Corellian. He's also a smuggler. Didn't want every Corellian to be a smuggler. So what's the antithesis of a smuggler? But basically the Coast Guard. So Corsac is born. So now we have some Corellians who are not really pleased with smugglers. And those <laughs> dynamics help shape the story. Right, this right, is right. why literally... Uh, Corin never ran into Han Solo until I Jedi, because I did not want my character reacting badly to the character everybody loves. Right. You right, know, right, and then right. I Jedi when they finally <laughs> meet, they were in a sympathetic situation, yeah. so we were we were good. Uh, Daniel Isper, I wrote a Crimson PPC bullet a couple days ago. I don't think that's going to make it past fact check, buddy. Just telling you. <laughs> uh, let's. Oh, here's a great question: Which Battletech eras do the authors enjoy writing about? 
I love Ill Clan. Like I've yeah. written in some others. I wrote uh I wrote like a Battle of Two Cades story. Yeah. Uh I, I wrote uh some other stuff across some different eras, but Ill Clan is really like I'm having the most fun there because you kind of have a little bit of everything, whether that's mechs, whether that's factions. Uh, and yeah, it's it's the new stuff that's uh, maybe it's just shiny key syndrome, but I'm just really, really enjoying it. You know, I'm going to actually toss it over to Michael here, who's been very quiet during this whole conversation. What era do you like writing about? I've had the opportunity to really work in the Ill Clan era quite a bit. I'm very excited for the Jihad era going back as we yep. were just talking yeah. about it a little bit. But I love all the eras of Battle Tech. You, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Michael? I, I, I'm, I'm with Michael. I, I love all the eras. I've really enjoyed being able to go all the way back to 3000 with characters that that have have fed up through, you know, the early the early stuff. But, you know, now in the old clan era, being able to see where the where the Kelhounds are, being able to feed stuff into them. And then, you know, as we've been talking about before, being able to do a new group of characters in the Death Kangaroos. Yep. Uh, no, no, you know, no. just get that different feel. And it, for me, it, it's really energizing to be able to play with all of these things yeah. in this universe. You know, I've just loved for, God, you know, 40 years. Exactly. So. I said earlier, mine is the Succession Wars, but I actually want to ask uh, Ray, which era do you like producing new source books or new material for, or do you have a favorite? Um, I, I love all the eras. Uh, I am I am biased to the current era because it's wide open and we get, all, yes. all of us as creatives yes. get to play with it moving forward. Uh, whereas anything else you do, you kind of have your guardrails. Th yeah, there's limitations on them. Yeah, that's so, true. No, the Ill Clan era is great. Absolutely. Second to that would be Succession Wars era. Mm -hmm. Or I would love to see more fiction in the Star League era, follow the Star League. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that one. Yeah. Jihad first. I'm, I'm not pushing. No, no, but no, I'm no, 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 no. I, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. I want it. That's another one that's relatively untouched, as I recall. So mm -hmm. Jihad first as yep, a jumping yep. off point. Well, look, I want to do Star League. I want to do Age of War. Uh, there's there's so many stories we haven't touched on. Mm -hmm. So many stories we haven't told. But I'm very happy to hear that because the fall of Star League. Is also some monumental events that that might be a trilogy that might we might need a big spine now. Okay, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, we're coming up to the end of this stream, so I think we'll do maybe some final thoughts. Uh, thoughts on the eight. I just I can't say how thrilled I am to assemble this team to do graphic novels. I uh, with Eldon, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, but I'll, I'll throw it for the panel for final thoughts on Adepticon or BattleTech thoughts on the 40th anniversary or us taking it into a bold new medium. Anything anyone has to say? I'm I'm really excited to get to work more closely with Mike on some of this stuff, uh, and and really, yeah, take it into a new medium because I think people are going to respond really well to it, and you know, being able to actually finally talk about it is great, especially yeah. celebrating BattleTech's 40th anniversary at a place like Adepticon. Like the the energy and the feeling for BattleTech here is just really infectious, and I've had so many people come up and talk to me about stories i've written and the fox patrol and everything and it's just like it reminds me that i'm not just typing alone at my desk right there's a big broader community and places like this are like the yeah. best place to remind yourself of that absolutely yeah michael any final thoughts yeah i you know again being able to take these characters that we all know and love and and get to deliver it in that different medium so that we get to have the the visual impact. I mean, when we're writing narrative stuff, we hope that people are seeing the same movie that we've got going on in our heads. Yes. Yeah. And now we, we're one step closer yes. to that. And I, I'm just real excited. I think that's, and, and for me, writing comics was so much fun. You know, I, I, I being able to, being able to go back there and relive doing that too. I, I, I you know, I can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. So that's going to be it. We're going to wrap up this fiction panel focused on the Battletech graphic novel series. I'm John Helfers here with Michael Stack. John, before you go, oh, yes. uh, just a quick update. We did just hear from Adepticon. For everyone who is looking forward to the Alpha Strike box battle that was supposed to come next and the uh, submission uh, Q&A fireside chat that we've been doing each night, unfortunately, we will not be able to do those tonight. We've been asked by Adepticon. We need to shift the location of our booth uh, for one of their main events right here. It was oversold, and so they need a little bit of help. We're glad to do that. However, our goal is still to come back 
back at 8 o'clock to show off some of our painting competition winners. Uh, we've been doing our first big painting competition here. Uh, the judging was several hours ago. I'm very excited to hear the results, but please peek in at around 8 o'clock. We are hoping to be set up in a new location, and we appreciate your patience. Okay, so from all of us here, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for the chat, asking wonderful questions, and uh, we will be back a little bit later. So thank you. Bye, everybody.